Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. We are live. I done sent invites to everybody. I done sent them to Hovis, to Scott Perry, to Todd Asher. All no whoever shows. else, anybody else All wants no to shows. come on, just let us know. I'll send you an invite. We'll bring you on too. Are we live yet? We're live. I'm not showing it. I'm showing it. I got well, it. Well, I don't know what you're looking at. Well, usually my thing will say live up in the upper left hand corner. All I'm live. seeing is schedule. I'm drinking Evan Williams and, and eating Vienna Wainers, baby. Oh, wow. Wow. dirty ass sock water. Mm. It's pretty good. It's hunter proof. It can't be sock water if it's hunter proof. Now I'm showing live. There we go. All right. So, you know what I like to do when I go fishing? Catch fish, eat Vienna sausages, and drink dang Jim Beam. Whatever the hell you got. Evan Williams. Evan Williams. I like I like to get away from the stable water. I don't know what it is about me. I don't like hitting that easy button. The dam. Down at the dam, the big pool, like, for example, Lake Norman, the closer you get to the dam, guess what? The easier it is to find fish. Because that's the most stable water on the entire lake. Now, you're good. If you can go above the 150 bridge on Norman and catch fish this time of year, you're good. If you're going down to the dam and you're fishing 90 feet of water, you're hitting the easy button. <laughs> yeah you know above the 150 man that place is so hit and miss right now i mean yeah every year is a little different but uh they'll chew like hell one day and then they won't bite for three days and i've i've experienced that this year on several guide trips already they smoked them one day and gone to the same spot not a damn boat in sight for two or three trips nothing zero the fish are there but they're not biting so something is something's up man you know it's like anything else you got time it right well i'm gonna go fishing this week probably thursday uh some friends of mine are wanting to fish we're gonna do a little head to head we'll head to head on norman uh -huh. me versus lacy and alan alan and on his carolina skiff and he's gonna have lacy with him and i guess i'm gonna be by myself unless i can find someone else to fish with and we're gonna if I didn't We're going to go ahead and fish with you just to take their money. You yeah. know what I'm going to do? Is <laughs> I got something they don't have, though. I have a downrigger. Oh, I thought you well, meant Intel. I thought you meant Intel. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't want Intel. If you, I would just come fish with me. I got work. You probably Today's work my there. only, today literally is my only day off between Christmas and New Year's Day. So, yeah, well, they'd be, uh, they would be screaming, I, you got to bring, you brought a ringer, you brought a ringer. So, <laughs> That's right. Yeah, there's no point. You brought a anyway. fucking god with you, cheater. <laughs> so, yeah, I got a downrigger. I got a, uh, I think I got an eight pound ball, eight or 10 pound ball on my right. downrigger. I'll probably incorporate that into my spread. I probably will pull Alabama. I got rigs. two four pound balls. Yeah, do you? They're, they're equal in eight. <laughs> Dang! If your balls weigh four pounds, so how, how how much is your uh, how much does your rope weigh? <laughs> it's pretty big, buddy. <laughs> hey, they could use my shit to count knots on a boat. How fast they're going? <laughs> <coughs> I know. Why, um, Jerry, why the hell are you on here watching? You're supposed to be on here. <clears throat> Dude, he is such a big puss. I don't see Scott Perry's watching or comments or nothing. Is there y'all getting comments or what? Yeah. It says I got I've gotten one comment. Mike Hunter, Scott Perry, D Young. I don't see no comments. I'm I'm sure every time West hosts, we don't see shit at all. I don't see where it says like who's watching, but I can see uh Frank Teal Cobb just yeah. made a comment and yeah, said, Let's go. Peter showed me how to catch him. That's a recent guy trip right there. Hey, yeah. This is hey, I'm logged in on JR's account now, so don't say shit about nothing that happens on here because I've got nothing to do with it. <sighs> You should have logged in on your account. Heck, we should have went live from your account. Maybe we would get more viewers because <laughs> I'm still kind of in jail. It's still they're still pushing my. I'm re, I'm restricted. They're pushing my stuff to the bottom of everyone's feed. So, seventeen more days of that. I'm showing twenty people watching right now. I am too. Are we setting records now. Holy shit! Yeah, we got twenty people already. Let's keep them on here. Don't go anywhere, guys. Hey, guys. If I can get all 21, if I can get 21 of y'all to hit that like button, 
then Andy that Price. algorithm will try to will, will promote this to, to some other people. We can get even more people in here to hang out and ask questions and talk about fishing. So hit that like button if you don't mind. What's going on, Facebook user? <laughs> does that does it show who that is to y'all? Nope. I see Facebook user. I don't uh I see Hunter Dalton, Jason Penley, Chris Brown, Frank Till, Cobb, D. Young, Scott Perry, uh, Mike Hunter. I don't see Scott. Mark. I don't see Scott either. Yeah. He must have got mad at both of us and blocked us for no reason. Uh, he'll he'll be on here. <laughs> he he's probably, he's probably filling that tumbler up as we speak. What's going on, Benji? See, let's see here. I don't know if y'all can see this. Let's see. Huh. It just says just watching, but not commenting. Benji said, what's up? What's up, Benji? Oh, Benji can fish. I fished with Benji in an SBC one year. That boy's a workhorse. I'm kind of excited about this Hartwell uh, SBC tournament. I really am. You know, I hadn't, my boat's never touched that uh, lake yet, but, you know, I, I'm always up for a challenge someplace new. You know, it's like anything else. I get a lot of shit for... What you do doesn't work on my lake. Well, we're gonna fucking find out. I promise you. Well, you're, in, you're, um, you're in for a shit. You're you're in for a challenge on that shit hole. I'm always up for a challenge, Wes. Always. I think you Lake Hartwell on that hole. Lake Hartwell is a lot like Lake Norman, except it's basically oh. like you if you took Lake Wiley and made it the size it. of Lake Norman. That's Lake Hartwell. Okay. Lake Hartwell is a big lake. Lake Hartwell's got more creeks on it. I think it's got more creeks than, than Clark's Hill does. So I already studied Hartwell a little bit, and I've got my efforts narrowed down on one river chain only. It's like anything else. So fucking big. I well, can't. You got but two. You got the Savannah and the uh, uh, what's the other one, Jr. This is uh, so the Seneca, right? Seneca, oh, yeah, Seneca and, and the Savannah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's That's just right. so long that you just can't spend – you can't pre-fish two days on both. You can't do it. No. Well, yeah, and that's that's what that's I tell everybody is don't ever try to learn all, you know, 60 miles of whatever, however big the lake is. Pick an area of the lake and learn it like the back of your hand. That's the, exactly. best, that's the best technique that you could possibly, you know. I found one little area that looks, you know, in my books, it looks fishy. So that's – definitely on my list of places to check out and hopefully i can turn i don't want a skunk i promise you that it'll be embarrassing to go up there with a skunk but you know you never well know. you know when it comes to the sbc there's like a hundred boats to get in it and yeah. at least and uh there are normally quite a few that do skunk because it's always rough conditions you know it's always what february is february right? january february yeah, yeah. yeah it's cold extremely cold and if we happen to have a a cold front was, and then we have some wind on top of that, and you know the bite's already slow. I mean, it just it can get, it can get yeah. quite miserable out there. Well, hey, hey, yeah, Mike Hunter, D. Young, y'all right. I forgot the Tugaloo and the Seneca come together to create the Savannah. So yeah, that's, that's what I saw. Correct, right. the yeah. main body right there. Yep. The one river I was speaking of that I want to spend most of my efforts in is the Seneca, the, um, that little stretch from Clemson all the way down to the main lake, I guess. Um, yeah, it's a lot of, that's a lot of lake right there still. I but, think that know. buoy is T1. I think it starts at, uh, no, let's see. What, what buoy is that? There's a buoy right there. We're all, we're both of them come together. I know nothing. Are you, are you guys talking about, are we talking mid lake, lower lake, it's upper about lake. mid lake, upper lake. <laughs> mid lake? Well, you don't say mid upper lake. Yeah. Well, no, no. Where, where the Tugaloo and the Seneca come in together, you're you're toward the lower lake. Where they come so, in to create the Savannah River. So Peter's hitting that easy button. He's what right. Peter. What Peter's doing is he's looking at the lake. He's going down. And he's looking at the big pool. He's looking at the most stable water on the lake. Uh oh, we got here Scott Perry. Six and twenty. And he's going up from oh. there. He's going up from the most stable water on the lake until he starts hitting humps, points. Stuff that shallow water spots, you know, all, all these different types of structure, but still, it's right when all that stuff starts. It's still pretty close to the lower part of the lake. Am I right? Ah, uh, no, not necessarily. No? Okay. More river section I'm looking at. Uh, D, uh, I see your comment there. Yeah, that's the one thing I'm afraid of. The uh, all the trees out there. So I've been forewarned about all that. And uh, 
yeah, it's going to be interesting for sure. Remember the good old days when people used to say when Hartwell had giants in it. Hartwell, they used to say, "Man, you 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 hook onto those big old stripers and you gotta you gotta keep them out of the trees, man. You gotta keep them out of the trees. They're so big you can't hardly keep them out." Yeah, that's those days are gone. Now you're just yanking up little pecker heads. It's pretty easy to keep them out of the trees now, right, Scott? That's right. So Scott's probably not gonna. He's gonna say he's not gonna fish the SPC, but. Yeah, when we start dropping those videos and those little promo videos and we start talking all that junk as, as that time approaches, he might change his mind. So oh, I'll probably I'll probably fish. There we so go. Who's gonna we be my competition bee. for our gentlemen's bets when we, you know, we bet well, I told you if I oh. if, if I didn't fish, I'd send you a bottle. But I'll <laughs> fish. Now how much does that call? Is that a fifth or a half gallon? That's as far as cost, I want to say like 35, 40 bucks somewhere there. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, that's that's right in my price range. There you go. <laughs> so so it's there. It's already it's it's fucking aging like a fine wine right now in a bottle. So it's there. Wait, I already got I think I already got it. <laughs> I think it's gotta be in the oak barrels to, to actually be aging. Once it's already bottled, I don't yeah, think it's I, I don't think it's getting any better. <laughs> Oh Lord, what's what's uh Scott going? Is he gonna show us his bottle of Pappy Van Winkle? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I already got it. <laughs> what Shit. is that? Ad Admiral Nelson? Admiral Nelson. Yeah. Eight is that say it's almost proof? full. What proof? 101. Is it? Oh, that's good. That stuff. looks like some shit that teenagers used to get to winos to buy them that was waiting outside. <laughs> Man, it's I saw a, a guy. It's, knock, it's a knockoff Captain Morgan's. So I pull into the ABC store tonight, and there's a dude out there like karate kicking the stop sign up on the road. And he's like, <laughs> then he's like strutting. Then he walks out in the middle of the road, like in the middle of traffic, and is like combing his hair. He's got like a hairbrush, and he's like combing his hair. I'm like, I'm like, wow, this guy is tripping. So I go on in the ABC store, and as I walk in, I walk over to grab my bottle of Evan Williams, and I, I hear the, the guy, the cashier guy that's, that's working at the ABC store, he's like, he's like, get out of here. Don't come back. If you come back in here, I am not going to serve you. Do you understand? Like, I'm like, oh, my God. It's like throwing a dude out as I'm walking in. I'm like, hey, hold on. Hey, hey, JR. We see a comment. I see a comment from Facebook user. Since your name's not showing up, uh, type in on the comment what your name is so we'll know who you are. All you're coming up is is Facebook user. You're saying – In a couple years. It says real smoke is in, so that's more than likely. My guess is Trevor Brown. It says going to be an hour before any fishing is discussed. So, do you – Hey, how, how do I – right now? How do I see uh, comments on here? Is there something oh, I got to hit? No, are you, hey, are you Scott, on your get phone? On, get on Heather's yeah. phone. Go to look on Heather's phone and just go on JR's page. That's the way I do it. I'm just looking like on JR. I'm on my computer. Well, if I'm you're on a on computer or a laptop or desktop or something, yeah. it's it's easy. You just press comments. But okay. I don't know about a phone. I've never done it on a phone before. I'm gonna hit this chat button. Uh oh. No. Comments. If you're on a laptop, oh yeah, upper, yeah, the upper right there's got comments. All right, there. all right, all right. He said, uh, I can say him. Facebook user says it's going to be another hour before any fishing is discussed. All right, well, all right, let's talk. Let's talk fishing. So, you guys, I'm a map guy. I got. Oh, that's a, I got ho, a, ho, ho. Okay, that's okay. Jr. Skin, that's Skinner watching from the chain game page. Ah, mm -hmm. okay, okay. Josh Skinner. So I'm a map guy. I like yes, to use top, top, topographical maps. You know, just old paper maps. I got a stack of them, that big. And I like to open up a map and I like to look at it. Do you guys still do that, or is it just all electronics now, or is I feel like everybody's too reliant on electronics. I think, I think that having a map is is a good idea. What do you guys think about that? I'll, I'll, I'll answer that. I'm a cheap ass. Okay, so yeah, I like my. When I was doing my homework on um, where Lake is there, Hartwell. I went ahead and uh, went on freaking Amazon for uh, Lake maps, charts, whatever. And there's two charts for Hartwell, and they're 15 bucks each. I'm like, man, fuck this shit. Let me just go ahead and jump on my dang GPS unit there. So. That's answering my question. I'll use my units for that. Now, I do have Navionics. Do you all have Navionics? Yeah. You can go on Navionics web app 
and look at most of the lakes. You yeah. don't have to buy it. You can just go on Navionic web apps. And I love Navionic. Check well, them I use, I use, of course, everybody knows I switched to Garmin, but I think if they hadn't already did it, I think Garmin and Navionics is going to interact pretty soon where you can actually see Garmin maps on a ramp, so you can see actually Navionics maps on a Garmin. Um, I'll stick to my Garmin. I've got a $3,500 depth finder and a $400 map card. The hell with looking at a paper map. Yeah. 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 I love Navionics. And do you see how the white is the deepest and then the light blue is a little more shallow and then the dark blue is the yeah. even more shallow? See, I like that. I like that's why I like low rants. And us low rants guys that started, you know, 15 years ago when we when we hit that next generation sonar, when we come out with the structure scan and like Scott and I, I'm, I'm sure you, maybe you and Wes too, Peter. But when low rants came out, they kind of like they they ruled the market like everybody had an hds and that's everybody got familiarized with that navionics that that mapping on the navionics i did well now my buddy he's all about hummingbird because he didn't really get hardcore into this until you know five years five six years ago and so that's when hummingbird was kind of they were kind of going head to head with low rents there and they you know they kind of went ahead of low rents there for a minute it's kind of getting been back and forth it's like ford and chevy whatever yeah. Well, well, his low rents, I mean, his his hummingbird is set up completely different. Like he's got like this green and this red and it's, it's confusing. I'm like, why don't you just use Navi? Why don't you just use like the low rents? You they started out. They started this crap. Go with the original. Go with the original mapping so I can see because you got white as being shallow. White should be deep. What are, what is all this? What is this dark green? What is what is all that crap? You can preset all that. Like yeah, you can change those color yeah. palettes. Yeah, absolutely. I understand that you can change it, but why would you? Why not just go with? Well, because okay, like on mine, Jr. Say when I'm in Chesapeake Bay, I know my boat can go anywhere. If it's red, I don't want to get near it. Anything that's colored yellow, blue, or white, my boat will run in it. Then I've got those depths set. I've got my depth. If it's red, it's three foot or below. Then I, when I go to yellow, I'm anywhere from five foot to 20 foot. When I go to white, I'm anywhere from 25 foot on up. So I know I can run my boat anywhere except that red. But you can change the pallet. You know what I'm saying? I can, I can, get, I can deal with – I can get down with the red. I so I have, I have a Garmin, and I have two colors set. I have white and blue. And I like to have anything below 20 foot blue. Yeah. Anything deeper than twenty foot, I keep white, and well, that's I, like, it. I like that Basically. because because that goes in line with Navionics. What about you, Scott? What do you like? I just I got a Navionics card I bought like ten years ago, and I run the same card in my uh, Simrad. I'm just used to it. I've only noticed a couple spots, like one on Clark's Hill where it was off, but most of the time it's dead on. So I just stay with it. Thomas Walker says Navionics is garbage. Navionics equals Abu Garcia. <laughs> hey, I'll I'll go with that. I love Abu Garcia. They want none of y'all put your money where your mouth is in a casting competition. We all know how that'll end. Hey, Clint Lassard, I'm representing. Hey, I'd, I'd rather have a I'd rather have a contest of who's catching the most fish or bigger fish. Fuck casting. Hell, 90% of the time, I'm pulling boards anyway. I'm not casting. Yeah. Not me. I like that. Hey, anchor. JR, seriously. How, how, yeah. many fish, how, many, how many of them big fish did we catch casting? We, we caught them all trolling, Wes. We caught them all there trolling. There you go. <laughs> Those boards were great. You cannot beat a pool noodle board. Nothing's going to pull out better than a pool noodle board. I don't care how, how good the quality. I don't care what it's made of. Nothing is going to pull out better than a pool noodle board. It ain't the pool noodle. It's the metal <clears throat> body that's pulling out. Pool noodle is just floating it. Well, it's it's obviously floating it higher than any other uh, flotation would because it's it, – dude, it's – you know. You know. The aluminum uh, body is what – the aluminum body is what pulls out hard, JR. I, I the float just keeps it on top of the water. I, I, you right. know how a, that's, you that's know how a point. rudder works. 
I know how hydrodynamic. You don't put your right? rudder on top of the water and steer. It's down well, in the water. If, if you're, yeah. if you're if aerodynamics, if you're going down the road, you roll your window down, you stick your hand out the window. You don't really right. feel that much resistance with your hand like that. But if you turn your hand up, all of a sudden you feel resistance from the air. Yeah, the it's the metal the body and the uh, water, weight. Your water displacement. When you're treading water, you're doing this because you're displacing water. Well, a board. If you made a ten pounds and it's getting kicked out, it's because of water displacement. I if you made that. a two foot board that weighed ten pounds, it would pull your rod over like that. It'd pull so hard. It's just all about the size and the weight. It ain't but about the pool noodle. That aluminum is not buoyant. It would sink without the pool noodle. It'll sink. The pool noodle yeah. is going to keep it. No, I, I as think as high hey, as possible what, in the water what column. What JR is trying to say is, yeah, the pool noodle does have better buoyancy. So it's keeping it's keeping it out of the water more, so you don't. That's have right. It's black. kicking out. It's not digging while it's kicking out. It's staying above the water, not allowing it to dig as it's being kicked out. Well, if you if, okay, okay. All I, all I know <laughs> is I'll drink to that. <laughs> hey. All I know is foam sitting on top of the water ain't falling. Tie your line to a pool noodle and stick it out there with nothing on it, and we'll see how hard it pulls. Well, my homeboy boards catch fish like that. Look at that. Beautiful. These. Wes made it a point to upload these photos tonight. Yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, I think old Walmart cork might catch fish like that too. Use the right way. Look at that tail on that fish, man. Jeez. That's brutal. Who says that? Who says that, Scott? That's brutal. That's brutal. Wes. I said it's 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 hot out here. It's brutal. It's brutal. <laughs> oh, oh, Chris Brown said you got Scott in his feelings now. I know. Yeah, I, I don't flame Scott tonight on the show. Believe no, it. No, I'm just saying it ain't about the pool noodle. If you think it's about the pool noodle, then okay. Well, let me ask you. You ain't this. as smart as we let thought you me, were. Let me ask you. Oh, you thought I was pretty smart, huh? I like, okay, I like well, I did. No, tell about <laughs> tell the microorganisms, and then I lost it. So if you take a if you take a piece of aluminum, the, the same piece of aluminum mm -hmm. that you put the pool noodle on for the home board right. boards, for example, and right. you, you take and you cut that pool noodle in half, are those boards going to pull out just as hard with half a pool? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What if you just take the pool noodle completely off? Are they going to pull out? There? No, it's going to sink to the damn bottom. So it, so it does have something to do with with the uh, buoyancy, <laughs> added buoyancy of the pool noodle. But it don't matter. It's all a, <laughs> it's all closed cell foam. I mean, it don't matter if it's pool noodle. No, Jr. Right, I but mean, it's the side. The pool what noodle. What he's saying is, is like like those those boards, like the uh, trophy stalker, are the ones that Chris's dad makes. That foam is only that wide, and it's real narrow. Versus but them are like, small boards. Yeah, but versus like the foam that me and some of the other people use. You got a pool noodle that's two and a half inches in diameter. So that pool noodle is sitting more on top of the water. It's got better buoyancy up top. You see what I'm saying? So when you're pulling, your board is actually pulling in the water and you're you've got better buoyancy. That board's setting higher because you've got more foam in the water. Because you got more foam. Got more like, foam look at it this way, you know, like a, a car a cargo ship, a giant cargo ship that comes from China. Well, we should fill well, so we get a helium tube and fill it full of helium that board will pull your rod in half you said that right absolutely i mean if you if you take a giant prop you know the bigger the prop the faster you're gonna go okay and if you if if horsepower is unlimited so like on a cargo ship a prop on a cargo ship is you. the size of a house right <laughs> I never, lost never, you. never mind I'm, let's, I'm go. Gone. On. let's go i need, I need more alcohol Okay. Distance, okay. distance, distance of the front rod back in relation to the overall length. Y'all making me think game. too damn much. Let's talk fishing. God. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, uh, Pete, when you go, when you come down to Hartwell, what are you going to look for? What am I going to look for? I'm going to look for life and blue, so I'll, I'll blue bang. I'll tell you my plan. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I missed that one. <laughs> you can't miss it. <laughs> can't miss I'm it. Blue for a royal blue northwest boat oh that damn piece of shit okay no it's good well you know scott's uh, you know scott you know uh that uh he's got a bull's bay right he's like he's got a skipper boat 
Bulls boat. That's saltwater boat. It won't cut. That ain't a skipper boat. Skipper's skipper, got a blazer boat. Blazer bay. That's yeah. what I meant. Did I say yeah. I meant blazer bay? You got a blazer bay, right? Uh, no, I have a bulls bay. You're correct. Oh, you has got okay. a bulls bay. Okay. Well, same I actually, thing. Same I actually thing. did look at blazers before I bought my bulls bay, and blazers are for rich folks. I can't do that. <laughs> hey, for everybody's watching, I've had a couple of people ask me last year, and I, I'm not sure how I told them, but. For everybody watching, this is the urban dictionary meaning of a blue bean. And this is why Scott named his boat the blue bean. There we go. So if you don't know, this is the urban. I'm reading from the urban dictionary. The swelling of the female clitoris due to sexual stimulus <laughs> without the release of organism. Organism. <laughs> organism. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So when I say organism, it's orgasm. But you know when West means mean? orgasm, it's right, organism. Okay, now listen. AKA are also known as the female equivalent to blue balls. A family of <laughs> sensation which can easily be remedied by a variety of antidotes, ranging from sexual intercourse to a mere twiddling. <laughs> we probably got a picture of Scott's boat. So that's why Scott, Scott wouldn't tell me what it was. He told me, he said, Look up the meaning of blue bean in the Urban Dictionary, and that's where I got the name from. So for everybody who ever wanted to know, that's where Scott named his boat. There's the blue bean right there, guys. <laughs> Sharp-looking boat. You can't miss that, but, you know. Last time I was on it, I burnt the flap on that piece of crap. That wasn't the last time. Oh, time before the last time. Burnt the what? The Two flap. times. Yeah, the flap up. Uh, Scott had a heater on there, and that flap, I don't remember what happened, but I, I assume I did it. I may not have, but, yeah, at the flap the flap went up on the heater and stayed there a little, little too long. <laughs> did you ever get that fixed, Scott? Ah, that's a little hole that big. Oh, that lead, that's so you don't get uh, carbon dioxide poison. <laughs> Ventilation. <laughs> What happened was there was a three pound fish on, and Walker and Wes and JR were running around like them. They had a 50 pounder on there. JR had a camera in his mouth. Man, I will never <laughs> fish with Scott Perry in a tournament again. That dude's a dictator. You got to be a catch fish, seriously. Oh my really God. Like, Chill out, bro. God. Yeah, no, so back on topic, what am I going to look for? Number one, I don't ever care where, ever, where anyone else is on uh, you know, pre fishing at all because. <clears throat> If they're anything like me, they're fucking sneaky and they want to be seen somewhere where the fish are not. All right. Um, but no, I, probably on the first day, I'm going to ride around and I probably won't even win a hook at all. Period. I'm going to look for life. And the second day, I might spot how life on your on your graph or you're looking on the graph, with bait the naked eye. on top, birds, that kind of stuff. Um, so I don't mostly, mostly without your graph. Yeah, I don't always rely on birds. Like, let me give you a hint. Or you'll find if, have, it, if this is cold this year as it was last year, you're not going to see no fucking bait breaking the top of the water. You will always see bait breaking on top of the water. If it is, it'll be dead if it stays up for any length of time. You saw these small water. little flickers. Your small, you're, your hey, smaller bait can oh, tolerate. Oh, you're about water. half fucking blind anyway. You can't see your fucking hand in front of your face. Hey, I will, that's, why, I, that's why I like to catch big fish. I will say this. When, when Wes and I put in a little like 15 miles north of Cape Charles when we went down you know to Chesapeake Bay last week we saw those big the dark wing gulls the big gulls the, the gulls that feed on the big Menhaden we saw those hammering and that's that's where we started fishing we, as soon as we saw those we looked at the graph we were in the proper depth I know we were looking for at least 30 feet of water 30 to 50 feet of water we, we had the depth we started marking big balls of bait. We just saw some birds diving, the big dark wing gulls, and we didn't see any more diving the rest of the day. But we, anyways, we started putting our baits out right there. And, and as soon as we started put, we weren't 10 minutes into, into our spread and boom, board started skeeting across the water. And that first big 40 plus pound trophy striper, Man, we just love saying trophy striper. It doesn't, you know, get, any, it doesn't get any it's better just, than that. It says trophy striper. You get a damn it's the mecca. It's the mecca. It doesn't get any better. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I tell you, hey, we, we, we worked our ass off for them five fish. I bet. Yeah. I bet. Hey, I'm going to tell you what. We went out of Cape Charles, dude. And, and it's like normally the deeper the water, the, the, 
like the the shallow water is rougher than the deep water, but in that Not bay, up there. yeah, in that bay, the deeper we got, the rougher it got. Man, it was throwing us around, and it finally it threw the boat up, and we bow dipped, and it shot us up out of the water, and the the props cavitated. It it actually brought our props up out of the water. It shot us straight up, and we come we come whole cracking down. And I looked over at Wes, and Wes said, "This is too much." I'm, I'm turning around. I said, hey, I'm, I agree with you, Captain. Let's let's go on back in, you know. So we went on back in, went to Hardee's, and you know, the rest is history. All right, all right. Scott. Hey, hey Wes, where? I need uh, I need you to send me a link of that hardware for your boards that you got. Uh, Cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I got an idea. I'm gonna make some boards out of some stuff I haven't seen. See how they work. I got right. some plates left, and I got a little bit of foam left, and I got about six clips left. If you want to try, if you can use them. I just hey, basically God. need the. I basically need the rod and wherever you get your rods from. All right, I got. Well, I'll oh, them off Amazon. I can send the, you the link to it. Talking about a threaded rod. Mm -hmm. No, I, th I yeah. have to thread them. I thread them. I got a threader. Oh. Hey, Todd. Actually, oh, well, how about, th th how about th threading me about 10 of them and sending them over? <laughs> the same dimensions like I did mine? Hell, yeah. They're all about the same. Uh, about what? Yeah. Four inches? Five inches? I think it's about five inches with the mm. thread. Todd Asher said send him another request. About, oh, about okay. five inches. So, Scott. Hmm. If if you That's were a, if you were to fish Lake Norman, for example, if, let's say that you were going to get in that uh, striped mm -hmm. bass challenge, the hybrid striped bass challenge, right? Where would you start? I don't even know what Norman looks like. Is it more of a river or is it more of a lake? It is. Is it, um, is it, is it got a big? deep pool at the bottom end it's, and then it goes up a, into rivers it's got yeah it goes up in, and it, it's got a lot of creeks that branch off of it it's is it's it small. a shallow is it a deep deep it's water lake small. deep water let me, lake let me yeah. go ahead and kind of narrow this down add some few facts here for you it's a very deep and for the most part clear water lake and it's mm. got two steam stations that produce warm water one the very lower end mm. and one about mm. mid upper and only Googans mm. pay any attention to the steam stations you got it absolutely so i would probably if i was fishing the hybrid striped bass challenge first of the first thing i'd do is probably run eight pound tests i would lower my i would i would probably run eight pound fluorocarbon try number one hooks hold on eight pound fluorocarbon mainline no Later, later. Oh, what about? Now, you I would try down, downside. It didn't eight pound, ten pound, whatever. It don't matter. Okay. But I would, I would probably downsize my hooks to like number ones. I would wait. I'd probably this time number year, ones or or one odd. Hey, Jr. Number ones. Number <laughs> one. Oh, wow. Okay. Jr. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Odd oh, it says it's backstage. It says the host may add you to the broadcast at any time. He's backstage. What his thing says. Tell him to enter the. Tell him to enter the studio or whatever. I think Wes. You have to add him. I don't know. I don't see him, Wes. Do you, do you see him down there? I don't see him. Down I don't there. see him. Yeah, come on in. Who today. gives a fuck? It's true, Todd. He ain't even a fisherman. Jesus, he's skiing somewhere in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, back to me. I would I, I would run like a quarter ounce away, and I would probably run about a hundred foot behind my planter boards and a couple free lines. I would stagger the weight and I would pull Amen. creek miles near the main channel. Well, where I mark, I mean I would look for bait and fish. And if there's a steam plant mid river, that's probably I'd be around that area. Hey, JR, I don't said, know. The he said when it comes through, it's just a blank screen. Hang up, honey. 
But Tough crap. Scott said, he, Scott said, Funky, he said, all you do is ski now anyway. Uh, yeah. I'm not I'm not seeing him. Uh, he said he's not seeing Wes, you. I'm not seeing you at all. He said there's no link to click on. It's just blank. Ask him if he's going to get us, like, the photographer to take family pictures next to Christmas trees and shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said, Quit, hey, you're just jealous. <laughs> All right, I, I sent him another link. Right, he said he just sent you another one. He's got to open through Chrome, probably. All right, Benji said, are y'all looking at the comments? All right, what, what kind hey, of bait are you using, Scott? Well, I have one comment using? about the comments. Wait. I saw Chris what bait? A comment about too much bait's a bad thing. I yes, it 100 percent agree with that. Yeah. I do not love I do not like seeing like a huge water. Like if my dang death finder is blacked out with bait, I don't like that at all. I like to see But a you're lot. not gonna take off and run to the opposite end of the lake. I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna run miles away, but I'm not gonna dang um you know keep on pounding that spot. You know, if that makes sense. First creek, first creek mouth past where the bait ball disappears. That's where I fish. And Peter, I don't know what you were talking about being seeing bait flickering. I ain't never seen gizzard shad flickering any kind of bait flickering in 45 degree water, not down I'm here. Tell you right now, I don't give two shits about a gizzard shad this time of year. That's Boy, bad. You go, that's you, bad you, for me. Well, you said you were going to see bait flickering. What kind of bait are you going to see you're flickering? See small in 45 degree red water? fins pop the top of the water, like huh? real small thread fins. I got an yeah. eagle eye, son. The, the smaller the fish. Come on, shorty. Come on, the shorty. smaller the fish, the higher the tolerance they have for adverse conditions. So if the water's too cold for your big gizzard shad, then it's probably not too cold for a little tiny breadfin shad. Gizzard shad are a lot hey, more is, harder is, than is, is, A lot more <laughs> Hey, JR, can you have blue backs at all? Yes, absolutely. Or I would probably I would I would run a really soft rod to you, like some little open face spinning oh, reel. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, just some of those old, uh, the striper ugly sticks, the medium lights. I'd let him eat. Bead, bead to are, the handle. That's what Todd Asher's getting on his end. It says the link is not showing. He's blocked. Well, it looks like the link is right up there above him there, the, the stream yard link. I that's, see it right that's, one you, that's one you sent him a long time ago. That's not tonight. Well, can you invite him? I don't. Let's see. Hold on. Hold on. Let's see if I can, where do I go to in, to invite? You see at the bottom of your screen, it should say invite. Okay. Invite. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Copy. Hey, hey, JR, did you see my comment to Bryce? Messenger. No. The other night. Bryce, huh? Right. Bryce, you know what Bryce I'm is the, He's the, uh, the guide in Tennessee. Bryce right? and. Yeah, Bryce and yeah. Roberts, right? Yeah, yeah. He yeah. was talking some shit right, to me, Josh, and I said, "You can get it now." If I said if I ordered a guide trip from Billy off Wish, I would show up and get you. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Threadfin shad are more sub, uh, subsequent, subsequent Sub to colder weather than gizzard shad." Subsequent? Who said that? Uh, Chris Brown. Chris, Brown. Chris, too oh, Chris don't that. use big words. Damn it, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> subsequent. What's a subsequent? Subs is subsequential. <laughs> it's not, he it's means not they die. It's halfway sequential. Yeah, if we get if we get low forties, we have big fish kill or big bait kill. Thread fins die first, and fish gorge, yeah. and you can't hardly catch shit. That's a I was looking at the long term forecast for next week, and you know, it's it's not looks pretty good. good. No, looks pretty good. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like it. I'm, I'm hoping Scott. this really cold weather here this week has really kind of sort of made the link a little tougher right now. Scott, should I use gizzards or blue back herring on Hartwell? I'm wanting to fish the lake soon. Who is that? Jason Pinley. Jason Penley. If I was to use gizzards, I would use what I call dollar bill gizzards. Gizzards the size of a dollar bill. I wouldn't use mongos. Uh, Bluebacks are going to catch you a lot more fish, but the shad possibly will get you a bigger fish if they're summer around. This time of year, I would probably stick with blueback stuff with the uh, colder water temperatures. Perry, what's considered a good fish in a Hartwell right now? 
I'm, I'm hearing yeah, all this shit where a pair of eight pounders is pretty dang good. You know, 14 pounders, I mean, it's, 15 pounders are pretty, you know, I don't, I don't know what to expect. A lot of guys say there's so many 14, 15, 16 pound fish in there. And some say you might get one every so often. I don't know. Well, well, I don't know how your lakes fish, but ours gets tough in, in the cold weather. And, and you most – a good fish in the cold weather is 10, 11 pounds, but there is 18, 20 pound fish in there. There's 24 pound fish, 25 pound fish. But I would say in, normally in the strap bass challenge, if you can weigh in mid 20s, you're probably cashing the check. Two fish. Uh -huh. I mean, well, if you get 21, 22. You know, personally, me, I I'm saying 18 pounds is going to be a pretty, I'd say top 20, maybe 18 pounds. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Top 20, that'll be big yeah. fish. On Harwell? A pair. A pair no, of fish. he's talking two fish. What got big fish last year, Scott? Uh, what is 17? it? 17? 15, 17? 17, yeah. something like that. Yeah, I mean, the first year we fished, the, the guy had like 38 pounds. Then the second year, I think it was around, I don't, I can't tell you exactly, 29, 30. If you get high 20s, you're going to be looking pretty good in January. Well, the guy that got big fish last year was, that was the only fish he caught. You know, we, me and Scott and Wes and Mike showed up with, what did we have, 13 pounds, something, 12 pounds? Yeah, it was like. 12, 13 pounds. Well, yeah. we had 12 pounds, Peter, and we came in 35th out of a hundred. Well, how many boats was 108? 30 yeah, it was, I don't know. 190. It was really 12. gusting like 30 pounds. last year. It was nasty. I mean, even when Hartwell was good, it never fished good in January. Like, I mean, it's a tough bite. I mean, that's normally, like I said, when your artificial guys do better as far as numbers. Yeah, I mean, live bait guys lucky to get three or four bites a day in January when the water temperature is in the high 40s. But it'll be a live bait guy that wins it. Are you sure about Most that? Most likely. If you want to sure show up that? with, if you want to show up with respect, fine. Use artificials. If you want to win the thing and go have a more hero or zero tactic, then live bait's where it's at. Well, you know, they are. I, 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 I think. I don't give a shit about who wins the thing. What I really care about is who wins this fucking thing right here, okay? Uh, you don't, you don't care about 25 grand? You want a bottle of bourbon? I want 18 goddamn bottles of this shit, okay? Come on. <laughs> but the thing is, I think... What they are saying is if you show up with live bait, you're hitting the easy button. But any other time, you talk shit about hitting the easy button. No, I, I think... I'm saying it's hero or zero with live bait versus... I think in, Jan well, I think in January... Button. I think in January, if 50% of the people pulled artificial and 50% fish live bait, I, I, it would be a toss up to me. Now, not in March. In March, live bait, live bait would kill it. But January. There's no, doubt, there's no doubt March will kill. March and April, live baiters absolutely blast the artificial out of the water. But I'm going to tell you so, a lot of folks, JR knows, obviously, I do shit different artificial. I take it to the whole new fucking level, you know, and I'm really interested as far as Hartwell. Will it produce the way I do shit differently, you know? So I do things different than so. your typical I artificial. Think so. guy. I think it has the depth. I think it has the depth and it has the topography similar to Norman. I think it's going to be, uh, I mean, right. Uh, James Long came in sixth or seventh a couple of years ago on the SBC, pulling nothing but A rigs. So people first are first place it. came on A rigs. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, we got a good show. I mean, one year, I don't remember what year, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of guys that there's a lot of older guys and guys that live on the lake that just pull artificials, they don't want to mess with live bait, and they do really good. It's, it's, so no, I think if you want to catch that trophy water. fish, they're rare on artificial. Wow. But as far as putting fish in the boat, in this time of year, you don't really need that trophy fish. No. You just need two good quality fish. And, and that's exactly my philosophy. I can't tell you how many times this time of year I've seen someone weigh in a 16-pound fish followed by a dang four and a half and finish fifth or sixth because they couldn't back it up with a second good fish, you know? 
Yeah, I finished fifth with a 16 and a nine. So that was my best finish on Hartwell well, as in the SBC. Have you ever tried uh, pulling artificials on Hartwell, Scott? I don't pull artificial. You don't, you're just not an artificial guy. Mm-hmm. Well, no. have you have thought about it? Have you thought about getting into it? Mm-hmm. I did it one time. I bought about a couple hundred dollars worth of umbrella rigs and made it oh, about yeah. twenty feet. And lost yeah. about two of them and tried <laughs> to use the retriever <laughs> and thing, threw that so, shit. So you my, went. My charter trip today. We talked about this live bait artificial and. What it comes down to is confidence. If you're confident in what you're doing, nothing else matters. So I've been doing artificial for God knows how long. Oh, this time of year. This time I of year. is a picture of a guy. And so well, I'm, gonna, you, I'm confident I'm doing Scott versus, went, you know, pulling artificial. Scott went artificial probably if he's pulling U rigs instead of A rigs. We're probably talking about mm-hmm. 2012, 11, 10. 10. Yeah, that was before a rig. We used we we used to have an artificial only turn in the summertime, and uh, with the club I was in, so I was I tried to learn it. I mean, you got to get good at it. You got to know when to mark that tree and to speed up, lift your baits up over the trees. That's right. I mean. And turning, you got to know that inside one's going to drop. If you don't know how deep you're running, you will soon enough. I mean, you going to lose. Turning, turning is everything with artificial because if you turn mm-hmm. and get bites, then you realize you're either going too slow or too fast. Right away. Going too slow mm-hmm. or too fast because one side's going to be higher and one side's going to be lower. Right. Know how fast and when turn. and when I was trying to pull artificials it was the summertime, so I was on the lower pond, and I mean, heart was. The upper end, you, you can find some places where there ain't a ton of trees, but on the lower end, I mean, it's a forest. And, Is it? and you really got to be bumping the top of the trees to get them fish, too. I mean, you can't just run let the me, damn thing at the surface. Ask you this, um, with the treetops there in Hartwell, um, how high they come up, basically, meaning, um, you know, ask the question a little better here. Is there a depth where, you know, for example, bait and lake, if I troll my baits up to about 20 foot down, I'm I'm safe. But anything deeper than that, I'm in the trees. What's that safe zone? Well, in the heart well? It, if you're in the rivers, it's probably around 20. If you're on the lower end, probably 35, 40. But, I mean, you'll be in 100 foot of water and you'll have trees up to 40. I mean, yeah. and then up in the rivers, you might be in 60 foot and have trees up to – 30 or 20 gotcha. usually usually 30 and up and except for that you know every once in a while you run over one that's sitting at 10 feet you know that's the one that gets you yeah but always yeah you're right. channels so, are pretty good but if you start trying to pull the points like the secondary points and i mean shit you probably want trying to run mile tree uh coming across creek miles hitting secondary points and stuff that's when you got to really be Paying Mindful. attention to the graph. And, gotcha. yeah. So where'd you get them U-Rigs? You make them yourself or did you order them things from Team Old School? I think I ordered them from uh give me a second. The guy from Lanier. Uh Mac help Farr. me out, Wes. Mac Yeah. Mac Farr. Yep. They were already rigged. I, I mean I had to put bucktails on them, but they had wires and the leaders and swivels. And Where's I mean it? they're big. Weighted big weights and big wide. I didn't like them. But you know, if you, you gotta have heavy stuff. Smaller, <laughs> I was gonna yeah, ask Mercer, how in the hell did you lose the downrigger ball and all that stuff? I've I've yet to lose anything on Norman. God knows how long. So what are you using on your downrigger, uh, Peter? Are you using mono or cable? I use cable. I actually I like. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What you use? What I use cable. Cable. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I like that humming sound, and the reason why is because if you're not paying attention at all, and you're, you're doing something in the boat in here, you hear the whoa, and then all of a sudden you hear whoa, 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 whoa. You're like, oh shit, I got a bite back there somewhere, you know. So it's like a little bait, you know, a bite. David sound. said he right. wasn't heart. David said not not Norman. He was on heart when he lost. Oh. Well, I noticed that David Mercer was trolling on Norman the other day. It might have been today, yeah. yesterday. It was recent. Yesterday. And he was using his knocker for trolling. I, that's I ain't I never seen was, no shit like that. David I, Mercer, what the hell are you? I thought that was he got a new toy. 
I, he got a new toy for Christmas, and he just wanted to go out there and I, play. I that didn't want to say anything, but I thought it was typical know. of like you know being you know <laughs> an, you know using your your anchor lock on your trolling motor or being anchored up or you know more like steel fishing, suspended fish, summertime, but not trolling. So is that is mm-hmm. the knocker a thing when it when it comes to trolling? I guess so. I guess it is now, but it hasn't been in the past. Mercer got that new toy. He just wanted to I know, try my buddy, it. My buddy yes, called yes, me today, yeah. and he's like, man, there's this guy named David Mercer, and he's awesome, dude. He's catching all these fish. He was using this knocker thing, and I was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, I, know, yeah hey, I know David Mercer. Funny story. Funny story. Today at the ramp, I ran to a guy, you know, one of my friends, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to say who, but, uh, you know, we're fishing. Do you do any good? Yeah, I caught a couple. Where are you fishing at? I was fishing at, I'm not going to say the location. I'm fishing so and so. I saw in Mercer's pictures yesterday, caught fish there. So why not? I'm like, there you go. That's the fucking prime example right there. Why you don't push the whole damn time. So is Wes Rose going to, uh, are you going to be in the SBC, Wes? With us? Yeah, I doubt it. What the heck, man? You would do very well. Dude, I, I just don't care about tournament fishing. I mean, I. Well, I know. I don't either. But, you know, I, it's fun doing it with friends. Put it that way. I ain't got no friends. I don't really like doing it with, like, people, a bunch of people that I don't know. But, you know, if you and Peter and Scott and, like, my buddy Alan and some other guys that I know, you know, it's kind of it's kind of fun then. I think it's be extra fun for this. Yes, I'm fucking talking this shit up, okay? Man, I, you know, <laughs> you know, a chain gang come together and fucking put balls together. Well, now, hey, the first one we had, at our, well, I, I made a trophy for the chain gang. <laughs> and there, anybody that was in chain gang that got in the SBC who won it won the trophy. Oh, hell. And, yeah, it was who pretty won, fun. Who won the SBC or just got finished better than, than – the right, better than everybody else. Right, right. I like that. Yeah. But they actually, but they actually won. <laughs> they actually won the whole thing. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> okay. Jr. What did you. you do to Chris Brown? I don't know. What did I do to Chris Brown? What am I? Am I ignoring his comments? I don't know. He said, "Let's see. Let me back up." Oh, okay. He said, "My dad makes the pan the pancake balls." Not. Oh. I don't know what that is. I don't know what a pancake ball is either. It must be some kind of downrigger ball that's flat or something. Depending on how the, how far the water's down. Y'all are boring, Wes. <laughs> Going to be one on a crinkle-cut french fry soaked in menhaden oil. <laughs> oh, you didn't say his name. I didn't say his name? You didn't say my name. Well, I, Chris probably don't even know what he's talking about. Don't Chris got some stop signs to flip around to slow to stop? <laughs> I know, man. Next time, wave at me, Chris. Next time I go through there and you and you and you flip from stop to slow, and I and I and I wave, wave back. Be happy. <laughs> hey, Pete Malik, you have a you have a big time fan on here. Some cat named Frank T. Frank T. L. Cobb. Oh, you are his I got fans. Hey, I got fans fucking nationwide, Wes. Unlike you, I'm just kidding. No, uh, Frank's, <laughs> one of my, Frank's one of my recent charters. Actually, he uh, oh, I had a charter with him about two weeks ago. You must have put him on. Oh God! Day. So, so he he heard you talk about yourself for a whole day. No wonder. You- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I will say it was actually a very pleasant half day. We, we, we talked a lot, you know, so it was, it was, it was a good trip. We didn't wear them out by no means, but a lot was learned. Lariki, Lariki wants me to tell y'all a quick story. Man, Lariki and I think Kevin Wallace was with us, and we were on a creek in Russell. And I had been striper fishing for about a year or so. And I think at this time, this was back when Patrick, when Scott Perry really ignored me a lot and didn't tell me nothing. Um, <laughs> you know, he was on that different level than everybody else, or me anyway. Uh, uh, so we were pulling yeah, well, I was on a different level. <laughs> But we were pulling gizzard shad back in that creek, and uh, and I was telling Ricky and, and and Kevin, I said, watch, I said, what's what they do now? Because what they were doing, the striper were coming up and smacking the gizzard with their tail. You could watch the world, the the water swirl around them, and then about three or four seconds later, they'd turn right around, boom, and just nail it. This must have been in the spring. Yeah, and we were over there catching the shit out of fish, and uh, and uh. 
them guys kept put them people in the boat kept looking at us. You know, they were hollering something, something. And I just hollered out, Big Gizzy, baby. And for whatever reason, Lil Ricky's always like that. And I think that's what his team name is now, Team Big Gizzy. And that's where he got his team name from. So didn't know that. That's oh, oh. Crash kind of, and burn. Crash that's not, that didn't look like a DJI. Is that a DJI? Is that a Mavic? <laughs> what is that? Junk. Hey, is that, hey Scott, is that, Ricky Hartness said that was back in the days when he used to watch all your videos and go find your spot. <laughs> <laughs> that's facts. Uh, but I will give them credit for them guys that watch videos. I mean, I, I made the videos, and, and I watch them and can't even really tell where I'm at. They'll find them. They will find them. I'm going to tell you what. So, true story, guys. Um, Lake Norman, you know, I got three, four different ramps to choose from, and I will legit switch up ramps every so often because – I have had times where guys, you know, this is back when I fished a lot more frequently than I do now. Um, I've had times where guys would actually sit idle and wait for me at the ramp to kind of follow where I go. So now one time when I saw two damn boats waiting for me and fucking follow me uh, all the way to my spot uh, above the 150 bridge there, I was like, you know what? I got to start switching ramps. So. There's, you know, I like it. I like it when they follow me. They're not not doing what you're doing. You're doing it's like cooking. You know how your mama can cook biscuits or 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 chili beans or whatever the dish may be. You got to wiggle the worm the right way. Nobody can cook it like your mama. She can give somebody the exact recipe, and it still won't be quite like it. Well, fish is the same way. You're right. Absolutely. So I I love it when they follow me because they don't ever do good. You're right. (laughs) <laughs> I, I had a guy follow me one time and he, he i anchored i anchored on this spot that i've been fishing all summer long and i was catching big fish after big fish after big fish and this guy rode by and he turned around we were the only two guys on the lake he, he turned around and he anchored 50 yards from me and i'm like really dude you're gonna anchor right on top of me and he was like you do any good i'm like i didn't even answer him i'm like screw you man you're gonna fish right on top of me like that well, the guy ended up having to help me land a 61-pound fish because uh, he got tangled up in the anchor rope. And I was like, hey, if this guy's going to fish on top of me, he can come help me land this damn fish. I was like, hey. And they, they ran over there and helped me land the fish. So, you know, well, that tells baby. you one thing about a catfish. A 61-pound striper gets wrapped around the anchor rope. Guess what? He's he gone. gone. <laughs> he gone. That's, That's right. right. How well he's he gone. Doing. Cr- critical question. No, he gone. All right. When he dropped that damn anchor, did he fucking drop it or did he damn fucking fling that shit like whatever? You know how some guys they actually throw I that don't, damn anchor. I don't fling. I never. I've never felt comfortable flinging it. I went fishing with Brian Snipes. He's an anchor flinger. There's a lot of anchor flingers out there. Dieter Melhorn's an anchor flinger. I'm not an anchor flinger, and I'm not a guy that that casts baits out. Like, I, I guarantee you there's a lot of stri- uh, hybrid fishermen on Norman that are using A-rigs that cast their A-rigs out before they put the the planer board on there. I'm not doing that. I'm the saying that, the, a, I'm the saying that A-rig in the water. The casting and the, uh, the abu and everything, I would have damn thought damn sure that you get a running start from your dang bow no, to your No, no, because you, it's, it could foul. You're running the risk of it fouling. <laughs> so I'm setting it in the water as easy as I'm making sure it's running true. That comes from the days of me running umbrella rigs. You know how you have they have to be running true. They can't get fouled as you're putting them. You, know, you got to be very delicate. You got to know what you're doing. Same way with everything else. Bait, A rigs, doesn't matter what it is. I'm not casting it out there, letting it helicopter and running the risk of it actually fouling midair, not knowing it's fouled, and then trolling it for an hour. Who who would Bass do that? fishermen cast them all day long? Yeah. Yeah, but they're reeling them right back in though. Yeah. If you uh, it out if there, you throw it out, so why can't you throw if it out you, there while you're trolling and moving and then just put it out? What's well, the difference? Because, uh, well, the difference is a bass fisherman knows instantaneously. He, as soon as he casts it out, he's reeling it right back in. He knows yeah. if it was fouled. Yeah. Well, if you're moving, if you when ch- you cast that thing out there and it hits the water and you're moving, you can feel it in your rod if it's running, right? Not, not necessarily. So not necessarily. what I do, you know. It's not a crankbait. It's not. What I do is very calculated. My line's got to be out at a precise distance or else I'm getting shit fucking tangled and everything. So if I cast it, if I cast my A-rig, 
it's already done. That's, and that's, that. that's why I like one person to put Bates out. At the most, two. You think these like fish are a lot smarter than they really yeah, are. Really, you know, they don't go to school. It's fucking rocket science. We're it's not about, or, it's about <laughs> organization. We're trying to catch a fucking dumbass are. fish. I mean, I, <laughs> you know, I, I heard for years, you know, JR, you remember? And I remember as a kid, it was always, you know, hey, stay quiet, son. If you talk, you, you won't catch no fish. You got to be quiet. Then all I, I still heard believe was, that. Listen, hold on, let me finish. Then you got these motherfuckers going to 4 probably because they're scared the fish is going to see the goddamn line. But then they make you die for you to die to fucking bait green. You don't look nothing like a fucking normal fish. Then they're telling you to be quiet. They put goddamn trumpers on the boat. And the boat. <laughs> it, it, all de- it all depends. You want to be quiet. Where are you? Shallow. Dude, this, this is not fucking rocket science. It's a goddamn fish. When the fish are hungry, deep. Listen, if that, fish is hungry, if that fish is hungry, he's going to bite your fucking bait. And if it's not, you can bang the goddamn boat. You can troll. You can throw on bell reeds. You can beat it with a pool stick. And you can cuss and pray to God. Damn. If it's not going to bite, if it's not hungry, I don't give a fuck what you do. <laughs> You're Everything right. Everything else in the middle well, is just shit. I can agree. I can agree with that. But there is a there such thing as a reaction strike. So a lot of fish will eat even when they're not hungry. It's called a reaction strike. Well, I ain't never eaten nothing when I wasn't hungry. I didn't give a fuck what the reaction was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, How about that, Wes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, Gerald. I'm Facebook, take us down. But my theory, though, know, seriously, ever since I've been fishing, yeah, I, I know there's certain things you can do, but at the end of the day, it's a fucking fish. And if the son of a bitch is hungry, he's going to bite. And he might want something a little bit different. You can change up your baits, change up your presentations. But I never understood this fluorocarbon shit. Oh, we don't want the fish to see the line, but we're going to dip our fucking gizzard shad in this green and red dye so he can see the bait better. What the fuck? I like fluorocarbon. I don't dip my bait in green shit, though. Unless it's Christmas. Well, look at it this way: you have you have a hunger strike and you have a reaction strike. You know, in the winter time, for example, when it comes to crappy fishermen, you're using as as low as two pound line with little one one hundredth, one sixty fourth ounce jig heads with tiny soft plastics, and it, you're using strike indicators because the bite is so subtle. But in the springtime, you're using the big two and a half inch Bobby Garlands on the four or six pound line. It just depends. Are the fish eating on a hunger strike or are you trying to get a reaction out of them? Just like when the bass or the the, 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 the male bass that are protecting the nest, you know, during when they're on the beds. If you're throwing a jerk bait over there and you're trying to you're trying to get these bass to eat and they're not hungry, they're just guarding the nest eventually they're going to hit it out of a reaction just to just to punish it you're you're in my way bam they hit it and you catch them that way i think it's the same way when you're fishing like a rigs you're 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 fishing you know 10 gauge wire you know you got one guy you got one school of thought saying that hey you got to have fluorocarbon these these fish are line shy and then you got these this other school of thought is there's no way they're line shy i'm pulling 12 gauge freaking wire and they're hitting it well i think it's because they're getting trolled by them at two or three miles an hour and they're like hey chad and they chase it and hit it so yeah who knows i agree so i don't intentionally use fluorocarbon i say intentionally if i'm if i'm sitting down on my couch drinking beer and re-rigging my shit i might do fluorocarbon but i don't go out of my way for it because i am chasing that reaction strike i'm trolling that two miles an hour give or take a little bit you know but we'll say two miles an hour it's not about finesse, none of that. If he wants it and he's hungry, he's going to fucking eat it. Well, that's yeah. that's uh, artif- artificial trolling is different than live bait because live bait, they got it. You're only going 0. 0.7. These fish, I've seen fish swim up next to the bait and look at it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they can look at it. I mean, if you got a piece of uh, – Say a pine, like a needle off a pine tree hanging off the hook, you're not going to get hit. Never. Yeah. All right, Peter, you want to read this? Oh, boy. Mercer, Mercer, Mercer. I had a little left. too much to drink. Let's see. If he left a paragraph. Oh. Yeah. Damn, Mercer. That, what's the guy that leaves the paragraphs? What's his name? <laughs> David Oh, David Farley. Oh, uh, David <laughs> Farley. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's, that's a Farley comment right there. <laughs> read it out loud all right all right so 
I mean, thumpers do work in deep water, yes. But, I mean, do multiple trips and see if that thumper really, really – got to put it to test. You can't say so, your yeah, first a, trip a, out there. So that, a bigger a bigger sample size. Yes. Or, yeah, okay. You got to do like – <coughs> Trip. Yeah, it works. Trick to yeah. that bitch being swimming in the lake somewhere. I couldn't have that. Dump, 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 dump. I, I had a fucking headache just watching that video. I mean, my God, <laughs> migrate instantly. Um, well, I'll tell you now. I can't have Daniel a dang thumper in my boat. I can't do it at all. Um, I paid Daniel Skipper back earlier part of summer to take my grandkids when we went down to Clark's Hill. And, uh, and I had never seen this before. And I guess y'all know, y'all probably seen it, but I've never seen it before. Daniel had like one of those little trolling motors, like for a midget. You know, they're like you'd put on a, a, a kayak or something. And he had two little balls screwed to the props. And he just had it where you just let it, it kind of just sits on top of it and just smacks the water. And he was talking to somebody on the phone. And that guy, he told him, he said, yeah, the fish are over here. And Daniel said, well, they fish to be over here in a minute. Watch this shit. And he put that thing down. And about three minutes later, he told me, he said, watch the depth finder. Just watch it. And all of a sudden, you can see them fish just swimming up under the boat. He said, all right, drop your lines down. We caught wow. like 40 fucking fish in an hour, dude. My grandkids wow. were really like, So it's that's like taking fish the to another Yeah, that's taking it to another level, right? Let I mean, me ask you well, that's just a... thumping. You're actually putting it in the water and it's thumping the water. Let, yeah. me, let me ask you splashing. this. Let me ask you this. Splasher. Do you think the thumping and the splashing and whatever fancy gizmos out there, do you think – it works for big fish or just your schooly size? <laughs> Small fish. Schooly. And it's a summertime thing. Exactly. It's when the fish are dying deep. I mean, it causes the bait to, you know, the baits reacting to the thumping. Maybe the noise, maybe it's like a schooling noise where the fish, when they hear other fish schooling or birds diving, it turns them on. But it will bring fish to the boat and it'll hold them there, but it's schooly fish. <laughs> Thomas Walker, <laughs> Thomas Walker said the SBC is going to be one on precision casting and nutrient filled water with micro workouts. <laughs> <laughs> cut French fries. Hey, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Damn. That's the funniest yeah, so I can't believe it was big fish in that dang thumper or whatever, you know, squeeze size fish or. What I could call good guide fish, you know, like you go out there, you know, on a trip. People want to see fucking the Rosbit, so that shit works. But I know, I noticed something. That I don't do the downline fishing much. I've been a couple times with Skipper fooling around. I went to Hartwell and done it, you know, in the summertime when I got kids on the boat. But if you lose a fish, I think it's the same way with saltwater. If you lose a fish at the surface, yeah, like it'll I shut down that school. That feed. I don't know if they release yeah. something. And I'll bring you into the like show. most kind of like the most, school of thought where you release the fish on the other side of the boat. Like if you're oh, crappy okay. fishing, you're catching them on one side of the boat. You don't right. throw them back on that side. You throw them back on the other yeah. side. All right, well, most, most guides won't let you throw them back. Like, cause for one, they want you to get your limit and get out of there. But two, they, if you throw one back, it'll shut the boat down. Yeah. It's like the fish are going to swim down there and be like, Guys, aboard! Fall back! Okay. They're not gonna. They're they not gonna hit. <laughs> you know that's kind of. Like I guess they probably they, they probably release some kind of chemical. I don't know. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's well, some way for like them. Grouper. If you lose a grouper when you're bottom fishing, he gets up under a rock or something. You break him off. You might as well fucking leave that spot. You ain't gonna catch another. One. Yep. That's what they say. I'm going to tell you something that does work, by the way. Um, and I've, I've proven this. A lot of times if you go offshore, especially this time of year, you get those dang um, little sharks that show up there in the uh, the bottom spots. The um, dogfish, I guess. And it is true. You bring one in the boat. You slit his damn belly. Throw his ass overboard. All the dang fucking sharks will scatter. Gone. Really? Yep. Do y'all hear They probably eat his ass. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm not doing David Mercer justice. What's that Why? audio? What Y'all hear that? Who is it? Mine? Rick. Y'all hear that audio? That's that Rick. He's asleep over here. Uh, my David dog. Said- my dog and Heather over there on the couch. So you might hear him. 
All I know is quit changing it, Wes. All I know is I seen a thumper work firsthand. Damn, JR, your shit's fucking messed up. Do y'all hear that? Is it just me? Is it the audio? I don't hear nothing. Okay. 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 Go ahead, JR. I ain't going to fuck with you no more. All right. All I know is that I seen a thumper work firsthand on a buddy's boat, and now yeah, yesterday I marked more fish than I probably ever have, and they seem to stay with the boat noticeably longer. I caught more fish than I ever have on them, so maybe it has nothing to do with the thumper, but it dang sure didn't scare them off. So, yeah, that's, well, I'd that's run good it. enough. That's good to know. Have you ever used I'm just ex- Pete. I have a thumper on my boat. It's called my outboard motor. I just look up to these people like Pete and Mercer and go out in the shitty weather to catch two pound fish. They're my heroes. <laughs> Damn, son. I knew that she was coming at some point. <laughs> hey, listen, if, listen. My, if my lake had fucking fitties, I'd catch fucking fitties. Listen, right? listen so Scott and Wes both are products of. <laughs> A they they were locals natives to a fishery that produced trophy freshwater landlocked striped bass. Those days, are no, gone. I mean that's those days are that's gone. seriously. There's no so way I get out they're, they're in bitter. ten degree weather. See, they're bitter. I give lake, it up to them. Hey, hey my lake Lake Norman does not have enough microorganisms. Okay, <laughs> listen, Wes and Scott are bitter. They don't. They don't. They don't give a shit about catching small striped bass because they had so many big striped bass right at their fingertips for so many years. Now they're gone, and now they they just they're like, yeah. If I can't have the big fish, I don't want any fish. So, why would I want to catch a two pound fish when I can catch that? Well, yeah, burn less gas. I promise you that. Those are awesome. Those are awesome. But what about the other ten months of the year? Saltwater fish. That's right. That's why I they don't count. Water. They don't count. I've what seen about that the other 10 months of the year? times already? God damn, Pete, you can actually count. <laughs> your your <laughs> net, Peter, is a thump. Yes, you know what? Is. Catching small fish. Why do I get this picture off here? <laughs> Leave it up. <laughs> it isn't easy. is isn't as easy as people think it is. Look at the tail on that thing. It looks like a broom. There you go. We'll go for it. Sam, you got rid of Peter. Bye, Peter. What the heck? I didn't get rid of Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Switch sides. <laughs> How did that? <laughs> Dang, I can't believe we still got 22 people on here. Hey, Peter, hang on. Talking nothing. And we ain't talking one thing about, thing about fish. <laughs> Yo, Hap. Well, Scott, okay, let me ask you this. If you go to Norman, what would you look for? He would look for like a right now. Hey, like, Scott, you come to Norman, you're going to get your fish. ass kicked. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now. You come up here to Lake Norman, <laughs> <laughs> you're going home hey, kicking rocks, brother. It's like a fucking gang. We jump you, you got, in. You, you, got to know, you got to know how to fish. If you're gonna come, yeah, them, them hybrid are tough. Them, they are tough. It's like damn, they're like piranhas. Y'all Put something down there. Boys, listen, y'all South Carolina boys are spoiled. Y'all are like we got silver, y'all are born with a hey. silver spoon in your mouth. Y'all's DNR stocks two million uh, fingerlings a year in y'all's lakes. You know how many they stock in Lake Norman? Lake Norman's the biggest lake in the state, and they ain't stocking but one hundred eighty thousand fingerlings a year. I'm on. I'm on correct. So come on up here. You I'm think you think Lake that. Norman's it's, easy? Come on up hey. here and, and get that skunk, boy. It's gonna be a I'm, long I'm ride home. On that. It's it's three hundred fifty. Now it is. Now it is. It wasn't five years ago. It wasn't. They just now started doing that because they started yeah. that tagging program, yeah. and they realized that the fish are actually being harvested. There's oh. like okay. Maybe we should stack more. I think that fish could easily hold 500000 a year. Easy. Well, let me you tell you, South Carolina, the they're, right they're, they're quadrupling our stockings in South Carolina. The South Carolina boys are spoiled. You let them the, come to North Carolina, and we'll, we'll see boys, how good they really hey, are. You ain't, why would, why would, hey, I ain't denying why, that. The SC boys we, are spoiled as hell. Why would we want to go to North Carolina? I don't know. I part? wouldn't if I was y'all because y'all gonna be fish. y'all probably selling your boat. But I mean, why would we want to hey, drive that far? Let me, let me tell y'all this: the NC, NC waters will make you a damn that. better fucking fisherman. I promise you that. 
You come down here to NC, you're just going to make you a better fisherman. That's, Man, the, that's the truest comment I've ever heard. Y'all come down here and catch fish on Norman, you're going to be, you're going to, it's going to make you a good fisherman. No, that's an habit, brother. I'd, 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 I'd rather be a bad fisherman. Y'all take Norman, stick it up your ass. Hey, them damn Lake Norman fish, you know, truth be told, these are some fucking high class, goddamn rich fish here now, right? That's right. Better than make yeah, sure that's fucking bougie. fluorocarbon this. You get, everything's got to be damn perfect for these dang little ritzy-ass bitches. Right. Lake Norman. Then, mass, that's a NASCAR lake, man. Might yeah, see Dale Jr. Yes, sir. Lake Norman is a sexy mistress, boy. She will, she, will, she will draw you in, and you'll fall in love, and, and then, ain't, and then ain't she much will you can do about it. humble your ass. She will humble you. You know what I would do if I lived in North Carolina? What? For real. Sell your shit and move to South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> I'd fish. I'd fish pay ponds for catfish. <laughs> God <damn>. Oh God, <laughs> gross! <laughs> You'd have those ambassadors that have the carp on the side of them. Carp mass. Yeah, I'd have me some. Them. I'd have me some James River catfish right there in the pond. <laughs> <laughs> Lake Wiley catfish. You could get you some of them Abu Garcias and precision cast between the lines like they're doing. That's right, there. my you God, you damn it. right. You learning, Wes? You learning? <laughs> Wes, you want no part of that, brother. You don't. Want no part so of that. what do you? So what are you going to do, Jr. For your uh, hybrid tournament on Norman? Get his ass. He's going to damn give me money. I'm gonna. I'm gonna listen. I'm old school, bro. What kind of bait are you I gonna got, use? I got tricks that these boys nowadays ain't got. Even Peter don't know. I got Shit. I got tricks Peter don't even know. Shit. I'm old school. I'm I'm a I'm a I'm the you ever you ever heard that song uh uh Dr. Dre on that uh I think it was Chronic 2001 where uh Dre says uh y'all gonna uh he says y'all think uh you're gonna make me bring back the old me, you know that you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's that's me. <laughs> I got a building out there full of crap. This for this type of fish. I done retired from this kind of this kind of fishing. This was pre Facebook. This was because I moved on to to blue giant blue catfish. Uh, if people look at me now, they see me going out and they catch. They see me catching two seventeen pound blue cats. I went. I went today. I caught a couple teenage catfish. Didn't even post anything. Just went out and caught a couple yeah, of catfish. I was trophy fishing. I didn't catch a trophy. I come on to the house. I pulled the boat down to Murphy's and pulled it up. Come on to the house. And, and I got my buddies calling me saying, David Mercer did this. Uh, Peter Malik's doing this. I'm like, I don't care. I did that shit for over a decade. I, don't, I could give a rat hey, ass about going out to Tr Lake Norman and catching told, hybrids right, right So I got, I got to clear the air here a little bit. I would not post a lot on Facebook, but it's like anything else, man. If I want to book trips, I got to post shit. It's unfortunate. That's the way it goes. You know, I he, post everything on Facebook. Fuck that. Except for 15 it. pound catfish. <laughs> I would post a three. <laughs> I would post a three pound hybrid before I post a 15 <laughs> pound catfish. I, I hey, agree. Hey, that's that's why hey, I don't post them because it I takes away you, from it. Hey, I guarantee you that dang two and a half pound fucking hybrid took a lot longer to ruin that fucking 16 pound catfish. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, JR. <laughs> Listen, it's so, it's so simple. You go down, you you go to the main channel on Lake Norman, you zigzag it until you start marking. I'm not a big guy that marks fish. I really go where the fish should be instead of trying to ride around and mark fish before. Well, I that's a fishing. good game plan. Hey, that's man, a great comes, game plan. But when it comes don't to mark this fish, kind of, yeah, just to, pull. Hey, man, that's just big kind of bass shit. There. Easy. You're gonna come across them. You zigzag that main channel down there. You're gonna come across a school of hybrids. You just drop you you drop your lines. You run them on planer boards. You run some sinkers. You run them on downriggers. You, you stagger your depths. You pull downriggers, and you catch you catch the hybrids. It's hold, not hold, hard. Hold that You're that Benji said I won't add him on Facebook. I'm sorry. I got a long list of folks that want to be friends on me with me on Facebook. But Listen, here's the Peter's thing: a superstar Benji. If, <laughs> if you're holding a fucking catfish in profile pic, I won't add you. Hey Benji, Benji, check your message. I sent you an invite to the show. But uh, you're gonna skunk, Jr. I might. I might. Yeah. It's been a long time since I've targeted hybrids on Lake Norman. <laughs> hey, you won't listen. You hard headed. You got a little bit of intel. A little bit I'm, of intel. Very hard -headed. I'm very hard headed. I'm very hard headed. Not afraid of getting skunked. And uh, that ain't how you turn. Listen, you're gonna listen. be pulling gears. I'm not. Chat, I don't give a crap. Twelve inch I don't Baby care what Mongos, Mongos. Doing. I don't care what anybody's doing. I'm gonna do what I want to do. And my my all my friends mm -hmm. are like. Are like, hey, I wonder where they went. Hey, I bet they were up there. Hey, I bet they were. 
I don't care where they. I know more than they do. That's the way I look at it. I know more than they do. They need to be worried about where I'm. Going. I don't need to be worried about where they at. I need. They need to be worried about where I'm. At. That's the way I look at things. And if I get skunk, I get skunk. That's, 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 that's the way I roll. I think you're the same way, Scott. I'm. I mean, I'm not going to ignore my grass. Oh, not in a hybrid tournament. Daryl, 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 Daryl posted. Who so you're, you're going to go six pound hybrids. Yeah, you're going to mark fish. But see, I know where the fish are. The, the water temp suggests that they're in the main channel. So you go to the main river channel until you mark fish, and then you just you put your a rigs out, you troll through them, and you catch them. It's not. I don't think that. Bad. I don't think the bigger hybrid are going to be in the main channel. Oh, the main river go. channel. Here we here we go. Now that now you're starting to think like I am. Oh hell! Yeah, there's going to no, be a lot. Hell gonna, no! They're, gonna, they're, <laughs> they're definitely so going to be schooled me, up in the main let channel. Let me add this tidbit Peter, information. What Peter, where are the hybrids on Lake Norman right now? The majority of the hybrids on Lake Norman, where are they right now? In, in all seriousness, they're everywhere. All right, so let me talk here for a little bit. One thing that I have noticed over the years on Lake Norman is if you're marking big schools of hybrid, you probably don't want to catch them because they're fucking small. All right. Your big hybrids are like normally singles, doubles, triples, you know, in, in little small wolf packs of five fish. That's it. See, all right, this is how you take – don't take a hybrid picture like this. You want to take your hybrid picture. <laughs> Damn, son, is that like a gallon that right jug? There. Is that a gallon jug? Yeah, don't, don't hold it up here like this. Hold it up. <laughs> Daryl Barney saying, who proudly posts six-pound hybrids? I do, but also I proudly take your fucking money in a tournament. <laughs> well, uh, Jeff, listen, I, I, I want to say two things. First of all, we're going to address Mr. Pete. Pete, I'll tell you, you, you my little buddy, and I love you. But oh, goddamn, you'll pat, you'll pat yourself on the shoulder quicker than anybody I know. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. You don't have to worry about nobody bragging on you because you're good on that one. <laughs> J.R. Cochran. Now, Pete, now see if you can help me figure this out. You've got this big thing everybody talks about, and you say it a lot easy button, easy button. Right. When I'm spending my money and I'm going fishing, I'm going to push every fucking easy button that I can find because I want to catch fish. That's what I'm going for. Yeah. So I don't understand why people say, oh, you at the easy button, you push an easy button. Well, why the fuck do you want to push a hard button when you're spending thousands of dollars to go fishing? That's why fine. would you not want to push an easy button? I, I don't you, understand you that. You can push Explain the easy it. button. You can push Explain the easy it. button, but but don't yeah. don't talk shit to the guy that's not pushing the easy button. Oh, I don't. Well, some people ain't going to catch fish if they're pushing an easy button. Here, no. Here's the thing. Wes, you, exactly. know, you know damn well, so does J.R., so does Perry. Everyone, every day on the water is a learning experience. No it's matter what happens, you learn every day you're out there. That's a fact. A lot of folks, they think that, hey, easy button, I must know this, that, that. You know, the days that I go out there and I might catch two or three fish, I fucking learn on those days. You know, even then, 15 years later, I learn those days. Just like you do, just like JR does, everyone else. And the biggest, I'll tell you something else I learned about fishing years ago. When I used to fish a lot as far as like two or three days back to back to back, I went out and did things on one day and caught fish and go back and try that same thing again because it worked that day and it didn't work the second day. That's weird how that works out. It it is. Today, it's all about sunset pictures to me. I like a good sunset picture. Skunk set. Skunk set. Hey, Scott, what did we all, what we used to say? We, you know, you know, people's going fishing, and somebody knew I was going fishing down at Park Hill. And after about three hours, I posted a picture of the sunrise. And he said, <laughs> "You ain't catching shit, are you, Wes?" You ain't said, shit. I'm gonna tell you, you know, talking about learning experience. Today was the first time I have done this on Lake Norman, and it worked. I have my damn downrigger as deep as fifty fucking foot, and I caught fish. I don't, I don't ever set it that deep. How long? How far were you off the downrigger? Um. Three pulls. Three pulls, that's it? That's it. That's all I do. No, no secondary weight, just totally free line, three yep. pulls off the downrigger? Yep. What were you pulling on the downrigger? Live bait? Uh, or? A-rigs. A-rigs. Uh, he, don't, he doesn't pull live bait, Wes, at all, ever. Never. So let me ask you a question, you experts. If you're if you're marking bait in uh, 50 foot of water and it's 20 to 15 foot deep, Whoa, 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 whoa. You, you said mark and bait in 50 foot of water and it's only 20 foot. How's that possible? What are you talking about? 
you're marking bait in 50 foot of water and it's only 20 foot deep. That makes no sense. I, I feel you. Hey, Scott, I got you. I got you. All right. So the bait I is 20 foot down <laughs> over 50 foot of water. Okay. 20, 20 continue, foot down continue. over 50 feet of continue. water. Okay. 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 Continue. All right. So, or you're pulling over 50 foot of water and you're marking bait at 40 foot. Okay. Does that change your strategy? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Because you got to get your baits down to that depth. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that, what's that tell you? What's that tell you? All right, so if you see, if if you're seeing bait low, what's that tell you? So let me let me answer the question. Number one, if I see bait down low near the bottom, then fish are fucking shut down and they won't fucking bite anything at all. Period. Exactly. Okay. High pressure. Yes. High pressure. Yep. But okay. they will. They will bite cut bait. <laughs> but they ain't gonna bite pulling bait. They won't Chances bite anything. Are. They won't bite almost anything. Yeah. Right. Hey Pete, you say now you said you never you always pulled A rigs and U rigs, right? No, I don't. That's, that's a common misconception. I don't pull A rigs all the time. But no. I mean but you don't use live bait. I no, do not use, use live bait, bait now. He pulls A rigs, he pulls single soft uh soft plastics and tandem soft plastics. Don't be giving away all my damn secrets. secrets. Come on, Jared. I was kidding. Well now let me tell you a little secret. If you were trying to pull up some live bait. Bam. Shit. <laughs> that's, hey, that's number Bam. fucking 28, baby. Number 28. Bam. You know what, Wes? I think <laughs> 29. We, could, we could catch those Wild fish bait. in the bay on mojos. I don't. I think you could. Yeah. Anything that looks like a bunker, I've would trolled catch the shit them. Out of, They're full I, of bunkers. I trolled the shit out of that bay years ago on mojos, and I never caught a damn thing, but I think that you could. I, I heard Clint on the radio saying that they used to catch them on mojos in the bay. Well then, why did they quit? Why use a mojo? I would, I would use something that looked like a bunker if they're full of six-inch bunkers. The mojo does look like a hey, bunker. That forty-nine, I thought, Jay. I meant Scott. Is that big? Had, hey, Scott, that fish had three bunker in it, about dollar bill size of gizzard, mm -hmm. and still eat a, and still tried to eat a fucking eel. Oh yeah, that ain't shit, did it, probably. Yeah, yeah they're feeding. Barney, me baby, let me tell you what, man. I can throw a fucking 12, 14 foot net all fucking day long throwing for damn pogies king mackerel fishing. Trust me, I can throw a damn net real good, buddy. I can throw a net real good. I want to see a Daryl Barney pitcher that doesn't have a guide or a dam. In. Is there one? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. All the Back side, again. You know, I mentioned this. Dale Barney, fucking it good dude, man. Met him at the damn ramp, you know. Damn good dude. Yeah. Cool shit around. We, you know, whatever. You, you met Daryl Barney at a ramp? Well, what, the, the what tournament that took his Darryl fucking Barney money, yes. At? The tournament took his money, yes. What What? What was this? What, 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 what lake was this? Oh, maybe he didn't want no one to know about that. Yeah, so about a month mm -hmm. and a half ago on Baden Lake. On Baden? On Baden Lake, yes, sir. Okay, Daryl Barney got in a tournament on Baden? He got a tournament and he showed up with a fucking skunk. But then again, three quarters of the folks show up with a skunk too. So yeah, but yeah. Yeah, hold yeah, to him, yeah. you know. But uh, yeah, no they are trying to get March Bank last year. I wonder who he's trying to get this year for this. Hey, he, hey, he showed up, man. That's that's yeah. what matters. He showed up. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Daryl Barr is awesome, dude. You know, he hey, don't be, before, you might you or, might show yeah. up with a skunk this this year, Peter. You're right. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. You're right. Oh, yeah, I guarantee. I guarantee. There's a sixty percent chance I will. Come on, come on, fish with me in the uh, HSBC on Norman uh, Perry in West. Yo, come on down, fish with me on my boat. Bam! He said, "You, you hear how late he said, Wes? He didn't. He just. He didn't want you to get mad, Wes. He didn't really. Oh, hey, he ain't got to worry about that's all right. Y'all, <laughs> hey, y'all would fall in love with Lake Norman. I'm telling you. Hey, hey, I Wes, would. Wes, Wes, I gotta say this, man. I gotta say this. This is the first time in God knows how long I can say this here, but we are an hour and a half in and West in. And now JR's not like, well, it's been a great show, man. We'll see you all next week. Well, she's drinking liquor and he's got his buddy Scott <laughs> right on here. He's drinking that fucking dirty sock ass fucking water. I'm telling you right hey, now, last baby. Time that he did that, last time Scott was on here, we run and I told him I had to go. So I finally got off. And then I got a notice on YouTube. These motherfuckers was doing a show on YouTube and there wasn't nobody on the show but him and JR. <laughs> we're talking back and forth. I was like, why don't y'all just text each other? Man, I'm telling you, I that think, 100, 
that hunter proof Evan Williams, that green barrel, whatever it's called, is really good. So, at the the old my, green barrel. At, at the end of my trip today, the uh, guy left me a case of these. Fucking good shit. Uh, that's what is that? A, is that a, is that one of them? Um, what do you call those things? Those nasty bitter IPA. I, is that an IPA? They are IPAs. Yes. Oh. What? I'm I'm feeling fucking right today, man. I tell you, I had a, some that tin apple. cup, and then two of these. Man. That's a good what. mixer, Wes. Yeah, the IPAs. I mean, oh man, I try to get into them. They're okay. I don't know. Just... So obviously, y'all know what I do for work. But one thing that I, you know I enjoy is going to these random cities and buying beer from that city. A pilot drinking it. IPAs, shocker. And then, and then if I like shocker. it, I'll bring it back home. Yeah. Hey, you ever? Yeah, I thought you were a stewardess. <laughs> there, were, there were some damn fighting words there. Hey. Hey, <laughs> they're called flight attendants now. That's pretty good for a, a cheap mixer. bird. It's, nice. it's a mixture. Yeah, I like the, like the label. Uh, what proof? They're, they're called flight attendants now. I like that. That's that's what I have. They said, yeah, ninety-two. No, nice. Yeah. You ever you ever slept with? Hey, Peter, you ever slept with stewardess, like in another city or something? We'll talk about that after the show. (laughs) (laughs) Why don't you just Why don't y'all just buy some fucking beans for him or Mad Dog Twenty (laughs) Twenty? It's too sweet. Too sweet. You get a headache. Benji just mad that I had to add him on Facebook. I'll, hold on, Benji. I'll do it right now. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hey, can you wear your stewardess outfit next time? Wear the little hat. Hey, absolutely. I will send you a private picture. How's that? Peter, you really should wear your pilot hat on the show. That would that would really up the views. <laughs> Hey, who who misses the gray? I would if I was a pilot, I'd wear that shit everywhere. Who misses the gray sea art? <laughs> playing, rap, playing rap music. God damn! Hold, on, <laughs> sorry, hold, on, hold that thought. I got seventy five fucking friend requests. I don't even know about. Accept them all. <laughs> no, no. Especially them women with the big boobs at JR's on his page. Oh, I don't know where he's from. Yeah, Benji, I had I had Benji, one comment. I, Benji, I, I apologize. You were holding a striper in your photo. It's an automatic confirm there. Is you holding a catfish? <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. So here you go. Done. Have you, you seen the Facebook movie? Besties now. Have you seen the movie Catch Me If You Can? Probably not. No. Yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio hides in, hides in the landing gear. And that, no, it was actually based on a true story where he was forging checks. He got into forging checks and was posing as an airplane pilot. And he flew, mm-hmm. like, all over the fucking world forging checks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he played a doctor you one time, seen that too. movie, Catch Me If You Can? No, I haven't. Yeah. No. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. That's good. It's That's a good movie. movie. Benji, where are you fishing at in SBC? Yeah, tell Six us and all. 20? Please, please tell us Three all. and 20? Listen. Listen, if we're going to come down there – that's North Carolina boys and getting the SBC. Then y'all should come up and get in the the HSBC with us. Don't you agree, Peter? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Y'all don't want me up there because I would smoke that place. You would like, come smoke, on up, man. Perry. Come I on would up. smoke I'll it. Take, I guarantee it. You I'll take you fishing. I, me and Hybrid fishing. are like this. I'll like take this. you fishing like the week before. I'll, I'll show you what's up with Lake Norman. I don't want you to show me. Why would I have a catfish guy show me where to hybrid on? Hey, I'm, I'm going to tell I'll, you right I'll, now, I'll, every every fool I know from SC, Georgia, that's come to Lake Norman has fucking skunk three days in a fucking row. I seen Dieter anchor up up there by the dam and catch some peanuts all day Dieter. long. That's no, where I go. Not, not Dieter. Not on Lake Norman. Yeah. Catfish. No. Nah. He's got he got hybrid videos. Not on Lake Norman. I mean, yeah, he's he's got a couple uh, where he's like pulling boards. I, I just want y'all to know stuff. that I had Dieter on my boat one time ever. Okay. One <laughs> I time. I remember that. And we fished the um the SBC Was it? on Lake Norman many years ago. And Dieter got his personal best hybrid on my fucking boat that day. And yeah, so well, he uh this I'm 
you know, FYI, he how didn't big was that? Credit. He gives I, I don't remember, but I want to say it's about six and a half pounds. It's a pretty good fish. He gives all of his. What's the uh, biggest? He gives all of his his hybrid fishing uh, credit to to uh, what's the guy's uh, Mac Mac for Mac for Peter Mac Byron Byron Mac Byron yeah yeah, yeah he gives all the credit to Mac. What's a trophy hybrid? I'm like Norm. As Anything right now, over over six pounds considered nice. Yeah, I would say five pounds, but yeah, five pounds is yeah five. So if, if you get four fish or five pounds, that's a tournament top three, that's, no doubt. Um, yeah, you're if winning. You get a six pounder. If you, if you get four eight, fish over five pounds, you're winning the tournament. What one? What what? Did the last SBC that you won? HS twenty one pounds, baby. Twenty one pounds. Yeah. Twenty one pounds on the money. Yep. A catfish guy fishing for striper. That's fun. That is funny, Thomas. I would I'm, laugh. I'm originally a striper guy, bro. Guess what was second place? No, I'm reading the comment. It's going to be oh. funny. I heard through the great. So, Thomas, you're fishing the SBC? God, they're going to be throwing Mongo Gizzard Shads on zero spooks on the bottom. God <laughs> almighty. Hey, how'd them floats? Did they leak, JR? I, I honestly I haven't tried them enough yet. I've only used them once. I don't have. I don't you have took a mailbox. I don't have enough of a sample size to really have an opinion on them yet. I gave you, one away. You can cast? I had two. I only have one, so I gave one. I think I gave one to Alan. You can cast further when they're full of water, then. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, hey, it's been a good show. It's there it is. Oh, there it is. We'll start that shit. There it is. <laughs> we'll start that shit. We got twenty. We got twenty-three people watching. Yeah, don't start thumbs what? up. Hey, it's been hold on. Ask right? somebody. Ask somebody what they want us to talk about. Give yeah, us a. Awesome. Give us something to talk about. All right, guys. I'll tell you what. One thing I want to fucking talk about is why in the fuck you got that damn Christmas shit. In the damn background there, Scott, when it's after Christmas. Listen, we'll keep going if we can get 30 <laughs> likes. We got 23 likes. We got 23 people watching and 15 likes. If we can get 20 likes, five more likes. Everybody go hit that like button and we'll, we'll keep her going. We'll talk about some juicy shit. Stewardess shit. <laughs> damn, son. No, that's, that's what I'm fucking... <laughs> In uh, Jamaica. Yeah, on YouTube later. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm going to go make another drink. I'll be right back. Yeah, I'll be right back too. I gotta fucking piss like a goddamn racehorse. Right. Hey, Jay, from West. Likes to twenty-one likes, just, real quick. We, are, we just got over two hundred likes right there. Uh, twenty likes. I wish we had two hundred likes. We just got over two hundred. Look at them, Joe. Look at them. All right, Jason Finley, talk about cut oh, bait yeah. fish. Okay, I see what you're saying now. All right, talk Big about fish cut bait fish. fishing. Cut, cut bait tough fishing. One. Now I've never been a big cut bait guy when it comes to small fish. Can you can you cut bait for small fish, Scott? Like yeah. On, oh yeah, on Lake oh Carmel. yeah, blueback, mm -hmm. blueback herring. Your main, I mean, you can uh, cut bait big bait on hobble and and hope for that one or two bites of fifteen pound fish. But yeah, most of your cut bait on Harville, Clark's Hill, and uh, Murray are going to be on bluebacks. Bluebacks the king. And yeah, you can catch hybrid, largemouth bass, catfish. Hey, you can catch thirty pound striper on bluebait cutbait. So, it's it's probably the best bait all around bait for cutbait. Blueback herring is probably one of the best baits all around for striper. Period. Mm -hmm. A cutbait in the winter is tough. If you like cutbait now, you can catch fish cutbait now, but you're gonna you're not gonna get a lot of bites, a lot of opportunities. But I'm in tough conditions. It will outfish uh, pulling bait. Let me see what other questions we got here. I just sent 100 likes so you guys can keep talking about hybrids on Norman. <laughs> I don't know anything about hybrids on Norman. Nothing. Never been on Norman. Damn, I'm by myself. Hell yeah, that's my show. Paradise Fishing. Hell, everybody else sucks anyways. There's toilet ball. He's back. Oh, we're all back. We're back. We're live, we're back. baby. We're live. We're live. 
What I miss. I, so I, I was, I was just. They wanted to talk about cut bait, and I was just yeah, uh, yeah, talking leaving. about. Talk about cut bait fish. I'm gone. I'm out of here. See you. No. I was telling them cut baiting in the winter time is a you're going to get very few bites, but you'll probably catch quality fish if you do get that bite. But you might sit there all day and not get enough. You know, so one thing I've realized over the years, you know, so shocker here, I used to cut bait fish all the time this spring before I got to this artificial shit. And now I've got to the point now where, you know, when that time comes, fuck fishing because the crowds are too much. There, but, so let me guess, with not knowing anything about you, if you hybrid fish and you cut bait in the spring, so you pulled up on banks. And so cast it out the back. Let's, of the let's backtrack. We're talking about the golden years of Lake Norman back in the early 2000s. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I'd cut bait herring and all that. One thing I realized is gizzard shad ain't worth the fucking shit for cut bait fishing. No, they're not. I've never caught a fish on a cut piece of gizzard. Other than I've won striper. I've won. I've I've won three tournaments on cut gizzard. But um, I will tell you that it's. It's a bait that's either going to sit out there all day and not get touched, or it's going to get that one bite and it's going to be a better fish. So right. I always put right. I always put a gizzard in my spread, but I would not, I would never just put a gizzard spread out. No way. Now, now let me ask you this: Is there a certain way that you cut the bait that works better versus anything else? Well, on Hartwell and <clears throat> on Hartwell Clark's Hill Murray, I, which you're looking at teenage fish mostly i will cut the head and tail off and i fish with the center section oh really, oh, really? yeah and a lot and a lot of times and if you belly hook a gizzard you can't throw it off and a lot of times i'll use treble hooks with the gizzard gotcha so what but, i did back in the uh the, we'll call it late norman glory days way back when i'd say 2001 2002 2003 Back in the day when fucking fishing was fucking most important than the world or anything else, um, mm -hmm. cut brim was uh, a fucking awesome bait for, for big fish. For big fish. I've never uh, tried. You, you, can, you can tell you but, don't catch that many big fish. Thing, if you though, cut brim is a good bait. Here's the thing: fish. you had to cut that brim a certain way to catch striper. If it you did not, you, you weren't them. getting no bites. You talking about butterflying it so it looks like it's yeah. swimming and flapping in the current? So Come on. You, you'd actually have to cut the brim to where the head is on the hook, and you had to cut it out in a circular way, or else the, the fish weren't fishing at all. I know you talked about the gizzard shed not being good cut bait. I think one of the reasons is – is as bad as they stink, they're not as like oily as. Oh my say, god, gizzard shad's great. Or, bait. What are y'all talking about? Gizzard shad's great. Not for striper, striper. You came in late. Oh, for striper. Yeah, for striper. Gizzard shad's great cut bait. Uh, I mean, I've I've won a couple tournaments catching them on gizzard, but it's not a great <laughs> cut. I mean, it's it's a very rare you get hit on, but when you do get hit on <laughs> yeah. it, you choose it better fish. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, well, well, you, you, give us some context here. You're talking about. Uh, lakes that are that have. Tra uh, I'm talking trout. about 15 years of cut baiting with herring and gizzard shad. That's all the context I need to give. All right. Yeah. All right. Herring, herring. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Here's here's the problem. Here's the problem that we have today. This is right why Scott doesn't want to fish Lake Norman for hybrids, and that's why he hates small fish. That's why Wes hates. Never small said fish. that. It's, hey, face, it's all that. about Facebook. It's social media. You I never said these, any of that. These, you see these guys catching these big fish, and you think you got to catch big fish. When bef before there was Facebook, we had we were all local. We were all micro niched into all we knew was people that fished the same waters that we fished. Our, we had, basically, we had a circle, and and we competed with those guys. And we competed with those guys on, and we were catching small fish, but they were still big to us. They were big to our group. They were bigger than Joe Schmo down the street was catching. So now you're competing with Facebook fishermen. Now you're competing with guys like Chuck Time and Manny that's holding up 50 pound mm -hmm. trophy stripers. And yeah. You're thinking, hey, I, I'm not no, doing no, any, I'm not doing anything by going and catching these little five. five pound hybrids. No, I compete with what. <laughs> On, like if I see somebody catching good fish on the lake I fish, what what Chuck has, catches in New Jersey has nothing to do with what I'm catching. That's a Yeah, yeah. I, 
I honestly now I compete with myself. I try to be better than I was yesterday. I try to catch better and more fish than I did the last time I went fishing. I don't have to, and I'm not saying this, but I'm going to pat myself on the shoulder like Pete does. Yes. I don't have to. I, I don't. I don't have nothing to prove to nobody no more. You know, I've worked my ass off fishing. You know, and 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 Marty told me while we were up in the day, he said, "Wes, he said I'm not going to say no names because you'll get mad." But he said everybody was saying that I was going to get my ass handed to me when I started saltwater fishing. You know, um, that, that was me. I, I went fishing. Oh, okay. But you know, I went down there, and, and, and you know what started it was I went out with Pete. We went down to Pete's boat that day, and Pete showed me. He took the time, showed me how to rig a ballyhoo. Um, you know, he told me some places to fish, how to fish out there. Pete took me out there to the ledge, first time I'd ever been out there. You know, you got to have people to show you this stuff. He took me out there, showed me how they troll for wahoo. I went out there and did it myself. I rigged my own baits. I went out there and I caught my own fish and there wasn't no guy on the boat. To me, I thought that was amazing. So <laughs> I wasn't trying to impress nobody. I was trying to impress me. I wanted to see if I could do that. I don't care what Chuck Tommy catches. I like to watch him catch fish. I don't care what you catch. Gary. I don't care what you catch. Pete. I don't care. I want to worry about what I catch. You know, and yeah, I do like to post stuff on Facebook, but from, but, I don't have nothing to prove to nobody no more about fishing. You know, I don't. Yeah. So Thomas said, Scott Perry, I heard you used to be a walleye fisherman. Is that true? Uh, no, I've caught walleye, but when I lived in Michigan, I didn't have enough money to fish except for off the bank. Uh, who's going to win the SBC? Benji Smith. I say uh, Peter Mount. Fucking Bear no. Guinness. <laughs> Hey, I have a goal. Just, just so you know, I have a goal for the SBC is to finish top 20. That's my goal. He said Bear's got a schoolyard again. He may. There's a lie detector test. Uh, Clint, Maine, eyes. JR is 100%, Benji said. What did you say, JR is 100%? I, I don't have know. No idea. So I got to add this part, right? So I used to not fish artificial like I do now, okay? Um, many years ago, I used to be a live bait fisherman as well. And then I got introduced to the whole artificial thing, just very basic stuff. And the day so I fished, what? So what brought you into the artificial world? Was all right, it the so mark? Let me, Can I answer? Let me, let me go ahead and finish what I'm talking about here. Okay, right? okay, okay. And, uh, so I'll answer your question here. Um, yeah, fuck so, you, Jay. I, yeah. I introduced <laughs> the whole artificial game by a friend. He invited me, one of my high school buddies, and we started do, doing this whole lead core thing. I liked it. You know, it was, it was consistent. We caught fish. You know, we didn't have a banner day. Do you day still run lead core today? What's that? Do you still run lead core today? Yes. Yes. On all on all your reels or no, not all. A select one, two. select 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 four. Yes. Got a three pound hybrid on lead core. What a fight! Hey, hey, <laughs> hey you got to do what you got to do, Scott. <laughs> we're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not all we're not all South Carolinians. Uh, I'm but, sorry, uh, Peter. Go ahead. Okay. I, so, you know I have. So I got introduced the whole lead core game, you know, and you know I, I liked it. We didn't wear them out that day, but I'm like, you know what? This is fucking pretty fun, you know. Maybe. I, I can take this to the whole new level. So my first boat was a bass tracker. You know, like anyone else when he starts out with a small boat, 16 footer. And I was quite successful troll lead core, you know, back then. I had an old man one day tell me, boy, you ain't never going to catch no goddamn fish trolling that kind of shit. I'm like, oh, really? Okay. So all of a sudden you start winning tournaments. You start getting top five, ten, top ten. And people start kind of sort of seeing what you're doing. Um, a couple of years went by, you know, back in the Lake Norman, what do you call this? What's the, what's the old term that's back then in the Lake Norman? The Striper Swiper, is that right? Yeah. Striper Sniper? Lake Norman Striper Swiper is what it was. Okay. So the last few years of its existence, I started finishing top five, winning a few. And all of a sudden, these guys are like, this, this Maybe this guy fucking knows something. Um, so you start winning a few tournaments, and now all of a sudden these guys are like artificial. Is, this is kind of working around here. So Lake Norma went from a lake to where I was the only person trolling artificial to now basically three quarters of the folks are trolling artificial, and I am the 
first person that actually started trolling artificial on that damn lake. No, you ain't. Yes, sir. Everyone was a live baiter trolling, you know, trolling fucking gizzard shed and trout well, and whatever maybe, else. Maybe in, in maybe in your maybe in your circle. But what what year are you talking here that you were the first? We are talking. So let me think about this. I graduated high school in 01. So we're talking about roughly 2004, <laughs> roughly. Okay. That's well, then, yeah, you were definitely doing bad. it before I was because I wasn't doing it in 04. That's for sure. So um, does does the, didn't the artificial have a lot to do with? I mean. It's hard for you guys to get live bait unless you catch it, right? Lake Norman, you might as well never count on live bait out there. That shit is so damn tough. There. But I mean, like if you had a bait shop like a minute from the ramp, you would probably more likely fish some live bait once in a while. We, we, ha we have some awesome. live bait shops that are probably 15 minutes from the ramp. 15 well, minutes. Depends. If you want shiners, you can get them as less than shiners five minutes you can from get the ramp. Anywhere, but like Shad, you can't get anywhere in Lake Norman that I know of right now at least and, yeah, and plus yeah. you do you you do trips so it's nice to not have to worry about yeah i'm gonna tell you it is amazing to where i can show up the ramp at exactly 7 30 in the morning not worry about live boat and then i should keep me alive overnight and know that i understand that. that's why a lot of guys downline fish in the summer it ain't because they get excited over it but you can take People that don't fish and don't, you know, they're happy to catch a cooler full of fish out and do it. But so but I'm taking just, the same lead core stuff to from the O Lakes, Bain Lake, High Rock Lake, Watery, and SC. Murray, I know it works as well out there. And I, I fucking, dude, I've told circles around. Isn't it, isn't it weird how when it comes to crappy fishing, using minnows is considered like elementary like you're below me if you're using minnows like i'm catching them on jigs you're using minnows like i don't you're you're a zebco 33 to me but it's not quite like that when it comes to striper if you're catching them on artificial you're not necessarily better than someone that's using live bait but, i don't know i think it depends if you're artificial if you're artificial guy you think you are yeah, yeah, I feel like artificial takes a lot more finesse. Like, if a fish is hungry, he's gonna eat live bait, but not always artificial. If that makes sense. So I, I think I think it takes a lot of the fish out of your. Like at certain times of the year, there's fish you can't get to with artificial unless you're casting them. The thing about striper artificial and like crappy artificial is you're actually most of the time you're working it you're hands-on with it when you're when you're using artificial striper you're just relying on your motor you're just pulling you're just pulling paddle tail soft here, plastic. Here's, here's, it's, not, it's not all about pulling it's covering a lot of water you're pull, yeah you're covering a lot you're covering of water a lot of water like today perfect example today i have found today i found the fish in a i'd say a one mile area you troll past it, nothing. You come back, boom. There's the bait. There's the fish. You're catching fish. You troll past it, nothing. So you're, if you're a live baiter, and let's just say you're a half mile away from where the bait's at, you're fucked because you're only trolling half mile an hour, one mile an hour at best. And me as a artificial troller, I'm trolling two miles an hour, maybe a little more, give or take. And I'm covering. I'm, I'm able to mark bait, mark fish, and kind of narrow my shift down. Well, let me ask you this. I was, it, why can't you troll live bait two miles an hour? That shit with that I, helicopter. <laughs> yeah, you don't do that shit. You know that. Yeah, I know I know quite a few guy live bait fishermen that really? will troll pre-fishing, cover water trolling. And then once they find a group of fish, like you say, then they, they might set up on a live bait trying to catch a bigger fish out of the group. I, I had so the, the last few years of the SV, not SVC, but the um, the Lake Norman Striper Swiper, I actually noticed that a lot of guys with troll lead core, they mark a pile of fish and all of a sudden bring their shit in real quick and drop live bait on top of them. Let me add, I got a question for you, Peter. All right, so if you were going to go trophy. Freshwater landlocked striper fishing. Let's say the cream of the crop is, let's say, Carthage, Before Tennessee. we continue on, hold that thought because there is no trophy landlocked striper fishing in NC. You know that damn well. No, but no, anyways, I'm talking about traveling to, to Tennessee. Let's say you were going to go to, to middle Tennessee and you were going to fish Carthage. Uh, uh, let's say, what what's the river there on um, 
Cordell Mountain Hall. Hill. Mountain Hill. Cordell no. Hall. Cordell Hall. What's the uh, the river? Oh, the Caney. The Caney. Let's, the say, Caney. let's say you were going to go to the Caney Fork and 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 try Cut to catch yourself. Try to catch yourself a trophy. Yeah, it's on the Cumberland. The Cordell Hall is yeah. up here. You come down mm-hmm. the Caney. Cordell Hall is above the Cumberland. The Caney, the Caney runs into the Cumberland right there, right there below yeah. Cordell Hall. Yeah, below yeah. Cordell Hall. Yeah, but yeah. you're not on Cordell Hall. You're on Hickory. No, no you're not on Cordell. Are you on? Uh, I'm already uh, fucking Hickory. lost. Anyways, no, continue. Fuck sakes. That's all let's, let's 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 I ain't going to Tennessee anytime soon. Anyways, most bro. most guys that go do that, they they stop. They go to a trout farm and they they'll either go catch skipjack or they'll stop at a trout farm and they'll fill their their fifty to hundred gallon bait tanks up with giant live baits and then they go pull and they do what they call surfing. They'll go up the river. They'll turn and they'll come back. They'll be running water, so they'll be going with the current. So they're they're hauling ass. They call it surfing. They got their boards out. They're pulling these giant live baits, trying to catch a trophy striped bass. Now, if you were to go do that, are you pulling live bait or are you pulling some kind of like big segmented artificial? What are, what is Peter Malik doing in that situation? So I know nothing about Tennessee, but knowing the size class of fish up there, I'd probably pull live bait. I'd adjust to the area. I pull live bait. So there, there. So Peter will pull live bait. Okay, that's all. Well, I my want area, to. I'm more confident in artificial, and I'm more confident in bringing fish to the well, scales in a tournament this time of year with artificial that I would continue to troll artificial. But again, but I thought you just said, not, said that you couldn't pull live listen, bait. That listen, part. listen, listen, listen. You just said not, that you could not pull live bait. That part. Hey, you're not from NC, so you don't know what kind of shit waters I fish out. I'm here, not talking right? about North Carolina. I'm talking about yeah. pulling bait, period. You, you can, said you, you can't pull bait. You said, who the hell pulls bait two miles an hour? Well, we're pulling bait up there three, sometimes seven miles an hour. Con- context. Especially with yes. the current, though, right? Yeah, yeah, you're going That's with the current. current. That's different. We'll yeah, there's, about it. That's yeah different. there's no there's no current where we fish, Wes. It's because if you if you pull it's if you pull the live bait four miles an hour, no current, then you're not going to catch a damn fish. No. Because that fish going to be going in. You gotta kill your <laughs> baby. Uh, it's it's gonna be horrible. What? So, so a herring can swim thirty miles an hour, but you can't fucking pull him two miles an hour. Hey, can, can you no. run twenty miles an hour nonstop for an hour at a time? Now what? Can you run like full sprint for an hour? Motherfucker, I can't walk for an hour. <laughs> well, there you go. That's your fucking answer right there. Think about it, little dude. I'm not a fish. That motherfucker nah, can pull a trigger, though, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, if you get anything over a mile an hour with a herring, he ain't going to last long. He ain't going to swim right. He's just going to – he ain't even going to swim. He's just going to drag. <laughs> the secret is you just have to go through the upper the upper jaw up through the nostril and close his mouth, and that way he won't drown. You can pull him as fast as you want all day. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You don't want to pin you don't want to pin a Harry's lips together either, JR. Well, yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. No, you don't. No, you don't. Do it. Oh, you do it on Norman. Oh, you do it on Okay. Do it on Norman. Okay. You so, pin their lips together? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. yes. I would yes. love for all no of to to this damn hybrid tournament on Lake Norman. Absolutely. You know what? For the hybrid tournament, we'll even throw a damn ball of liquor for the dang, you know, amongst us as well. Guys, if he's on. gonna <laughs> pin if, 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 if he's liquor. gonna this guy if is, he's gonna <laughs> if he's gonna pin his herring lips together, uh Peter, I'm I got all my money on you. I mean most guys are gonna go through the nostrils, but if you're yeah. gonna be trolling fast yeah, <laughs> Come on, the, Jay. Are you? Mouth shut or either you're gonna drown no. Them. You're gonna drown them if you don't. You would think I'm a fucking alcoholic with all this damn liquor. I'm betting, guys. Wes, Peter, if if you're trolling in current, if you're trolling fast, do you not want to close the the bait's mouth? No. You 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 want the bait's mouth to be pulled open by the current and and drown. Well, first of all, first of all, when you're hooking through the nostrils. The fish is not going to hold his mouth wide open and drown itself. If you're trolling fast, it the the current the the hydro Who's, the hydrodynamics okay. will pull them, but the fish's mouth open. You aren't going to be pulling herring through current one. You're going to be pulling herring less than a mile an hour, and you're not going to pin his fucking mouth shut. If you are, you're fucking retarded. <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you this. Wes, how do you, how do you fish eels? Huh? Eels? How do you fish eels? 
Do you go he through the nostril? Them. You because close eel, your mouth. Eel, why, eel, why do you close your mouth? Eel, an eel don't have gills. An eel don't have gills. <laughs> right. An I don't know. I don't know nothing about an eel. So, but I know if you pen if you pen a bait fish's mouth shut, he's dead. I'm telling you. So back in I'm the day when you. I used to actually fish live bait, we're talking about way, way back in the day. If I hooked a bait through the nostril, I always had a dang problem with the dang hook coming right back through the damn bait and not getting a good hookup on my fish. Right, right. That's what you in the mouth. So or I, you go through or you go in the mouth out one nostril. And you never have to worry That's about pinning their mouth yeah. shut, Scott. In in the mouth, the upper upper mouth, oh, yeah, upper okay. upper lip. We'll call it the upper lip. Okay, like that right there. The roof of the upper mouth. Okay. There you go. You learned something today, Jeff. Mister, I, I can I, do it better than anybody. I know I, everything. I know. I know I'm, I've been doing know. this since 2002. I know. Any, any, any. Whatever. You don't pin their fucking bait close. We ain't cut bait. Uh, fish against me. Fish Let's against look me. at comments. I want to see fish what people me. got to say about this. Yeah, Never close the mouth guy. of the bay. That's the first comment I see. There you go. Okay, yeah. Com guy. Comments. Guys in the comments. Is there ever a situation where you're going to come up to the lower jaw through the nostril? Cut actually, bait. Actually, well, cut bait. Was on fire going on there. You are strong, son. Are we liquored up or what? <laughs> I might. Damn. I've drank a whole pint of Hunter Proof already. Drink that I wish we'd get more comments. What? Striper guys out there, let's comment. What do you think about pinning the fucking herring's mouth shut or any bait fish? What do you think about trolling artificial this time of year and fuck that live bait shit? Hey, I'm going to tell you right now, I got one of those dang fancy ass <laughs> god dang. I don't take a damn picture of shit in my dang shed in the backyard. I got one of those dang fancy ass. Super bait tank too. Well, you got a full. Of, you got a bait tank back there, full of full of uh, super fluke juniors. No, no, no. Just that like motherfucker is there. a dang. That's a fucking dang. What do you call it? It's a, it's a workbench right now. It's got a fucking hammer and all sorts of shit on top of it. Golly, you got a super fluke junior fisherman in here. Them, them artificial guys. They're they're that close to getting a range of bass boat. That close. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> I, I, I concur. Hey, I'm not fucking going to sold my head again. Guys, I'm going to right there. Bass boat. Fuck. Cut bait, what? the only time to go through bottom and top. On small bait, I agree. Jump, there's, a new, there's a new way to, to, to hook cut bait. I just I found this out just, just a few months ago. You actually when you're when you're cut baiting, for example, like uh, the head the head portion of a gizzard shad, you're gonna want to come in at an angle on the top of the head and the skull. You come in at an angle. Now, you don't go through the eyes. You don't go straight through the top. You have to actually come in. I don't know if I I can't explain it on here, but you come in at you hook it diagonal. That's how you is this so it. in the so when the catfish come up to it, they look at it this, and they're like, well, prevents, that hooks. This prevents is, the, the bait from flipping around and hooking itself. You know, like you used to. Is that an issue? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Because I'm telling you, man. I'm cut bait. These cat fishermen, let me tell you a little Y'all use 10 odd oh, hooks. How is it? Clint, these guys are slinging. They don't give all, a Clint, shit. Don't they love on me. I know what I fucking got. Come on. <laughs> I know what I got. Do better than that. So you hook it through the eye and at an angle? No, no, you don't go through the eye. No, you just go through the top of the bait, like in the skull portion, and you come in at a diagonal at an angle. That's how you hook uh, it. That's the best. That's the best way to hook a head a head portion of a bait. Now through the belly. Yeah, I mean, if you hook it through the belly, you still run the risk of the bait turning and and. And it hook, it hooking the point of the hook, and you missing a fish because of that. Is that how you miss a fish at Santee? Listen, you have to let a fish eat. <laughs> you gotta let a fish eat. God damn, rough crowd. <laughs> Fuck. I need a shot for that. You gotta let a, you gotta let a fish eat. Listen, Santee. Listen, guys. <laughs> I I fish on people's boats. I make videos. I fish on people's boats. I I don't. I've gotten out. I've, I'm basically retired. I'm basically nothing but a videographer now. That's all I do is fish on people's boats. 
but I would, I would really, Blake Norman's my home lake. I would love for you guys to come up. I know you don't want to fish Wiley because Wiley doesn't have any, any, any sort of those striped fish, but Lake Norman's got those striped fish. So I wish I'm, that you, I'm, South Carolina striped fishermen would come on JR, up to Lake Norman. We're fish, so I don't know why I hadn't asked you yet. You can jump on my boat one day and we're going to fucking fish. Well, you're working Thursday. I would say come on out Thursday and let's yeah, kick some ass. Work. But yeah, I gotta I gotta head to head going Thursday against Allen and Lacey. I gotta you, you already know how I, uh, anywhere. There I'm you gonna go. kick I'm gonna kick their fucking ass. I'm gonna well, go ahead get and that damn you. beer money, boy. Get that beer money. Yeah, I'm gonna kick their hey, ass. Hey JR, you said when you're on somebody else's boat, you just kind of go with the flow, but I like for people to tell me shit when they're on my boat. I learn things. <laughs> always. Always, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I don't mind it's, somebody it's saying fun. I like it's, to hook. If somebody says they like to hook their bait this way or that way, I'm like, put that them two rods out like that. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I mean. Absolutely. Yeah, I do that. I do that. I mean, I think that uh, you know, I fished with you on for catfish, and I think that uh, you know, you ex- we both experienced. I got to experience what it was like to to fish with you and how you wanted to fish, and I think that you've seen a little bit of how I wanted to fish. And, it was fun. That was a uh, the James River when we went down to the James River. We didn't fish, but a total of probably what do you think, seven eight hours probably total. Yeah, uh, probably. Yeah, but we did good. I think we were successful for what little bit of time we we fished. I mean, I watched how you were cutting the bait and hooking the bait. I pay attention. I'm not done. Uh, what did he say, Scott? You want catfish, right? You want the old fish, sport fish. That's not a fucking catfish or whiskers, right? <laughs> Scott was fighting the fish, and Jr. and and J- James Law was already tweeted up behind him. His fucking eyes was crossed, and he's laid back on the bench and they're about half asleep playing with a flashlight. So we're trying to help Scott. Scott's fighting the fish, and I'm trying to get other rods out of the way. Jr.'s turned the low. He looked for James Law. He said, "Get your ass up, help him." <laughs> that was so funny. I didn't James realize Long, I even did that. <laughs> James Long didn't even know we was fighting a damn fish. He got up and turned the damn light on and shot in the light in the top of the cabin. And JR said the damn fish is on the back of the boat. It ain't in the cabin. Sound like fucking <laughs> JR, not JR. James Long was fucking playing on fucking TikTok or some shit. He was. Like he, was, he did not have a care in the world. He yeah. was he was piddle dicking around on something, and I was like, I was like, James, get up and help them. What are you doing? <laughs> it was funny. Oh, what? It was it was the second rod in, and when it, the fish hit hard, I mean, he smashed it, and he went under the back rod. So I I wanted somebody to lift the back rod so I could duck under it. But there was Jr. had a camera in his mouth, and Wes was going live, and, and <laughs> James Long was damn <laughs> tweeted out on the couch. <laughs> I'm the one that moved the rod for you. <laughs> you did. Listen, it's a, it's a given. I'm the videographer, okay? I'm making the best video. I'm making a better video than anyone else could possibly make. So, no, nah, JR worked, he worked pass. hard on that trip. He did work hard, but, he kept, but the only reason he worked hard is because he talked us into going down there, and he's like, God, oh, mighty, we better catch something. <laughs> we got to catch hey, something. Yeah, yeah, it would have been a perfect day for you to hop on board because it was quick glass, no wind. You can fucking launch that dang drone, whatever the hell you got there. Hey, Peter, if you want to go make a Lake Norman, if you, you like Lake Norman? Lake Norman is my – that's my that's my mistress, man. That's probably that's Lake my Norman promiscuous... is my favorite in December, January, oh my February. God, my Lake Norman months. is that's, Norman. that's my baby. That's my baby girl. Yeah. I can, How many I can, acres can, is that like? It's fucking it's, ginormous. It's, it's thirty three thousand five hundred acres. Oh, well, you can it's the biggest lake in North Carolina. Carolina. You can say yeah, does it I mean, got I mean, two rivers? One river feeding it. Two one river. Feeding one river. The top, the river. That's it. What's funny is the lake above it that's feeding it is the smallest lake on the Catawba chain. It's a little bitty. Uh, Lookout Shoals is the name of it. It's a little bitty lake, but there's supposedly big stripes in there. There are some good ones, yeah. Yeah, there's supposedly some some thirty pounders in there. I fish is, that lake all the time. Which is huge for what? Well, which lake? Lookout Shoals. But, but yeah. Yeah. Why not? Bullshit. Just skunk. So what? Bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. You say it's got 30 pounders in it? There's yeah. 30. Yep, yeah, there's 30s in there. Yeah. What the hell? Road, I get road, skunked on Russell all the time. Rodius has 30s. Rodius took Dory, like not like right after they got married. It was just maybe a year or two ago. He took Dory up to Rodius 
and uh, they were pulling some gizzard shad and uh, caught a 30 pound striper. So if you were to compare the two, Road Hiss is the lake to go to for your 20s plus, for sure. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Road Hiss is a, uh, it's a good lake. But So yeah. y'all just told me how shitty the fishing is, and you got a lake up there that holds 20 pound fish, and well, y'all I'll, choose I'll, to I'll, fish for hybrid. I'll put it to yeah. you this way, Scott. If you'll call DNR, they'll tell you how much they stock in each lake on the Catawba chain. And I want to say... They don't stock any more than like 14,000 fingerlings, striper fingerlings on any of those like Catawba chain lakes above Norman. Like the and lake there's Rotary probably stuff. zero pressure almost on them. There is, yeah. <laughs> That's so right. I, I don't go to those lakes because I'm not driving fucking three hours to fucking. Oh, it's three hours? Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. No, I thought it was right around the corner. It's, yeah, it's, you have Norman, Lookout Shoals. Hickory, what, hick, hickory, then road hiss. Yes. So they're like boom, 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 boom. They're like boom, 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 boom. Road hiss. You, you, can, you can be on road troll. hiss in a, not much more time than you can be on. Let, let me add this on road hiss while trolling for striper. You can also catch musky and um, walleye. Musky and walleye. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'd my, be all. Oh my god! Calm down. You're gonna get <laughs> Scott's gonna get an erection. Yeah. <laughs> what do we got? Twenty five thousand on road hiss. Still, 25,000 compared to – look at Lake Murray, for example, a South Carolina reservoir that's around the same size as Lake Norman. They're stocking 2 million, 2 million, 2 million. Yeah, but like – Russell, they're only stocking like – I don't – I think it's like six an acre or something really small. Like they don't stock Russell like they do – uh, Murray, or but fuck, I ain't going to Murray catching a cooler load of three pounders. I'll go to Russell and get skunk, and take a sunset pitch. I, yeah. I am not so I, I get asked all the time, <laughs> Why don't you go to Murray? Why don't you go fish Murray? Dude, I have a hard time driving past Lake Watery to go fish Murray. Same class of fish, same class. Okay. I'm, I'm not driving past Watery to Murray at all, period. Um, it's, it's shitty where, you know, Murray, you got Murray, Clark, Sill, and some of those other lakes down there where, I mean, these damn guides make a fucking living fishing those damn lakes, the, you know? The thing and about they, watery, they though, it's like the stripers that make it sufficient. The stripers stay the same size on watery. At least on Murray, they get bigger. You know, they'll continue. Not much bigger. bigger. This they, year, I have found them, them, fish on, them fish on Murray by 21 inches in, in the last 20 damn years. No, you're wrong. I'm yeah, telling you. Are. You're wrong. You they, they, had, they, they, they had a fish kill about 15 years ago on Lake Murray. Big fish kill. Before the fish kill, they were catching 30 pounders on the rag on Murray. Big, Lake Murray was the big was a big fish lake in South Carolina. No. Yes. Yeah, and then I'll they, then they start and way. then they had the fish kill. Murray, they up, Murray they has up never been a big fish lake in South Carolina, JR. Never. You're telling me Lake Murray wasn't a big fish lake in, in the 70s? No. 70s and 80s, Lake Murray wasn't a big they, fish lake. Yeah, yes, there was big fish in there in the yeah, 70s. Yes, and 80s. it was. Yes, it but was. It wasn't the big I feel fish like lake. in the 70s and 80s, there are big fish in every fucking lake. You can, if, you, if you name the lake, there's big fish there. They had the big fish. Kill. They, you had to catch started, your own bait back then. They started stocking them again. And there was like no the damn mid, Facebook and Verizon back then. The either. mid 2000s, mm -hmm. they started stocking uh, up the stockings from 1 million to 2 million. The fish, the the krill limit was, or the size limit was uh, 21 inches. And it seemed like every fish you caught was like 19 and a half inches. It was right there. Mm -hmm. that now, now every fish you catch is 20 inches. And, and it's bigger. still, it's still that lake. <clears throat> if you, if I was wanting to catch a 20 pound fish as bad as Hartwell was, I would go to Hartwell for Murray. I know Murray's got big fish in it, but for some reason, I don't know if it's the pressure. I don't know what it is, but that lake has never in the last 15 years produced a lot of big fish. So I have Not talked consistent. to some guides that fish Murray, and they say plain as day that they'll leave in the morning, catch their limits, come back around 11 a.m., get the next party, catch their limits. Mm -hmm come back get a third party so that lake is getting butchered like 99 percent of your striper fishermen on lake murray are pulling herring 
this big. Mm. Best bet you can pull on Murray or Dollar Bill Gizzards. Uh, Murray. A friend of Murray's got to more the SPC on Murray every single year, and he would. They've only had one. He would. They've only had one. Thirties. They've only had one. They just. It was just there last year. They have one. The SBC was on Murray last year. Am I? Or this year? Had, Am that I was, correct? Am I correct? Was the that, SBC not on Murray this year? That's their tournament trail. Their tournament trail. Right. So they've had two, ever. So he ain't caught. Every yeah, the year SBC has only been on Lake Murray twice ever. The big tournaments only been on it once. I'm, I'm the big the trail. Do they not fish Murray? The trail been on it once. Yeah, yeah, the big There's only been one year of the trail. When you have the actual like plane okay. tournament. Well, when did they have the big tournament on Murray? The big one, the Winter Classic. Was it 2014, 13, 12? No, um, no, it was it was like uh, 17, 16 or 17. That was the first one ever. Now they used to have the S. I think it was before. BB. They used to have the SBCC. That was another turn. That might be the one I'm talking about. Yeah, but anyways, that was Warren. Warren Turner. Yeah, Rob Hedrick catches bait. I know Rob. Rob Hedrick. Yeah, he 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 won he won that that tournament with a couple thirty something pounders back. Yeah, when 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 they weren't that was unheard of on, on Lake Murray. Well, I mean, they did it, but I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying that it's not been known as a big fish. Like, had Daniel no. Rush caught a 30 pound rummer? Did he? In a tournament. Yeah. I mean, they're there. I'm just saying that that lake has got more stripers in it than any lake I've ever seen. Like, if you go to Murray and get skunked, you really are doing something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I've, I have. I finally did go to Murray and get skunked once, but out of out of the the twenty times I've fished Murray, I've only gotten skunked once. It's a definitely a great lake if you just want to go catch fish. Like That's if you right. want to take a kid fishing, yeah, go to Murray. Yeah, the summertime at the towers, throw a light out, throw on some music, put your put your thumper on, and the first time out. that I ever went, the first time I went to Murray, me and Kenny Moore went down there. We put in down at that ramp down there to dam where they store boats at. I can't think of the name of it. Uh, and we bought get we bought bait right there behind a gas station. Then we pulled down that road and went down to the ramp. And there was a boat storage place down there. I can't if you say the name of it, I'll tell you. But anyway, so we go over to this island. A guy named Jason. I can't think of his last name. Jason told me where to go. So me and Kenny got over there. We dropped down lines down. We had ten fish in less than thirty fucking minutes. We had to load the boat up and come home. I said, "Fuck this." You know, you had a five fish limit per person. Yeah. And this was about five years ago, six years ago. And you see, I told him, I said, what the fuck? Did we just come all the way down here to Columbia to catch, to fish for 30 minutes and leave? And you can't krill out. You got to keep what you catch. If they, oh, if they, that's, if they're that's only you, a certain time of year. That's only a certain that was time. Yeah. yeah. You can't, you couldn't krill out. You had to keep what you called and you had to leave. So we caught 10 fish in less than 30 minutes and we had to come back home. The yeah. first. The first night turn that I fished down Murray, I bought six dozen herring. And uh, the night turn it started 30 minutes before dark. And by like 10 o'clock, we were down to a half a dozen bait, and we didn't have a keeper in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> I, bet every, I bet everything was right at keeper size, though, wasn't it? Right? Yeah, it was like 19, 20 yeah. inch. 19 yep. and a half, 20, yeah. Uh... Mm-hmm. Lake Watery, man, I'll tell you, like, like I said, I have a hard time driving by Watery to go to Murray. And, JR, you might not like this, man, but this year I have caught a ton of dang eight, nine, nine, and I'd say nine and three quarters. It, it, an honest weight, nine and three quarters, my biggest uh, striper out of Watery this year, this winter. That's a good fish. That's nine they're, and a, they're there. Nine, nine pounds is a good fish. Yeah. Damn, you should have mounted, you should have mounted it. Fuck that. No, uh, no, sir. <laughs> I, I ain't no damn rookie shit, boy. Um, no, so one thing this year that I learned, so I had to actually adjust this year a little different than my typical water years. Um, I found these bigger fish this year down lake near the lower dam. And, you know, you run those damn Navy on through those damn chips and shit. And there's a lot of damn humps down there in the lower end. And them dang fish were on those humps in the lower end this year. Have and, you ever went down there and got on some jump fishing, you know, schooling fish in the summertime on Lake 
watery. I, I am not driving the summertime to catch striper. I'm not doing it. That's uh, that's fun. It's fun, but again, it's like I, I really, honestly, I'd hate to summertime fish for striper, and every fish I catch, I'll probably kill. If that makes sense, maybe. Well, it's know? a put and take fishery, Peter. It's okay. It is, but listen, let's face it: the summertime, these dang fish don't fight at all. Zero. It's like bullshit. You go, really, watery, you go down to watery. You go to go down to watery really in June, in July. Dish rag. You go down to the dam. You, you, you right before the sun rises. You throw your binoculars on. You start panning around, and you start seeing those damn things. School. You ride it. You shoot up to the school. You throw your Zara spook. You start walking the dog. Boom! You and your buddies got ten fish in the boat in ten minutes. Fun. That is fun. It doesn't get much funner than I can see why bass fishermen. Because anytime there's diving birds, anytime there's schooling fish, you're not going to just, there's not just going to be center consoles. There's going to be bass boats. And I can see why it's fun. I, Catching those schooling fish I would is absolutely sit a home blast. And reminisce about wintertime fishing and then going out there in the summertime. Seriously. Hey, Pete, hey, Peter, when you go to Harwell, don't rule out the, uh, the lower end. There's going to be less fish, there's going to be less boat traffic. But there's, uh, I don't know, there's a group of fish that never leave the lower end for some reason. And it's because, small. Well, I, could, I could tell you why. Because the lower end is the most stable water on the lake. Someone, that's yeah, why. I've talked to someone that's fished a tournament in the last couple of years. He's not fishing it this year. Um, he told me the lower end, it's a very feast and famine. But if you catch one mm -hmm. down there, it's going to be going. Yeah. yeah. You go to the lower I mean, end and you start working your way up until you start seeing points islands you know channels I mean, ledges not... you start seeing all this different structure you go to the lower end and come up until you start seeing all that shit and then and that's where you fish that's that's like that's a that's an easy that's the easy button there's a lot of most people don't fish the lower end in the winter time but there's like there's i believe there's groups of fish that never leave the lower end oh. it's just not a big group i mean you got to find them yeah, I agree. I go, I go down there. I went down there and pre fished last year, but I mean, there's not going to be any boat traffic. Most people are going to be up the rivers where the majority of the fish are going to be. But if you can, <laughs> if you decide to go down there looking around, I wouldn't. I'd run five, six miles down to the bottom and look around a little bit. Might be yes. something you like down there. Absolutely, Frank. A spotted bass most definitely run with hybrids on Norman. Most I agree. They do on Hull also. And spotted bass, perch, hybrids, all of them, yeah, oftentimes, yes. Yeah. A wise man once told me, if you're catching, um, if you're catching perch, the striper and the hybrids are nearby. Yeah, I mean, because they're out there, they're they're being nomadic, uh, pelagic. They're out there swimming with those hybrids and stripers. And schooly they, fish. The spot bass are an absolutely. It's weird because they look just like. A largemouth bass you would think they would act like largemouth bass they, they act absolutely nothing like a large a spotted Still bass today, put in a spotted bass acts like a hybrid today a we were doing some perch uh, for the doggo here and we were catching spotted bass on the bottom in 55 foot of water today you were doing what now peter so we're jigging up perch for the dog you know get him some food um for real, we you, catching spotted bass you give it rig some sushi Dude, now, I'm saying this dog loves like perch. He loves perch and white bass. That's raw, raw. Uh, no, cooked. Both oh, actually, wow. no, he'll eat them raw and cooked both. I um, bet he got some bad gas with them raw fish. Shh, yeah, Dude, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but we were catching spotted bass on the bottom in 55 foot of water today. Spotted bass is the craziest. Like I've reeled up uh, down rod herring crossing a point because I'll. Like say I run up on ten foot of water, five foot of water, and I just reel it all. It's dragging bottom, so I reel it up right next to the boat. And so the herring's right there next to the boat, and a damn spot will come up and eat that bastard yeah. right off the boat. They don't give a shit. They don't. They don't. You're right. <laughs> the smaller spots. I mean, good. What's a small three pounders, two pounders? Man, you know, three, four pounders coming up doing that. That's the smaller yeah. spots. The it's no. just like any other fish. The, no, yeah, the smaller the fish, the braver, the more brave they are. Spots reach hard. 
you, you Lake Norman is their spot bass fishery is is has exploded and it's a lot of guys were afraid of it at first. They were mad. They they I like they to were, see how high I can throw them in the air. They wanted the largemouth and the spot the spot bass fishery is detrimental to the largemouth fishery and a lot, they of, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of your bass fishermen were kind of upset over mm -hmm. the explosion of spot bass on Lake Norman. But but what's happened is the spot bass have they're huge these these fish are there's a guy there's a, there's, <laughs> they're i know, huge. I they're know the, uh, scott I, just listen, so you know i know the guy that, your huge might be a little different but i know the guy that has the spot bass record on lake norman he has the, the lake he has the north carolina state record spot bass seven he pounds worked, he works where i work it was six pounds some odd ounces so i could go ahead and tell you I personally broke that record already. I could have called DNR. I could be the new spot bass record holder right now. People are catching state record spot bass on Lake Norman on the weekly. It's the spot bass fishery is phenomenal on Lake Norman. So I have right caught, now. I'd say back in the early mid 2000s, I have caught several spot bass that were five and a half, five and three quarter pounds. Exactly, and, but I haven't seen one that big in a very long time. But They're all barely. I see, I see, I see, I see two, theme. three, four pounders on the yeah. on the reg. I'm gonna tell you one common theme with a big spot of bass on Lake Norman. They've all come from the lower end of the lake. Uh, I'm have to disagree on that. I Rain. do give you this: the spot bass tastes a lot better in a large mouth. Fuck yeah! Well, well, they do because any any fish that's out being pelagic. They're out there in chasing migratory bait fish in the main channel. They're in cleaner water, and they're and they're feeding on live bait. Well, they're like, in the like, same like area. They're, I mean, they're, they're two a, a, a large mouth is staying in a they're residential. <laughs> they're staying in a confined area. They're feeding on what the fuck ever snakes, uh, crawdads. It doesn't matter whatever's whatever's in that area that they could eat. That's what they're feeding on. Spot bass. They're out there swimming constantly in the clear, deep water, feeding on pelagic bait fish. Carnivorous I will say this, fish. that a spotted bass tastes a hell of a lot better than a crappie from Lake Norman. Shit. Hell no. Uh, you know, you, you I got agree. To, I agree. I mean, I don't know if I agree, but I agree that it's in the and same. And they're good. It's, it's on the same level. You know, it's on the same level. No, you got some guys. You got some guys that say crappy's the best fish ever. I, it's it is, I striper, it. it's better than flower. It. It's better. No, it's not. It's I put I put white perch uh, slightly ahead of crappy. Yep. As far as taste, I put I like I like hybrid striper. I've never had white perch, but then oh, no, I like. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, you, hold on, hold on. You put a hybrid Scott, above, Scott above striper? He is hell. He ain't never had no damn white bass. It ain't big enough for him. I'm you sorry. think hybrids are better than striper? I. Uh, they're very similar. It they depends. Similar. You know, I've only I've only filleted one like huge striper, where you can get like steaks off of it, and that All was right. some of the best. Damn. Oh God, I'm telling you. It is. If you if you could fillet a 40 pounder, that's some of the best eating you can. Oh, have. I've done I've done many. Hey, of them. Dieter, Dieter Melhorn, I just sent oh, you an invite. Hell. Come over here. Dieter's here. I sent him an invite. So there are several lakes. I'm pretty picky with what lake I eat what fish from, for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, lake Watery. Those fish I catch from the damn lake, I give them all away. They're fucking so. They taste like shit. They really do. Um, Lake Norman no. is some of the dang best eating fish in the area. It really come is. Come on, come on. Lake Norman. Lake Norman's good. Lake Norman's. No, good. I'm saying Lake Norman's really good. The fish from Lake Norman are really good. It is Lake good, but, but but let's 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 speak truth here. Uh, about three or four years ago, because Lake Norman's they they would test five species of fish. They would take tissue samples. They would test the PCB levels, and Lake Norman was always below all the other Catawba River chain lakes. Yeah. Well, now it's not. Now it's testing up there with some of the other lakes. This test, but let's let's face it, striper tastes good. I don't care where they come from. Striper's good. Doesn't matter Man, where. Like, have, have you eaten striper in Lake Watery? Yes, 
I, I think yeah. they're pretty doggone good. I don't, I don't <laughs> think so. I don't think you so. Cut, you cut that red meat out and, and blacken them bitches in, on a, in some butter on a cast iron. Oh, Woo. Yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. from Lake Watery. I don't think so. But uh, now I will say this: Lake Watery stripers aren't as white as other lake stripers. Lake, lake Watery, lake watery stripers, stripers, they have a hell, boy. I they, have a darker, they have a darker tint to them than wow. other other stripers lakes. It's weird. Well, that's probably not good. Well, Lake Norman fish, oh, though. Man. I mean, you know, look at Lake Norman. It's a clear lake. I mean. Any clear lake I've caught fish out of has been pretty any, good. Any clear lake is going to taste better, in my opinion, especially if you start going tidal. You know, if you start going down there to Santee, this, I'm sure that this, I've never had striper from Santee. I've had catfish from Santee. Catfish what's, from Santee always tastes better than other lakes. Than what's an F1 bass? An F1 is a certain genetic. It's a Florida strain. It's a it's mm -hmm. it's a certain genetic strain that get bigger than your so typical. You would, that's origin. what you would want, right? Yes, they stock right. some F ones in Norman. Why don't we grow uh, Florida sized bass? Do we have F one bass here? They so, recently stocked some F ones in Norman. They were it wasn't done by DNR. It was done by you know private you know fishermen. But so a lot of these bass tournaments that have been happening on Norman have been like. A portion of the proceeds have gone to the F1 stocking program. And for some reason, these crazy ass fucking hard headed bass fishermen think that adding F1s in Lake Norman is going to improve the fishery and so on and so forth. As of right now, from what I see, it's not working. Lake Norman does not have the cover for largemouth at all. Man, those uh, spot bass they ain't gonna put yeah. up with no F ones. They ain't gonna put up no damn bullshit. That's exactly and, right. And them yeah. white perch and them and them spotted bass are gonna eat every F one you put in there. They gonna. I hope they do. I hope they do. You know, yeah, that's right. First time I went white perch fishing, Sam McCarson took me, and you know how we caught them. We oh. caught one. The first perch we caught. He started scaling it and cutting little pieces of white meat off the perch itself. And you can catch we more on it. Did you it. did you have a damn thumper box in that damn boat? No, there wasn't no such thing back then. Yeah, I mean that's well, what they, Dieter they, does. They 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 I use like when I, there's a bunch of different ways I catch perch, but if I'm gonna go use a sabiki rig and catch, go try to find schools of perch and catch you know two, three, four, five, six at a time, I use night crawlers. That's what I do. I've seen Dieter and Jeff Manning go out there and use little pieces of perch. They'll take a perch and they'll cut a little pieces of cut bait off of the perch and put it on their sabiki rig. Yeah, I heard perch belly's good. I've I've caught them that way, but nothing works better than than little pieces of night. I've never caught a white perch. You've never caught a white perch? Really? Oh, my God. You're probably like the only dude I know that's never caught a white perch. He's too, too, hey, he's too bougie, man. That's what happens when you they won't hit. They won't hit a twelve hey, inch Scott, fucking Scott, trout. That's what happens Scott's when you drag those damn dog bill size fucking Scott's baits. That's very limited. Scott, we're, we're talking about a South Carolina striped bass tournament fisherman. That's Scott. Hey, so that that doesn't Scott, surprise me. What's the biggest freshwater striper you've got? Um, I'm, I'm probably high forties. Forties. Yep. You ought to dang start dragging some dang whole perch. Maybe you might catch a dang fifty. Bigger than I we would. caught. Peter. Bigger. He's I caught would. a bigger freshwater striper than you and I have caught. I can go ahead and tell you that. But uh, my, my freshwater striper, my biggest freshwater striper, I can't compare it to anything because I'm fishing NC water. You know, so, my you know. biggest freshwater striper that I caught on my own was twenty pounds. Mine with is, someone, I, I went fishing with my buddy Drew, and I my biggest freshwater striper is now a thirty eight pounder. But my, my I could I like to go. My biggest South Carolina striper is forty one. That's kind of what I go by. My biggest NC striper again. I don't travel for you know striper fishing at all. My biggest NC striper nineteen pounds fifteen ounces. Wow. My, my biggest. My right. biggest hybrid's eleven pounds. All right. Oh, where would he go? I think Lake Norman's gonna have a good fishery here in the coming years, but we're gonna be oh hell! Look at look who showed up. <laughs> Can y'all hear me? Okay. I might need a beer. For Wait, you. I got it. Well, I'll be right. I got up. I got to upgrade my background. You got the best audio on the entire. 
thing. Okay, I was making sure. I, know, I jumped in here real quick. So, yeah. Jesus Christ, he's never caught a white perch. No, I know that I that hold in it. such high esteem has yeah, never Dieter, caught a white Dieter perch. Dieter probably caught more white perch than anybody I know. If I had to guess how many white perch Dieter Melhorn's caught, I would have to guess probably somewhere around the, the views that Scott Perry's best video on YouTube's gotten, which is probably around <laughs> listen, 900,000 listen. white perch. Is probably if, if, white it, listen, perch if he would let me borrow his wife and I never <laughs> come within 10 feet of her <laughs> for a weekend, I would be at my silver plate button on that. <laughs> never have to touch her. Just 10 feet away. <laughs> I still tell people the story about that thumbnail and oh my God, how many views you got off that? What do you have to 27 million now? Well, what is it? Sex and violence sales, right? That's right. Well, what video you have you for those, but you've got a good thumbnail. So there you go. There you go. No, I've never caught up. I've watched Dieter catch plenty of white perch bouncing his rod off the side of the boat while he's catfishing, but. That's it. I've never caught one. But do you not have them where you're at? Or why are you? Or, I mean, you probably over baited for them. I mean, that's probably the reason you hadn't caught them. Yeah, I've well, never. There, there's some white perch in Hartwell. Oh, yeah. It's oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I don't run sabiki rigs off the side of my boat normally. But sometimes you just get some bycatch. You'll get one crazy white perch that wants to eat a blue back or ale white dater dater this this guy is pulling up to lake hartwell outdoor center okay and he's filling his he's filling his bait tank up with big the biggest gizzard shad and trout that okay. they have. I mean, yeah that's and that's harder he's that's showing harder. up to tournament day and he's and he's fishing those baits and he's See, going I don't, home I don't, I, don't understand, I don't understand what it's like to be the man to do that so i'm just <laughs> on my little level down here where I'm down here, and and Mr. Perry, oh, he's at the top of the catfish head. So there's there's plenty of sunset pictures when you fish like that, isn't there, Wes? Right. Right. <laughs> I had to give me a special beer for this now. Here we go. Oh, he's in oh special, special uh, beer. I thought beer. you were flying. I thought you were flying this weekend. He is. Right. Hey, he is about about okay. okay. Hey, don't you know them pilots drink? We already seen that on the news. Fucking right. That's right. <laughs> not within 12 hours of call time and that what it, it depends is? actually hours? actually we have 10 hour call out 10 hour <laughs> 10 hour bottle of throttle yeah <laughs> yeah oh god you guys need to talk Dieter into coming and getting in the sbc on Hartwell. hey you know what i have what's, caught? what's the date I, on that one uh <laughs> it's when? when it? January 7th. Oh, dude, I'm going to look real quick. I'm going to start <laughs> to year. I think that. Well, you, you should at least get in the, the HSBC on Lake Norman, Peter. This is enough. Mm. This is enough. Dude, I got a guy trip for seven. We, we are all but betting a bottle of whiskey amongst us here. The winner take all. Well, the winner amongst us take off. That's not going to entice him. <laughs> when is the, when is the one on Norman? Whiskey? Is that the 4th? February the 4th. Yeah, that dude. I, I, yeah, I got stuff, stuff in the way. You got to stop being <laughs> such a popular dude. I got stuff in the way. This guy, <laughs> biz, this guy business is killing my whiskey betting tournament. <laughs> so. okay, if I, I have caught in the, in the South. The only place I heard him called this is... Uh, L uh Eisenhower Eisenhower's the yellow perch yeah. yellow and black striped perch we just yeah. we just call them yellow perch they call yeah. them yellow, yellow bass, bass. Yellow bass. Yellow bass. Yellow bass. the other name we call yellow perch in you know, South so, Carolina they call them they call them oh, Eisenhower yeah. when I was a kid my grandfather <laughs> called them rock he called them rockfish he said son those things are full of bones if you catch one, just throw it up on the bank. There ain't good no, for they, nothing. They're great. I, I every time I caught one, I throw it up on the bank and just let it die. And, I think rockfish is the name given to every fish in America that doesn't have a name. 
Yeah, and, and they, they come to find out they're yellow perch and they're actually like sought after. They're a really good fish, and and they're well, kind of tell you what, Lake they're struggling right, right now. Full of yellow perch, like people don't even really realize it, but um, what's full of yellow perch? Mountain Island Lake, Mountain Island, okay. full of yellow perch, nice size of ones too. Man, they're That's good. They're one. they're right behind walleye as far as eating. I think. All right, Peter, 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 Peter. Here's my thing with the live feeds. Can we adjust the headroom on your shot, any <laughs> so that? You, oh, God! See, I'll tune in every week now. Is that I better? So much better. That's so much better. Does that turn you on, baby? <laughs> that turns me on, on. and just like <laughs> Scott, say here you go. That's that. That's that. Yeah. <laughs> and Scott, and Scott, if you show me that head anymore, hmm. Oh, there we go. God, I don't lie. Hey, it's got a fresh cut on it, too. If I sent you a Dieter Millhorn fishing decal, will you yeah. put it on your head? How much is that going to cost me? On my head? On your head, right there. Just Dieter Millhorn fishing. Why don't, why don't you send there. me a decal and I'll put it on my damn boat, actually? <laughs> God. That probably wouldn't go good because. <laughs> He don't want to be associated with you, Peter, and your little hybrid. You're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Listen, dude, I was envious. I saw his post on Facebook today, and I was like, damn, I could use that bait because I've been getting on oh, uh, the past <laughs> few days from Wally, and I thought, man, that size bait, I could get a lot of bait off of one of those. I can fish two days off of the fish he was catching. One you're talking about the perch, bait, you're talking about the perch right? <laughs> perch. The spotted bass perch, right? Yeah. <laughs> God where, damn, son. Where'd JR go? He well, the us, sounds of it. Looks like he quit on a skunk us? today. So, you do. know. Where'd he go? He's gone. He's gone. Well, we, hey, you intimidated him. Right? Right? Two and a half hours. My God. Look at this. Hey, so where, what, else, what do we got? Like three viewers right now? Uh, eight. Okay. It's a private, convo. It's a private conversation. <laughs> <laughs> So, so did did JR drive eight hours to come fish with you the other day? Is that what I saw? He did. And did you catch the big fish on that trip? Well, here's how that worked. What an <laughs> asshole. That's right. <laughs> I was going to let JR, you know, I'm going to let JR. Yeah. So, <laughs> I was going to let JR catch all the fish. Right. And, you know, the first, the, the morning we started out that morning, tried to go out. I couldn't get out out of Cape Charles. The water was just, my boat actually come completely out of the water. So and I told what you, size I boat are you in? just for anybody listening, what kind of boat are you in? I've got a, uh, well, it's a 24 foot Carolina skiff offshore, but it's okay. actually 28 foot if you count the three foot on the back of the deck. But anyway, okay. we come completely out of water. So I told you, I said, we're calling this. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to kill us over a fish. Right. So we, we, we came back in, we started to go back out again. We were going to try to get over to the channel in some deeper water. Well, what was funny is the deeper the water, the rougher it got. So we just called it. We came back in, we put the boat on the trailer. We went up to Hardy's and there was some guy there started talking to me. I ain't got a damn clue who he was. And I hate that when people know me and I don't know them because I don't want them to feel like I'm conceited because I don't know happens who they are. All the time. Rock star, happens to Peter all the time. Happens to you all the time. That's right. That's but anyway, you know, so we talked to these guys and I told you, I said, we're going to go up here at Morley's Wharf and try it. So we, we went up there to Morley's, we put in. So, and, and what I thought was crazy about this, Dieter, we only fit, we got three and a half hours to fish. We got eight bites and five fish. The first two fish were 46, 46, 47, 48, and 49. That's the, that Are was these the inches or pounds? Pounds. pounds. <laughs> okay, dude, that's pounds. some killer fish, dude. That's yeah. some killer fish. Yeah, world class. Yes. And what was funny yeah. was, you know, I was letting JR, you know, he, he, he kept trying to put the camera in his mouth. So I would actually video him, and I was going live. We had the GoPro on, you know, taking video. While he was fighting a fish, we had a double. So I told him, I said, well, I had to get this rod. So the rod that I got happened to be the 49 pounder. And then when he got his in, I had to put that rod I'm fighting the fish. I had to put it back in the back in the rod holder to net his fish and get it in. Then I got we finally got my fish to the boat. And JR busted his ass twice. I kept saying, JR, move the net. He said, No, let's get a picture. Let's get a picture. I said, move the net first. And he stepped on the net. You know how the net will slide on the boat? Listen. He busted his ass twice and he finally said, Listen. I've got it. I've got it. 
it. I got it. I mean, we was just excited. Listen, you know? I have I have to get the bare minimum to make a video. I have to. If you want a video, I I need. There's a bare minimum there. Yeah, that's that's now, what I was doing, Dieter. I was doing the bare minimum to get a video, man. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Those are some great fish. Those are some great sizes. Yeah. Did Mike Smedley yeah. give you like the exact coordinates or just a general area to go to to catch these? No, fish? I mean the guys that the network. Well, nobody's the, cringing. The network nobody, that, you know, that nobody, West, the shot. There, there wasn't the, a boat around. Wes when we has, a net, us. Wes has a network of friends. And those, I'm, um, you know, that's, I'll, I'll tell you, there's, um, <laughs> those, those, those guys are, are liberal with their information, but, uh, I will tell you this, what Wes and I did was contrary to what his network would have suggested. Matter of fact, we did better than his network that day. We went out there after lunchtime and in three hours, we went five or eight. The guys that he that Wes was calling and talking to that was giving him advice caught one fish all day. So, so in all seriousness, in all seriousness, without giving them anything that's like really identifying, we'll tell you what anything. Was you the want magic to combination to make this happen? That many? The, I mean, those the, are good fish, dude. The no magic, matter where you go in the country, those are good fish. The magic, combination, the magic combination is the the fish were in the lower bay. You know, the the water temps in the mid forties. You know, as that water temp continues to drop down into the mid 40s those men hayden are coming out of those creeks and rivers they're coming down from the upper bay into the lower bay a lot of those fish are coming down they're migratory fish that are coming from up north and they come in through that c and d canal up there the very northern tip of the chesapeake bay the delaware river and Holy as, those, counterclockwise was the key. As, as those fish start to come down into that chesapeake bay they start to move down into the lower bay. The ultimate destination is the ocean. The ocean's going to be their warmest water. And as the as the water temp continues to drop, the Ben Hayden, the bait starts to move out of the creeks and the rivers. And uh, we just happened to uh, we got on a wave of stripers that were uh, in the process of doing that. And, and we, we, hey, hey, let me break it down we were on our way out. We 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 knew had the bat west. Dude, ahead, here, here's the deal. Here's three words uh, and. and Instead of getting a, give it, getting a David Farley thing, it, here's three words: We got lucky. We got lucky. Yeah, and I'll take lucky. I mean, you can say you can say that we got lucky, but the fact of the matter is, we targeted thirty to fifty feet of water. Right, you, you got know, lucky, we, but you still we, had to put yourself in the right we, narrow we saw, area for that. We day. saw those dark wing adult gulls that were feeding on the adult size menhaden. The micro started, We used our graph. We started marking balls of bait fish. Bait fish were thick in there. They were thick, but they were scattered. Scattered yet thick. But we started marking the balls of bait fish. We saw the birds diving. That was the only time all day we saw them diving. We, start, we put our baits out and we hooked up on fish. I mean, that's that's fishy. I mean, what else do you guys want hey, to know? I mean, I so, could break it. I could break it down further I, I, if I gotta, you like. I gotta add this. Okay, so this is this is not at all talking shit at all this is all a compliment um it should you have to tell people it's a compliment before you well, well, well wes yes because everything is like <laughs> shit talk to him okay all right um, it takes a lot of local knowledge and a lot of putting two and two together to figure shit out like that period you know like true striper fishermen like they are calculated assassins there's no doubt about it you know so you put the variables together, water temperature and current, and in this case, tide, bait. You kind of put two and two together, and you kind of formulate, hey, this is happening. There's bait here. These fish should be here kind of thing, you know? So We yeah. took all that into account, and when, yeah. when we left out of Cape Charles that morning. Or you could go out of a ramp that's too rough to get out of and move to another <laughs> When we left out of Cape Charles that morning, it was yeah, it was definitely too rough to navigate. As as we started hitting that water depth that we were looking for, it, it, it began to be too rough. It, it actually tossed us up out of the water. It had both. What what tripped me out was you guys caught fish and the locals weren't, and they come following you. That was no, yeah, they weren't. I mean, everybody was yeah, everybody was screaming. Wes was lucky. You know, y'all, y'all, there was, there was a couple of guys that got on the radio. It's like y'all, Southern boys, come down here and kick these Yankees' ass. You know? How many boats did I see? Like two hours after you caught the first fish, like ten. We, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Me and Wes did better than everyone else that day. 
Striper egg, fishermen are world class. They know how to dang put two and two together and catch fish. Cat fishermen, all you gotta do is drop a fucking anchor, cast a six <laughs> out there. When, when whenever JR right, whenever man. JR comes down and fishes with Wes, Wes brings his a game. Let me go ahead and tell you. Wes don't care what y'all think about him, okay? Wes, you, you, you I'm not talking you, you Saturday, get face you value with, with Wes. Wes. <laughs> yeah, there's no he doesn't give a shit what you think about him. He's gonna when he when JR's coming down and he knows there's gonna be a video made, guess what? The A game is coming, baby. I feel and like that's, like that's what I get from Wes. Every time I come down, I get the I'll I get tell an, you what, every time I, I see JR game. show up like a weigh in, I almost feel like I gotta wear a suit and tie every time. <laughs> suit and tie. <laughs> you, my biggest thing, the only thing that I have listened to, and there again, and this was Chuck Tyman, and I can understand this. When I'm fishing the Chesapeake Bay. One thing I do all the time, and I don't care, even if it's when it gets tied, I pull eels with the tide. If it's an outgoing tide, I'm going to pull south. If it's an incoming tide, I'm going to pull north. Because that lets your bait drop down deeper, and it lets it look a whole lot more natural. Because I've watched a lot of videos. Chuck Tymon used to do a lot of videos where he put an underwater camera, and he's did it where he's pulling bait against tide and pulling bait with tide, or we'll call it current. You know, same thing. Um, and those fish strike a whole lot better when that bait looks natural than it does when it's trying to swim up because it looks like it's struggling against the current or the tide. So every time, every every foot I've ever pulled an eel in the Chesapeake Bay, I'm going with the tide. It's, when it's the tide no coincidence. Bait, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's yeah, no I, coincidence. Every time I fish with Wes, we fish during a either a low tide or a high tide. And when we went off oh, this wow. last time, we left out of Cape Charles. When we were coming back in, I told my I told myself, I was like, okay, well, at least we're gonna be we're coming off the water during slack tide. And that's what we did. We went out during incoming, we come back, it was too rough. We come back. Well, guess what? We took slack tide off. That's good. JR, that's what let you Dieter want. talk. God, he came on here just he he's already heard the story. Dieter, what are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> Hold on a minute, man. Dieter, hold, hold. Let, me, let me ask you this, Dieter. Hey, I hadn't talked to you like in a, in a personal level, and, and God knows how long here, have you turned into a dang full time guide? Oh shit, that's number day twenty nine today. God damn, hey, twenty nine fucking times oink, that oink, goddamn oink, fish. Oink, 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 that's big, Twenty nine fucking that's time. God damn. I wish we're gonna go for a that, uh, Which taxidermist has that skin right now? Getting ready to mount it. <laughs> Let me go ahead and tell you, Dieter. Wes is is the biggest advocate for CPR that you that you've ever seen. When we catch That's a awesome. fish, I can't video for shit. And here we go. The, whole, the whole time Wes is like, we gotta we gotta get this fish back. We gotta get it back. It's gonna die. It's gonna die. We gotta get back. And I'm like, yeah. oh, all right, all right. 45 degrees. I want Jesus four Christ. seconds, Wes. Fine. I want four fine. seconds of video. That's all I need. Four <laughs> seconds, bro. Four <laughs> seconds. Be fine. Four They'll seconds. be fine. They'll be fine. Oh, that's a good God. fish, dude. He Honestly, is so that's worried good about fish. those fish. I'm like, dude, why don't let's well, just, you know, let's, I, let's throw it in the ice box and take it home and eat it, well, bro? Like, you know, I look at it about? like this. Somebody, there's no telling. Scott, this average, and I don't, I don't know if there's a difference, or maybe you may know this too, Dita or Pete. In salt water, I don't know if those fish grow faster because they've got a lot more abundance of bait if they eat better. But a 55, that 55 pound stripper I caught had to be at least what, 28, 30 years old, maybe? I don't think so. Not that I old. don't know. I don't know what the biology is on those fish. But anyway, a whole lot how, many people, fish. how many people caught that fish? How many times that fish had ever been hooked before I caught it? So somebody took the time to try to keep that fish alive, and I got to catch that fish. Yeah. So my wonder. thinking is, I want to get that fish back in the water and let him live, so somebody else can experience oh, yeah. what I got to. I think the growth and rate. Just the I hate to kill a big fish. A whole lot faster than like freshwater fish or anything. I would like, like to fish. see what the growth rate of saltwater stripers. I, I mean, they're always on the move, so they're right. very. They got it, a lot more muscles. I think yeah. it's uh, four or five years before they reach maturity and actually. Because like JRs are Mister Stats guy. I think join the migration. Got that info somewhere. Yeah. I mean, no. I know. Give me a kiss, on, give me kiss on the lips. Kiss on the lips. Kiss on the lips. Kiss Aww. on the lips. Oh. Careful what you ask for, man. Ain't no, ain't no telling oh, what you so might do. Yeah. Before I got interrupted, oh, she's doing time. Oh, oh, oh my god! Three oh, viewers, oh, baby. Three viewers. Bye, so, Peter, have you turned into a full-time guide? 
Cap, hey, sorry, sorry. I'm not going to say full-time, but I'm very hey, busy. Brady, Brady Nelson. Closer to file like me. Full-time hey, Scott. Full-time guy? Brady. I ain't going to say full. I'm doing said, a lot. I'm doing a lot. So, Brady it, Milford it, said it, about – Brady Milford said that 55 pounder was probably about the end of his lifespan. It's about 18 years old, give or take. And and he was probably at the end of his lifespan. But so that is interesting to know what the actual like shit. lifespan is on a fish that size. Catfish, too, I'd be curious to know because generally state records, world records, hold on. Actually been aged with an You'd be curious to know the, 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 what the life the lifespan is. On I got the a uh, Peter. If anybody knows that, it's you, bro. Well, listen to what I said. Okay. I said all the ones that have been aged by Odalith, the state records, world records, all that, I've never seen one age past 26 years old. There are probably some out there, but I've never seen one age past that using an Odalith. I Beaver got said, it. Beaver said, listen to what I said. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, JR. JR. Totality, totality no, statement. Brady Milford. You know, is about 18 years old and at the end of his life, then. That's good info there. I, I got a theory that with freshwater stripers that uh, most <laughs> freshwater stripers, uh, their max size is high 40s. I think that you're <clears throat> like, I think you got to have the genetics to get 50 and 60. I mean, the reason I say that is how many high 40s? You see a lot of high 40s, caught in Tennessee, a well, lot of 45s, but you see very few. 50 plus fish and even fewer 60. So I think to, I think even if you took a fish and it never got caught his whole life, I think there's very few that would break the 50 pound mark. Yeah. In pressure. If you'll, if you'll look at, and now Scott, you've gotten confused with this before, but whenever I say inside three miles, <laughs> I'm, was not, so degraded. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not so talking about totally degraded. You've gotten confused <laughs> with this before. You've gotten now, you confused know, with this Brady, before. And I can see why. I can see why because I'm talking about something completely you can different. See why? Because you're when I when I say you can't the, comprehend the, things. The, the stripers. <laughs> oh, I'm so came, The stripers haven't came within three miles of the beach since 2013. I'm not counting the bay. If you catch them inside the beach. Now, I mean, technically, yeah, if you catch them in the bay, perfect. yes, that's inside three miles. But I'm not Michael talking about orgasms. that. I'm talking about for when when they come inside three miles. Well, back. But the last year that they came inside three miles from, let's say, between the years 2010 and 2013, the state record saltwater striper was broken twice inside three miles of the beach. Not the Chesapeake Bay, inside three miles from Is the right beach. You did, duck, right? you, you did hear me say, right. like, Freshwater stripers, like uh, saltwater, that's where they belong. That's 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 where they thrive. Like I'm hear, talking. Let me, let me hear you say that again. That's, that's, where where they, that's, that's where they thrive. I mean, that's their native waters. They're not native that's right. freshwater. That's right. I, I, God, I, I wish you would realize that. I'm sorry. I do realize that. They still don't count when there's a million fifty pounders, and I troll counterclockwise with some eels. And catch a 50 pounder don't mean shit to me. Counterclockwise. Oh, oh, everybody yeah, down there catches 50 oh, pounders, yeah, yeah. it don't mean oh. shit to me. Realize oh. that. Who's oh. everybody? Oh. Chuck, you Chuck stick, Timon. You just stick, you just stick to them little goddamn hybrids. And let us worry about the big fish, because you can't take the bean up there in the bay anyway. Well, I would, I would do, but... Damn. He's Verizon, baby. Verizon. Well, there but goes. anyway, uh <laughs> Jerry McConnell caught a state record fish out of Hartwell, and I forgot what year it was. It was like 61 and some, 61 and some change. And four years later, he broke his own record out of Russell, which was 63 and some change. Is that right, Scott? Yeah. And then Brady Milford, a couple of years ago, got within about what, Scott, a pound and a half or two pounds of breaking he, Terry's record in the tail race. I think he caught a 63-pounder, yeah. Yeah. Hey, you want to hear something funny, Dieter? Are you ready for a good joke, Dieter? Oh, hell. Okay. Hey, okay. Peter. Hey, Peter, what's your biggest blue catfish? What the hell are you trying to prove here, huh? Oh, I don't know. Just trying to make a joke. What's your, right. what's your biggest blue catfish? I got to think about this, okay? So give me give me a solid 30 seconds here. All right. All right. He's Scott got a Perry. big one on a uh, – uh, 
uh, a, a ball for a, a, a downrigger. That was yes, a yeah, thing. absolutely. So I'm glad you said that. My biggest catfish actually ate my downrigger ball, and he was in the 60s. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna call bullshit on that. No, okay, Scott, Scott what Perry, what's your biggest what's your biggest blue catfish? My biggest. Whatever we caught at the James River. Jan- whatever we, we, when you went with us on the James yeah. River. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when we went with you. So, so I'll, okay. That was probably what, 30 pounds? 30, 30, I think it was 36. 36 good pounds. Fish, good fish. Good fish, good fish. So Peter had one uh, evidently that ate an anchor ball and it's the size of a Volkswagen. Let's <laughs> let's hear more. Let's hear more about this, Peter. All right. It's, it's a true story. I'm told for Striper and I'm going through, I guess, a 60 foot range, I guess. And all of a sudden my dang downrigger fucking flexes, bounces, everything. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? So I'm bringing up my damn downrigger ball and I feel this tension. And there is a damn blue cat with his mouth on my downrigger ball, an eight pound ball. And he fucking could not release his mouth from the damn ball. Somehow. This was on like Norman. That's why the fuck they eat chicken. Them things are dumb. Yeah. And great. Yeah, Jello chicken. Yeah. Jello chicken. Okay. <laughs> Jello. Um, so you know, red his ball. mouth is a red ball. ball. Could, know, yeah, his mouth is <laughs> a damn ball, and he could not get off. So I'm, I'm ruling his damn downward ball all the way up, and all of a sudden he gets to the surface and he starts fucking thrashing and raising hell and shit, and he finally comes off. But that, this damn fish is every bit of fucking. I'd say low sixties, easy. I okay. think he's 65, 68. I think he was closer to 65, 68. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see him. I, mean, I, I, yeah. I can tell by the description he was close to 70. All right. Well, what what a nice fucking Volkswagen. See that dang little <laughs> blue cat in the background of your photo right there? Oh, let me do a finger there. There you go. He was bigger than that damn son of a bitch. Bigger. Uh, bigger yeah, where'd that. you get that? I like that. That's like the, the catfish logo. Yeah. Catfish with a K. Like I did catch a hooking line. Flathead on a cut herring, but I don't. It's funny. I only catch one or two catfish a year. I mean, I right. catch them that big, but I only catch one or two catfish a year cut baiting. And That's I think really? it's the water depth. I think where the stripers right. are at that time of year, the catfish are either deeper or shallower. Yeah, they're deeper. They know, yeah. That's as interesting because I hear a lot about a lot of people in Tennessee at least catching. Stripers when they're fishing for catfish on cut bait over there, especially in the springtime. You're much more likely to catch a trophy striper on when you're a cat fisherman fishing for catfish than you are a trophy striper fisherman fishing. Uh, you've never fish, seen the striper more probably a more top down striper than me in a catfish tournament over so, there. So let, let me ask you this real quick. All right. So you're targeting catfish, okay? Mm-hmm. Let's say you're you rule the name 50 pound catfish. Cool, awesome, whatever. Hoopla, you know, everyone's fucking happy and shit. All right. Well, you, you've all never sudden, done it, so you're just yeah, assuming. Yeah. But and okay, all of a sudden you hook the damn real fish. You're like, oh my God, this is this is the damn 80 I'm fucking waiting for all my damn life right here. And you're fighting him hard, like they then fucking 10 minutes go by. And it's a dang 15 10 pounds. minutes for a striper. This, this is what I call like fault, faulty really? anecdotal. Well, harder evidence. than a dang catfish. You're ever. assuming you know what it's like to catch a 50 plus pound catfish, but you've never done it. <laughs> I've now. never reeled on a fish except for a shark longer. You than have this minutes. elaborate this story thing. of this catfish that ate your downrigger ball. But I'm just I'm, saying. I'm talking about like a legit <laughs> like catch. Hey, like you it's, actually it's caught it, got it in the like, boat. A catfish you hold up for a picture like this. You, you know, one of those yeah. kind of fish. Yeah. Well, you're not going to hold a 50 out like that. Dieter, oh, so, sure you can. You can long arm a 50. Hell yeah. You can long arm a 50? Yeah. yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't know if you can long arm a, a true <laughs> fish. By, by the way, yeah, I'm, I'm sad. It's easy. Hey. I got, I got Dinder, Dinder, have you ever put a catfish on your shoulder? Negative. Yeah. No, Man, I've never minute, seen a a shoulder. There is a picture of me with a flathead that's about this long <laughs> up on my shoulder. I did it like this just because it looks totally Dieter asinine. Used to it me. looks more yeah. asinine than a big fish. Dieter would irk me with hey, how he Changing subject here photos. slightly. Dieter, I, I went through my damn oh archives God. here lately. Yep. And I posted a dang photo of that dang hybrid that you yes. caught on my damn boat some time ago during that tournament. Yeah, and you didn't say nothing about it. I'm, I'm fucking sad and devastated about it. Dude, that. there's a lot. I'm gonna be, let, let me just say this, and everybody listen. There's a lot of footage from those two days we fished together that I've not done a lot with because I don't have a cohesive story from it. 
But with well, one of it made my little sizzle reel on my channel, by the way. But anyway, sizzle reel. There's it's more fancy. to That's fishing with Dieter, you in your Dieter story a, that I Dieter, want to tell at some point. He is a slut to a story. To do that. Jr. is going to try to jump Dieter's, in on this, and I'm going to talk a story. Over, it's a story. I think slut. there's way more stuff to be told. Dieter, I got a question. Hey, I think Jack, you're, 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 you're not right. going to let Jr. finish. He's going to talk right over. I got a question. Go ahead, Scott. All right. So, Dieter, you guide, you catfish guide, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, it seems to me like interviewing NASCAR racers and shit would be like good money. Why do you guide for catfish? I'm going to be honest. Why do I do a YouTube channel? That's a good question. That's a great question. Because he loves it. Let me answer that, Dieter. It's because yes. Dieter <laughs> loves uh, it. JR <laughs> finally says something that is actually makes sense for one time tonight. It's honestly because I'm eat up with it. I spent an hour and a half tonight on the phone with Tyler Barnes, who caught the state record flathead catfish, and we talked about all kinds of crap. I meet up with it, just like you guys are eat up with striper fishing. I well, could I mean, eat up with striper fishing if it was just a little shift in DNA. It's well, I mean, I, I, love, with I love fishing, but I think I would hate to guide. Like, people ask me oh. to take them out, but it seems like it would be – a very stressful thing. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you, Jr. Hold your hand for a second. I'm going to tell you exactly to what I told Tyler tonight because he asked the same question, and this is what was never cleared up with me. Peter can reflect on this. He's guided. He's he's a guide. He's a licensed captain. A guy to told me the other day. Like he said your perspective is totally wrong. You are looking at it from the wrong direction. And when you look at it from a trophy fisherman or a guy who is tournament fishing, you're looking at it at a totally different perspective from somebody who is a guide. And you have to shift that. And that's what Tyler was. Tyler's called the state record flathead. Okay. Right. He's like, Man, I got to catch a big fish every time I go. And I'm like, no, dude, it ain't about that. You're looking at it the wrong way. And well, Dieter, you told awesome. me that a long time ago. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I, was like yeah. I feel like I have to catch a big fish every, yeah. every freaking video so I make. You enjoy putting people on fish is why you got it. Dude, yes. And and mm -hmm. I, I've said, I told this story a million times on guy trips. I, I had this trip. We were killing small fish. We were five, six, seven, eight pound fish, just catching them, flipping them off. There wasn't a big fish. And after I threw off about three or four fish that were five, six, seven, eight pounds, the guy grabbed me by the arm. And he said, hey, do you mind if I get a picture of that next one? He said, that's the biggest fish I've ever caught. Right. And I felt like an asshole because I'm throwing mm -hmm. these fish away. But the man had never caught a fish over six pounds. You know, that's and true. That's true. That's a perspective a that you got to, if you're a guide, you got to kind of keep in check. And it took me a while to learn it. I had some guides tell me I had one guy that's pretty big around here. He said, don't ever pull a scale out. He said, unless they beg you to pull it out, don't pull a scale out. The weight damn don't matter. When they pull a fish out and they think it's the biggest fish, yeah. you need to put on your damn cheerleading skirt and start cheering for them and supporting them. And, you know, that's their moment in fishing. It's well, different I mean, than a tournament. Hey, hey, Pete, when yeah. somebody catches a fish like that on your boat, do you put your stewardess outfit on? <laughs> so, it's flight attendant. It is not stewardess. Yeah. It is flight <laughs> attendant. That's right. That's right. I mean, hey, I so, see like Dieter and Peter guiding, and it's just crazy because like so, a guy, they don't make a lot of money. Like, time, you so, know, and I, and I know. Peter flies airplanes and makes a ton of money. Dieter's interviewing Kurt Busch. I know there's more money to make if you like went that direction and did more. So I was always curious of it's a passion. Being guiding I want to ask like this question. Also. Thing. Ask yeah, this question it's also. a passion. You got to let go of the stress stuff and realize you're making. Listen, past two days I've been doing guide trips. Sunday I called the guys and I said, "Listen, fishing's gonna suck. We got dark water." We got a 12 degree temperature drop. It's going to suck. They're like, dude, I just want to go fishing with you. I just want to go. I don't get it. Okay. I'm nobody special, but they wanted to go. We went. It sucked. Called the guys last night, said, hey, it sucked yesterday. I said, we got two choices. We either fish for trophy fish or we go crappy fishing. I don't care, man. We just want to go. 
All right. Some people, that's what they want to do, dude. And you got to, we, all of us, us five can fish a lot. We can fish when we want to. Uh, we can fish where we want to. We've got the ability to do whatever we want to fish and why some people ain't got that. And as a guide, at least you got to keep that in mind and keep it in perspective. And once you do that, it changes the game and it changes your perspective and you view it differently. If you're fishing for trophy fish, tournament fish, it's a different world. But if you're trying to make other people's dreams come true, you have to approach it from that perspective. Yeah. I always look as it would tear my nerves up. Like if if I went on, a, if I took somebody's money to go on a trip and it wasn't happening, so like you're, it would you're tear. Absolutely <laughs> correct with that. You know, so let me ask this question here as well. Um, I give people so I, I get th three different types of folks on my guide trips. Okay, I get number one. I want to learn how to troll artificial. That's what I love. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number two, you get the guys that are like, oh, I want to fucking throw meat in the cooler. Those are the ones I try to avoid. <coughs> Number three, I'm, you know, I get the, the groups that are like, hey, I just want to dang go out and have fun. I All love right. those as well. Okay. Um, the pressure is high always. The guy I had on my trip today, he wanted to learn how to troll. Last night, I texted him. And I said, hey, I got intel on a hot bite at point A, point B, I'm giving you the option. I want you to think about it overnight. Do you want to go chase a big fish or do you want to go chase numbers? And his answer was, I just want to learn to troll artificial. I'm like, good answer. We're going to go ahead and go on my instincts. So I got, I got info from Mercer. Okay. But I am one person that does not chase info from anyone else lake norman is my home lake like i know that damn lake by the back of my hand um it's like you know time of year these fish you know at this water temperature so on and so forth they should be here so i went on my instinct i'm like all right we're gonna, we're gonna give this a try and sure shit the fish were there where i kind of expected them to be this time of year um so the pressure is always high i don't need to guide by no means but at the same time it's rewarding i mean yeah. you have a great day you're the fucking man. You have a shit day. You're a fucking asshole, you know. But a lot of I guess I just ask that because I never had yeah. the um, want to. Like, I, you know, guys at work they watch YouTube. And they want. They're like, take us out fishing, and I'm like, you don't want to go fishing with me because yeah. you probably I'm gonna. You're gonna get one bite, maybe two bites, and I mean, unless you just want to hang out and talk to an asshole all day, then you probably don't want to be fishing. With yeah. me. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's no. what it comes down to. You know, the pressure is absolutely high and there's no doubt about it. It sucks. Right. It really does. And no, there's, no, there's no. some days like, you know, two weeks ago. Uh, so I had a good day about two weeks ago where we caught several hybrids over six pounds. And the very next trip, I was like, dude, we're going to wear them out. We're going to have an awesome day or, you know, whatever, you know, do we didn't catch shit that day. And I mean, uh, my confidence was so fucking high that day that no boat saw me fish in this area. No one knows nothing. I wore them out here yesterday. Nothing's really changed on day two. We're going to do good. And all of a sudden, day two, absolutely nothing. So, you know, it, it's it, it's a variable. You know, you just never know day to day. The only trip that I ever took, I guess you could say I was a guide. Me and Shane Howington, everybody knows about the stump. I don't know if you know the stump story, Dieter. Um <laughs> Anyway, um, I'd call a bunch of fish up in Tennessee and this guy calls me. We're friends. You know, we're just friends on Facebook. And he said, uh, he said, Wes, he said, what do you charge to guide? And I said, I'm not a guide. I don't, you know, I don't guide. He said, well, he said, what would you charge me to take me fishing up in Tennessee? And I said, I don't guide. I'm not, you know, and he said, well, he said, I'll tell you what. He said, I'll give you $500 if you'll take me fishing for eight hours. I said, man, listen, I said, here's the deal, Travis. And Travis is actually the guy that I bought my boat from that I've got now. That's how we became friends. But I'll tell you how all that played out. So I said, I'll tell you what. I said, I, I was going up this weekend just to fish by myself. I didn't want to cause me and Shane had caught fish. Uh, me and Anthony Finley, he caught his personal best. A couple of weeks before that, JR, um, JR and Lacey caught a big fish. Uh, and Alan Oliver caught his personal best. I put him on his personal best. So I want to go fishing for me. But I said, Travis, I'll tell you what I'll do. I said, if you want to come up there, 
I said, you can give me $500, we'll fish eight hours, we'll fish it all day or all night, or we'll do half and half. He said, let's do half and half. So we went up there that morning, first four hours, we didn't get a bite, didn't get nothing. So we got we put the boat back in, I went back to the lodge, we took a nap, we went back out there about seven o'clock that night. And I said, Travis, we've got a full moon. We're not going to get no bait out here. I mean, you know, it's just, you know, it, it's hard. I just wanted you. He said, Wes, he said, all I wanted to know is how you fish up here. He said, I don't care if we catch nothing or not. I said, well, dude, I could have told you how I fish up here and saved you $500. He said, no, I wanted to be on the boat. I wanted to see how you hook the fish. I want to see how you rig for them. I want to see what you're, everything you're doing. So anyway, we started fishing and, uh, and he, we caught a 41 and a 44, and that was his personal best. Nice. So we catching two big fish. Um, and he came back to Greenville, went straight down to Calix Outdoors and spent about $2,500 on rod and reels and bought that boat that I've got now. Um, so that's kind of how that played out. And that's the only time I've, I guess, quote, been a guide. You know, but but I'm, I'm like Scott and, and Pete said, it's, I've just always wondered, you know, I, I would feel bad. And I know, you know, you don't put that into it, but somebody pays you money to try to put them on fish. And some people, most people that fish understands, Hey, I'm not going, you're not going to always catch fish. I don't care how good the guy is. You know, you're, you're, you're betting on what a fish is going to do. Yep. Yeah, but absolutely. So yeah. here's my thing is primarily most of my fishing is winter time this time of year right now. That's, that's what I love to freshwater charter. And let's face it this time of year, you don't get your typical weekend warrior like the, this time of year. You get your avid fisherman, you know. And so you know, what you know what's funny. You know what's funny though. You know when I started the saltwater thing when I bought that boat. You know, and there again, I, I like I, and I still like the shark fishing. Nothing gets shark fishing. God but, bless shark I, fishing. So I, I got you know before I made my first trip down to Myrtle Beach to to leave my boat down there. I looked up YouTube. I put shark fishing in South Carolina. And guess whose video came up? Bigger Melhorn. <laughs> Bigger Melhorn, first one. I said, what kind of shit is this here? I thought he was a damn cat fisherman. If you just kept you know, scrolling, you probably found one of my videos. Yeah, and he was just down there having a good time. And I watched a bunch of Dieter's videos. I was out at Burroughs Inlet fishing one time on my kayak. And I heard somebody say, I don't remember what he said. But I turned around and looked. It was Dieter. <laughs> Dieter Grayson was out there at Merle's Inlet. JR's in, in my sizzle reel on my channel, kissing a trout down there. So, yeah. Why the hell do y'all fish Merle's in there? That place sucks. It, it is. It does. It's a very tight. It's worse than Mountain <laughs> Island. It's a very <laughs> tight, small fishery. The yeah. best. The best. If you place can't get deal, outside the jetties, you're screwed. The mm. best place to fish inshore, in my opinion, in South Carolina now, what I know is one y'all bait. When y'all oh, bay, absolutely. Yes, that it, place it, it, is very diverse. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's like dang, if, when, it, when it comes to dang fishing offshore or inshore, and, you know, if the wind's fucking blowing, I'm I'm fucking drinking beer. Fuck inshore fishing. Fuck I that. Can, you I know, can, I can puppy drum year round. <laughs> no, but you'll what? catch fucking white purse, but you won't catch trout and redfish. I won't. I fucking won't. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, I won't. I well, love catching trout and redfish. I love I'm going to catch, catch fish. Shit. I don't give yeah. a shit what it is. So. You can but go out to the, the, the first 20, time, 20 mile fish morning. buoy out of Merle's and catch fish year round out there. But when I went offshore the first time in my boat and, and a wahoo hit my, hit my rod, that's the most amazing thing I've ever had. Oh, my ever. God, Wes. Where, where's where this coming from? You were just tra he was trashing it. Heart. Shut he up, was Jared. Trashing it. You were saying, oh, these things don't fight one for nothing. What are you boys talking about? No, I said, Wahoo, when that Wahoo hit, I mean, and, and there again, you don't know how fast. I know they say Wahoo is the second fastest fish in the water besides a sailfish. And I think that average is about 60 miles an hour, 61 miles an hour. We, we don't acknowledge selfish. But we I, hey, we say Wahoo's the fastest fish in the ocean. I, I, but anyway, I, 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 you know, so I'm trolling, I'm trolling about eight miles an hour. And I remember the first one that I got on, uh, Anson was with me. And when that fish hit, he was running so fast that the fucking clicker didn't even click. I mean, and, and it laid a Therese rod flat. And it was just, and I've never, 
experienced nothing. And I was speaking of Therese Rods. You know, um, go, go ahead. Wes, it was finish. just amazing. You know, and I got a question that now. I got I to gotta tell you all a story from that uh, four years. Wait, ago. I got a question. I'm the I'm the leader of this group. All right, que- question, <laughs> question before story. Dieter, what boat did you have before the uh, skiff? It was a uh, McKee craft. I had a. Uh, Old McKee craft well, that Larry Grady. I have been watching Dieter since I don't rebuilt, know. Rebuilt, and I don't know if that boat is even in any videos. Or I'm watch, it, I've been watching it, Dieter since like 2008, and I've never seen Dieter in anything other than his character. That's why I was yeah. curious. Was that a center console? Now yeah, he, he's re console, he's reupholstered his center. He's reupholstered his name. Time out, Jr. You're talking too much. Go ahead, dude. Yeah, I put a, uh, uh, it was an old McKee craft, and it had a, you'll know it because it had a Mercury V6 motor on it. There ain't no and videos of that some bitch on YouTube. I don't know if there are no, any. No, they I, ain't. I, I go ahead and tell you, I they made ain't. Any, but that was probably no, before I ain't. even did the stuff before I started my channel. And yeah, it Larry Grady rebuilt the transom on it, and it had about that much flex in the transom, and I decided... It's probably time to get something. I had a pontoon boat before that, but I know it didn't have any videos. And did, what did you target in the McKee craft? Catfish? Same thing. I was just fishing for anything. I mean, I did a little bit of striper fishing, but it, it was. Y'all like, know Dieter's what got me into catfishing, right? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, for it, was, it was the catfish, like most people, I went for them because they were the biggest fish in the water. I mean, it's like the water. Right. where we're at. So, so do right. the, Apex. so do the, you heard the, that, you heard that, Scott? Apex, boy. Dude, I know Dieter's fished a lot. He does a lot of uh, comparison. Do the Zera Spook floats increase your bite? No, I mean, I got videos on that. I, I think it's pretty much <laughs> equal from what I did in the research. Oh it my was. goodness. We're going to actually get an explanation instead of him just referencing his videos. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's like a 300 fish comparison where it was virtually the same. I mean, I, the floats won by a little bit. It was like 2%. It was like 52% to 48%. But I do have, they sent me some of the bigger ones, the bigger (laughs) demon dragons. They finally sent me some to try out that will support a bigger bait. Now we're talking about a big sample size here too, dude. What's the what was the sample size on that? It was test? 300 fish. It was three different three different tests of 300 fish. So it was wow. it was pretty significant. So now how how does the floats and the spooks compare to nothing? Like laying on the bottom. Have you tried that? Like with the bait, no, no, just a sinker. It was hard to do that. Yeah, just a Carolina rig. It's kind of hard to do that. How, how are you going to troll without floating your bait up off the? How are you going to troll? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm you serious. could do it. I don't know nothing about that. You want to add yeah, that to you? You could do it anchored up. Well. You would have to do it anchored up. Uh, You'd have to do it anchored up. One and that would be unfair. Now, here's to the, the thing. Spooks. Here's the thing with the rattles. The rattles don't make any noise when you're drifting. They mm-hmm. only make noise when they're hit or they get hung on something and pop loose. So. My thesis is, and it's very hard to prove this, is that they may scare away as many fish as they incite to bite. And what I mean by that is we've had a lot of times we've used them and you notice that, and this is just, you know, observation, it got hit, but the fish didn't hook up. So maybe when that thing, and I've tried this in swimming pools, I think Keith from fishing and stuff has tested it too. I've dragged these things through swimming pools with microphones and they really make no noise because in a buoyant situation, that little ball is just rolling back and forth in the bottom of that Zara spook. It only makes noise when it slams from one side to another. And that happens when it gets hung or a fish hits it. Now, when Dude, a fish let me ask you it, this. Let, so me, what let, me, let, me, let me say this. When I want to hear this, Wes. Hang on. When a fish hits it, I don't give a damn what you say. There is nothing in the water that sounds like a metal ball slamming into a plastic piece of plastic. That's not fish. That's nothing else. So I said that. Go ahead, Wes. Sorry. I'll say, you know, and and I asked, uh, uh, what's his name? The guy, what's his name? Brian, uh, Brian, what's the guy's Brian name? Snipes. Yeah, Brian Snipes about that. And he said the same thing. He said, I don't, 
I don't really get how it's making any noise when you're pulling it. But not. my question is, is like my dad used to, and he used to be, but my stepdad used to bass fish a little bit. And he used a lure one time called a Super Vibrex. I don't know if you've ever mm-hmm. heard of that. It had a bell housing with a little thing inside of it that turned and teeth. Mm-hmm. And it actually put out a specific sound. Yep. But what about, have y'all ever thought about maybe trying something to put on something that actually turns into water like a spoon or like a small spoon or something like they use on crankbaits while you're catfishing? Stay, 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 moving? Stay, t- stay tuned in the spring and you'll see what I think may they be. They use chicken that, and fucking jello. Hold on, you hold on, you sure. can put a live Pete, chicken Pete, Pete, inside Pete, of a Pete. balloon and it will flap its wings and make noise in the fish. Yeah. Stay tuned in the spring. I think I have something that is going to cost about 33 cents. That I think makes a difference in. I got, I got another question. I got another question, Dieter. On uh, your hook, what is your favorite hook? Like, like what's your go-to hook for a? Uh, I mean, it's a circle hook. It's an octopus style hook. I go with an octopus style John hook. Got to, you know, baby. Do you do? Do you use a large hook, like an eight odd, or do you use a smaller hook, or does it depend I on the think situation? Like most fishermen it's based on the size bait that i'm putting out and which is typically a uh, bigger bait it's going to be an eight alt maybe a 10 if it's super stupid big but then i put a stinger hook on it and then for like the chicken baits that everybody loves is going to be a five alt hook so so you do you do run a stinger on when you're dragging or when you're if i'm doing stupid big baits and right. that's honestly rare i mean that really gets into some I've got to really be targeted, and that's that's maybe two or three percent. Have them. you have that's you different. noticed the better hook out with a certain style hook? Like, as I mean, the like a certain hook, brand. But, no, not really. I mean, people get into that stuff, but right. I mean, honestly, yeah, I just like the octopus style because the leader is in line with the shank of the hook. I think that presents the opening, the gap on the hook, to be better. What are we talking about? Presentation the mouth. Who knows what the hell the truth is? It's really hard to test that kind of stuff and gauge it. Some people like to straight shank and they say, oh, it's got a trigger action or something. Oh, we're talking about that. offset versus straight I, shank. I, yeah. Offset I all yeah. day. I mean, here's the Did thing with know? offset. Here's the thing with offset. Offset will hook a fish better, but yeah, in yeah. the true sense, and Peter wow. can confirm this from being offshore into <coughs> catching and release and stuff. Uh, I mean, and an offset hook is not really doing what a circle hook is designed to do in the conservation end of the world. Why? You're, why is you're it? more likely to throw to is what it comes. To. I so, don't. Did we lose everybody? Sure. Am I the only one here? Did I no. lock up? No, we're. I think you locked up. Everyone else is here. You're. You're the only one that's frozen up. Everyone else. <laughs> that damn Gastonia internet. I, I, that's that Kramer yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm here. <laughs> okay, here? hey, 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 stop, 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 back stop, stop, stop. Now, while we're on this show, JR, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to run something by y'all, and if y'all agree with him, I'll say fine, and I won't bring it up no more. But I've got, we got a bite, got got two bites on, and I've got a, do you, did now you My important this, conversation I'll, was missed. You're uh, your back. Well, anyway, goes up at your back. So, so we're fishing. Be quiet when you left, Dieter. You're the king. So we're fishing on a there Chesapeake Bay. Right? There he is. Okay. So, so we're fishing on Chesapeake Bay, and, and we okay. have to use in Chesapeake Bay. You use, you have to use a straight line circle hook. It can't be offset. It can't be octopus. Right. It just can't be offset. Yeah. So Jr. proceeds to tell me that I lost two fish because I've got a Therese rod with yes. a circle hook. Yes. 100%. He said that you, it has to bend and has to load up. So I it googled up. it and I've tried to show him that the you rod what fish has to do with a down circle hook. Yes, no, 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 well, action rod and he well, said well, me and I'm oh let me finish right. you on and you can Okay, talk. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you finish and then, oh, okay. then it's my turn. Okay. Go ahead. So I'm you know, like, it's my turn, but you know. Let's talk about Therese. Okay, I've got a three hundred dollar rod, a heavy action rod. Jigging rod. Jigging rod. It don't matter Googan. if it's a jigging boat rod. It does rod. matter. It we does got matter. Yeah. 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 Okay, let's say I've got a goddamn broomstick. Yeah. Let's say I've got a you goddamn have a broomstick. Fucking hook shrimp stick. I've got a damn rod. Let me finish. Are y'all going to let me finish? Please, yes. God. <laughs> Shut up, Pete. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. You got a goddamn three hundred dollar fucking broomstick. Yep. But that yep. stick is going to determine how the hook sets in the fish's mouth. On you goddamn hook. right, it does. No, everything. It has everything to do with it. It has everything to do with it. A circle. Okay, is it my turn? 
Is that my turn? All right, go ahead, JR. Okay, okay. Limber. You want a parabolic bend when you're using a circle hook. You want that fish to be able to actually swallow that bait. That fish needs to be able to swallow that bait, turn, run, and then what happens is that bait gets pulled out of that fish's gullet and then hooks him in the corner of the mouth. That is fundamentally how a circle hook works. If you were to go run a test in your yard, in your backyard, if you would you would see that a parabolic bend bull rod is going to outperform a stiff rod 99 out of 100 times. That okay. fish needs to be able to swallow that bait, turn and run, and that bait's going to come out of that fish's gullet into that. What you're showing is that is one person. That is and from it, one of the best cat fishermen in the goddamn world right there. I, Look at uh, James, I, I, I apparently know more than that guy. I know uh, more is than that, that guy. That, that is one person's <laughs> anecdotal evidence. Oh, Dad, he says. I'm telling you. I mean, I'm just he telling you. Yeah, Dieter, he says. Dieter he when you're using a circle know. hook, would you rather have a Hellcat? Or a five hundred dollar uh, Shimano <coughs> jigging rod. Does, Which would you does rather? It not have? matter what rod you use with circle hooks, as yeah. it's more in how you use the rod rather than the rod well, itself. Well, that guy is a dumbass. Let me go ahead and tell you. Tag me on Facebook with that guy, and I will explain to that guy how much of a dumbass he is. Because that is that is dumb. That is the dumbest comment I've ever seen. Look him up. Time out. Look him up. You, you, Dieter answers that it, and I'm answering it, and Peter answers it. Go ahead, Dieter. Look it up, JR. What, what's what? the question? I don't even know Who what cares the what Peter has to say. Hey, JR, Time Peter out. drags Time artificial out. soft plastics. He doesn't know anything about soft hey, about circle hey, hooks. Hey, Peter's I the last person. Hey. Peter's a great hey, fisherman, hey, but the last person you should ask about hey, circle hooks. Peter Melhorn is who you should ask about circle hooks. Okay, time out. Peter, time out. Peter, does time it matter out. what action rod I'm using if I'm time using out. Everybody, we got the we got the question. Go ahead, Dieter. I'll go after you. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be totally honest with you, Wes. I am totally undecided on whether it makes a difference or not. And I say that because I catch fish consistently. I don't use heavy action rods because I'm fishing on reservoirs. I don't chunk big weights. I don't have heavy currents. I used one today, one of these Hellcat rods that was a medium heavy. It caught a fish, 22, 23 pound. The reason I use the trolling rods, the big heavy mm -hmm. trolling rods, is because. Read between the lines, more, people. Yep, yeah, this pitch here. It's yep. more Deep, forgiving. There's a diplomat. Read right right between the lines. It's more forgiving. I don't know if it makes a difference or not i've questioned that on striper fishing with downlining and oh the fish is going to feel this and I, I don't give fish that much credit for being intelligent because they're dumb as oh, a, no, they're dumbass damn for rock. sure uh all right, my turn yeah absolutely absolutely all go right on. yeah go ahead I'll scott go Dieter, Dieter, Dieter's not gonna all he, right he i think it does. Answer, i think he's... i think it does i agree with jr I think a stiff rod is almost like setting the hook, because like as soon as that, as soon as that bait, as soon as they feel that bait, it's jerking. It's almost like jerking a rod. So I think the soft rod bends over, lets the circle hook pull out, and hook in the corner of the mouth. And the only reason I say that is from down. I have a retort. I'll Guys, say how often do you hook a fish on a circle hook and the bait is still on the hook? How about I answer that question for you all? Never. Why? Because the fish are they're, they're swallowing the bait. That's why. They're, they're swallowing the bait. And then when you when you reel that fish in, you bring it over the gunnel and that circle hook setting in the corner of the mouth, guess what yeah. that fish did? Yeah. That fish yeah. swallowed that bait. We you pulled that fish out of the corner. Right. Yeah. 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 Because that's how circle hooks work. You're slobbering in the mic. We got to back him off the mic. Back him off the mic. He's getting excited. So Go ahead, way, Peter. way back in the day, I used to live bait fish. Yes, believe it or not, I live bait fish until I realized that there was a better way of fishing <laughs> than artificial. Okay. Well, there, you just there was one hook, <laughs> there was only one hook I ever used. 
Okay, only one. Oh my God! Here we go with the eagle claw bullshit. No, absolutely <laughs> not. And I still Charlie have a Brown. Fucking, Charlie Brown. I have a box absolutely <laughs> full of them, and I might as well fucking give them away because I won't use them ever again. Probably. It's the owner Mutu. Oh my God! Yeah, the Scott's, the, Scott's getting a boner. The over there. The That's the the only fucking hook I ever used, and yes, it made a huge difference between. A limber rod or a fucking stiff rod, no doubt about it. And okay. I absolutely, I smacked the fuck out of a friend of once that tried to set a hook on a dang fish. <laughs> that dang rod set. I'm like, hey, nope, just fucking pick that rod up and start reeling. That's all you do. The reason I say what I'm saying is from down rod fishing. Like, I understand what that. Like cut bait fishing. I mean, if there's a lot of slack in the line, that probably. Kind of takes away a little bit of it. Wes, 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 I don't care what anybody says. I know more than they do. When you're down, I'm I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you what I tell all my friends. That's why you've got so many articles on Google about how to catch catfish because you know more than they do. I mean, I, I, I got a couple. I mean, I got a couple articles on Google. So, Peter, were you using? I don't care what anyone. I know more than they do. I don't care what they say about circle that. hooks. I know more than they do about circle. I know everything there is to know about a circle hook. All right, so back to somebody who knows what they're talking about. Like when I <laughs> when I'm cut baiting, I put a lot of slack in my line. If I have my reel locked down, it's got a ton of slack, so the fish is pretty much swallowed the bait before it feels the rod. So I don't think it matters as much. But if I'm downlining, where the rod's right here, like as soon as the fish hits. The circle hook, it feels the rod. Like a limber rod will hook up a lot more than a stiff rod. And I do have to agree that I think that's one of those dynamics, different circumstances. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. one of the variables. When you got that much slack line when you're anchored up and you're you got I don't see I don't see what all that I don't understand what the whole there's no confusion to me. J hook, fish bites, boom, hooked, circle hook. Fish bites, swallows, loads the rod up, pulls the pulls the bait out of the fish's mouth, boom, lands. What what is there? What else is there? That's it. That's how it works. Yeah, I got the man, point blank. Man, there's no I, argument. I, I, that's I, I, how I, I, it works. You. Period. So what's Period. the rod action got to do with on that? What's the rod action got to do with it if he swallows it? Because, because it if, if it's a stiff time. rod, he can't swallow it. It's gonna pull it out of his mouth time. before he gets a chance to swallow it. I think oh, what I'm saying, yeah. it loads up slower. Like, it, it's a slow load where with a stiff rod, it's like you go it's from... It's got to be a slow load. If you're you go from nothing. Get a hook. You stick to those $50 big cat <laughs> fever rods that are made by Caleb and him, and I'll stick to my $300 Tom Thumb rods. And we'll see who catches the most fish. If we're butterfly jigging, we're going to beat me. If we're, do, if, we're we're catching, if we're catching striper and catfish, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you. I will. You know, y'all know you will because you ain't going to catch me catfishing unless somebody's, unless I have to. Let's bet. Let's oh, do you're it. You're coming. Yeah. You're coming. The cat, it's coming. Let's do it's it. coming. You're getting ready to retire. Let's do it. You're getting no, ready to retire. No, you, you, can't keep, you can't oh, keep man. going the way you're going. You're going to retire and it's going to be big blue catfish country. Now, JR, to argue that fact, though, if I'm fishing for trophy fish, I will take. A, a missed strike on a heavy rod than I will. I'm not fighting a big trophy fish Dude, on a limber not rod. You're full of shit. Everybody's got it in their head that a limber rod ain't got no ass. Well, you're about full of shit. There are, there are, for example, Hellcats. There are limber rods that have Never plenty, used plenty, plenty of backbone. Backbone for days. Those fish we caught in Chesapeake Bay, you would have blown your fucking ass out we, trying to get hey, this. We went five for eight, Wes. We kicked everybody's ass that day. We went five for eight. But I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. Had we been using Hellcats, we would have went eight for eight. <laughs> oh, shit. With, with circle hooks. Oh, with circle man. hooks. We would have went eight for eight. Thank God. The, the pro staff numbers. Every, are fish, so every fish we missed was on a Shimano Torres, a freaking oh, a extremely high dollar right. jigging well, rod. As stiff JR, as JR, shit. Weekend warrior. We had two Torres. Hold on a minute. See, you're drunk, brother. Holly had two Torres rods on the boat. The rest of them was the ugly stick tiger light rods. That's right. And we that's and they good rod. And, that tiger and, light and, and they rod. went undefeated. 
that we, that we caught every every fish we hooked up on on those ugly sticks. No, Why? Because before ugly sticks now, are predominantly it. glass. Before glass now, I is glass. glass is parabolic. It'll bend to the handle. Those Therese rods are jigging rods that are primarily what? What we call the throws. What 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 are, what are, what are the Therese rods? They're primarily graphite. They're stiff. They are. Uh, we call. They're I call stiff. the front on the Therese. They're stiff. Put the J hooks on the Therese's. The, the the circle hooks need to go on the more parabolic bend rods. The the, the bend the rods that'll bend all the way to the handle. Just because a rod bends doesn't yeah, mean it doesn't have power. What rod, yeah. hey, Peter? What rod do you like to pull uh, artificials with? Um. So. What what soft plastic comes? What what jig head is Peter using? That's actually a circle hook. Are there jig? Are there circle hook jig heads? No. No. No, they're not. They're all J hooks. So so Peter's using stiff. Well, rods. I'm, I'm curious of what rod he likes. What what kind of hooks is Dieter Melhorn? Dieter Melhorn catches more fish than anybody Let me in this ask room. The man's question, what what kind guy. of hooks does Dieter use? What kind of hooks are we you are, using, Dieter? We already talked about that, Jr. You were taking a piss. <laughs> Damn. We already just right. we're, we're, so, we're, we're, we're two chapters ahead of you, right? Now. Yeah, exactly. So, Scott, right. I troll up to 10 sometimes, troll artificial 10 rods. 10 um, rods. Each rod has, you know, if I'm by myself or with. I someone, find that hard to believe. I find that hard to believe that you're trolling 10 rods. Fucking watch and learn, I, son. Watch I think and you're learn. exaggerating. Watch watch and learn. And I don't watch think you're trolling learn. 10 rods. Watch I don't learn. think you're trolling 10 rods. I can troll 10. Hey, shut up, JR. I, I'm not saying that you can't. I've, seen it. I've been on the boat with him doing eight. So I I'm not saying you can't troll 10. I'm just saying that I don't think that you're typically. If I have an experienced crew, I will troll 10 rods. Which is not me. Which is any Not other me. time, it's eight rods. Eight rods eight are artificial. Rods. And it's like a medium heavy rod? Um, so I have a certain setup, basically. I have two on the down rigger and then four, one, two, three, four, five, six lead core rods. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'll have two that are mediums. And then... Ain't no, nary a circle mediums, hook in that spread. Rods. Ain't nary a circle hook in that spread. So it, it so ain't about super hooks or not. We're talking about rods here. So when you're using down you're using downrigger rods on, on this? I am using so my downrigger rods are actually ugly sticks. I ugly you. stick medium lights? Medium mediums. Mediums? Okay, yep. yeah. Basically noodle rods, yeah. So so they're basically downrigger rods. Correct. So yes, yeah, so he's using downrigger yeah. rods. Yeah. What other questions you got, Scott? I can answer all of them. You think <laughs> apparently I can. All right, I got one for Dater. All right, what you oh, got? God. I'll answer it too. All right, Dater. Uh classic medium heavy big cat fever rod or hellcat. What's my well, well, like, application? What application? Yeah, well, we are we are a trash uh, fishing or striper we're, fishing. We're, we're, we're cut money, for blue cats. Uh, I'll blue start cats. out with money wise. Just go with the classic. The Hellcat ain't gonna buy you that much. Great rod. Right. I honestly think it probably suits Peter more doing offshore trolling for stuff than it does fishing for catfish. Well, well hang on, um, hang on, hang on. What's hang the, on. What's the big on. wait? Hold on, Jared. I want to know this because I haven't touched one. What's the big difference between a Hellcat and a medium heavy Big Cat Fever Classic? It's a slower tip, or yes, it's a slower tip on it. Um, there you go. That's probably the biggest thing. The ass uh -huh. end of it is virtually the same. I okay. Mean, Slower tip. Uh, same same ass. Know, it, okay. It's like I told Caleb before. I like he it. needs to rebrand his entire company, either A, Fever, or two, Hellcat, just because the name sounds better on it. Right. Honestly, I, 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 and I'm honest about this stuff. Yeah, I'm a catch the fever guy, but. Honestly, for those rods, I mean, you got to be, I think, to get the bang for the buck out of them, you got to be fishing some heavier weight, some heavier current or something like that. For me on a reservoir, hell, I use the medium light trolling rod. But Dieter, but Dieter, 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 back up from the mic. There you go. Dieter. He gets Dieter, excited and he gets no, close no, and starts no, talking no, like this. Yes. Now you've accused me. You you've accused me of this Captain before. Morgan you, shit, whatever. You, you told me. You told me a long time ago, back in 2017. I was kind of 
blowing up on YouTube a little bit. I was posting was some big, up, some videos man. of some bigger fish. I caught I caught over a dozen over a dozen fish over fifty pounds in one year. And you said you said Jr. That's not you ain't sustainable. got nine hundred thousand views you, you, on a you video. You told me. Man. You told me, Dieter. You said Jr. That's not sustainable, bro. You're that not you're not going to make it on YouTube uh, with nothing but trophy fish on on Lake Wiley. It's fish porn. It's not going to happen. And I was like, okay, okay, that's fine. So my 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 point my point is my point is. <clears throat> <laughs> What's your point? It was, bro? I, I forgot. I forgot what, what what were we talking about? Rods. Remind me what we were talking about. Rods. Hellcat rods. Hellcat rods. What, what about them? Fever. I don't. All right. Can you mute Jr. All right. So Dieter, have you ever had a Tomcat? Have you ever used a Tomcat? Rod? Oh my God! No, Here we go with the Tomcat. Never had. Never had. Well, see, yeah. I think Hellcat would be similar because the Tomcat's got a, like a medium slow tip with a real heavy backbone. Yeah. You, can tell, I, you can I tell three, which rod's which by looking my, at the, where, where the handle meets the blank. If it's tapered, it's a Hellcat blank. If it's not tapered, it's a, just a regular Big Cat Fever blank. But listen, I'm not it's talking. Possible. I've never held a Hellcat. I want to know. My history is ugly sticks. Ugly stick, catfish rod, striper rod, and then the right. tiger the rod, right. tiger lights, yeah. that whole so, world. I got, I got to say this. So um, Caleb slash Shane – gave me Shane you mean Shane, Shane Washer who the fuck is that? Who is that you're, 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 uh, you mean Caleb of, and he's one of Caleb's um, new left hand man's there uh, what is what is they, Caleb what is the other guy Tony Caton Tony Caton and and Tony Caton and Caleb yeah oh, Caleb's got a new pro staff guy go ahead Peter okay, Any, okay anyways before I get interrupted again here um I'm they actually gave me, oh, they gave me eight <laughs> Of the uh, striper stealth rods, the uh, medium action, because that's what that's what I requested. Yeah. Uh, shocking enough, I'm actually quite satisfied with those as king rods for king fishing, live bait. Really, right. the medium yeah. action? Yes, very no, live that's bait better. rods are yes, notoriously sir. limber. Yes, sir. You know that's that's why, like they're, that's why they're that's why they're so good. I've, I've any, lim so any limber rod is going to be good for circle hooks. I've had the medium and I had the medium heavy in my hands. I, I tried them both, and it was a very tough decision. I'm like the mediums kind of suit what I have right now, and I actually put them to work, and spot on, dude. The medium striper stealth rods, money for kingfishing, live bait. Now, me I can see I that because like they, they're really heavier. soft, so and you run a light drag, so I can see where the mediums would yeah. be better. Now, me personally, when it comes to a rod, I particularly like the shorter rods. I don't like the six foot six and the seven foot rods. The shorter a rod is to me, the better control I feel I have over a fish. Oh, uh, one hundred percent. And so, yeah, that is the one complaint I had, and of course, it can't yep. change that. I, you know, I wish that instead of the was a seven six, they are seven I think. six. Yeah, I it's wish my biggest were, complaint too. I wish they were sevens or six sixes. Yeah. All they gotta to do Caleb. is call China. They could get some six foot. I've been trying to get Caleb <laughs> to come out with a shorter version, a yeah. seven foot or six six. If nothing else, to sell them as a kayak rod because I just think for boat fishermen, seven six is overkill no matter what. Yes, and doing. it's like you know, I was requested to use all mm -hmm. of those rods for the U.S. Open King tournament, which never happened, of course, because of hurricane. But I'm like, you know, I told them like flat out. I have to have one different rod on the boat because that dang seven six gets in the damn way for a downrigger rod. I can't do it. I can't do so it. So are you are you officially pro staff, Peter? Eh, uh, you know, I don't know. I have eight foot downrigger right. rods that work great. It's all about how well they bend. Are they new? Peter, are you pro are you pro staff Dave? negative? Are I am pro staff? staff with nobody. Period. <laughs> period. <laughs> That's actually in contract and the NDA agreements. So I, I did want to ask you anybody. about your planer boards. Do you like your planer boards? The big I cat, <laughs> the big cat planer boards. I do. Don't I do. doesn't doesn't uh, Catfish Dave have the same planer boards? Who? Catfish Dave. <laughs> Who? Who's, who is she? Never heard. Of her. I am pretty yeah, sure her. Catfish Dave uses the same planer boards Dieter uses. Those. I don't boards. know if she does or not. She they're very, they're, big, big they're very interesting. They seem like they're 
short, like they're almost square, right? I, I'm going to yeah. tell you what. So they're I, very I, different I don't know this. Hey, boards, I don't I know this that. catfish That's date. That's the wide reason I guy. stayed away from striper boards. I, I don't I mean, know this, hey, I don't know this catfish Dave guy we speak of. Uh -huh. but, you know, the only video I've seen of him mentioned something about Dieter and a dang finger in a catfish <laughs> asshole. I don't know yeah. what that's all about. Well, <laughs> Dieter, I mean, Wes, as many masturbatory the, fantasies that he has about me. Wes, being the diplomat he is, actually got Catfish Dave on our show. That was like amazing, a, wasn't it? Yeah. Like a month ago, and, and Catfish Dave was like, yeah, I'll um, I'll unblock him. He's like, I'm getting ready to go to the grocery store. I'll get on there when I get back. You know, <laughs> yeah. He's he much nicer than Brian he Baird. He though. never did. He, he played you did. like a fucking fiddle, huh? <laughs> he never did well, unblock me. We were talking about on the show one night, and and, and this is just my opinion. You know, uh, uh, Tony sent me some rods one time, and you know everybody was jigging me saying he I. He did. He sent you a shitload. Yeah, How many did. rods did he send you? About fifteen. But you know, JR, calm down. They calm down me. for one minute. Calm down. They sent me minute. 10 striper stouts with no names oh on them. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. So what's up with that? But what I'm saying is, shit. you know, everybody, oh, and this is just my take on this, and y'all may disagree with me on this, like Gerald does the circle hooks. He's full of shit. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not okay. full of shit. But I will teach you. Listen, I need, I can teach everybody, 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 I can everybody, teach everybody, a class everybody, on everybody, circle everybody, hooks. Everybody, 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 everybody likes to say this fucking word pro stuff. <laughs> okay. First of all, if a company's giving you five or six rods and they want you to put their name in every video, they're giving you some goddamn hooks and they're giving you some. You're not a fucking pro staffer. If you're a pro staff with somebody, they're buying your goddamn boat. They're That's buying right. your truck. They're That's paying right. your fucking motel bill. That's right. They're and they're paying you That's to right. make a living doing that. And if That's you're right. not getting all that, because yeah, it ain't cheap. Staff, it ain't cheap. Marketing ain't yeah. marketing ain't cheap. That's yeah, why guys that are actually pro staff that are legit pro staff, exactly. that's why they hate they hate guys like me. Yeah. Because because I'm pro staffing for free sometimes and they don't like well, that. West I want a pro staff for Dieter. He gives me a sticker and pays my entry fee. I'm down. Dieter, here's a question. Right, you, here's don't, a question you don't get a sticker. For, here's down, a question for down. Dieter. Dieter, how does this hurt the industry? Okay. Let's say in the fishing industry, you got let's let's say for example, we're talking about this big show cat hurts fever. The we're, we're talking about Caleb Page <laughs> and Tony Kate, and we're talking about Big Cat Fever. Let's yeah. say that Tony Kate and Caleb Page is sponsoring an angler. Let's say that they pay to have their boat wrapped. They're keeping them up on apparel. They're keeping them up on rods, etc. Mm -hmm. etc. Et right. Well, let's okay. say that an angler like me just happens to like the brand. He goes out and pays to have his boat wrapped. Right. Okay, let's let's say I go let's let's say I go out okay. with my own my own money and I pay to have my boat wrapped. Okay, why are, why, why are the guys that are actually like legit pro staff, why would they get mad at someone like me that actually goes out and is not pro staff but chooses to go pay to have his boat wrapped, pays to use their products and actually promote their products? Actually, you're why why would they be mad at me? Let, let, let's let Dieter answer that. Well, all right, g l let me just give you the totality of that, that question, okay? Okay. If I am working with a brand as an emissary, okay, and I am delivering value to them through what I do, through my brand, and I get value from them, I could give a crap less what you or Peter or anybody else does because that's my world. Okay. I, I could care less. Okay. If you do all, sh all ships float higher on the right. Is it high, hurting? But... Is it hurting the industry? Is it hurting the industry no, for guys no. like, like me to promote a brand no. and receive absolutely nothing in return? No, because is you're it, worthless. Is it, is it hurting the industry? No, because you have no value. I mean, and I'm not being mean, no, but no, I'm just I'll, saying I'll, you have no value to the brand. You can do whatever you want to. You can paint your house in. But there are scenarios. The there love. are scenarios when a company like Big Cat Fever, not them, you know, isolating them, but just mm -hmm. let's say them, for example. There that. are examples when they are promoting or sponsoring a, an angler. And mm -hmm. there are anglers that actually can 
can uh, actually bring more business to the industry than they than they could. And Good, they, they should prove out, it. They, they actually go out and pay to have their boat wrapped, and they actually buy all the products. They're bad uh, businessmen. Is that hurting the industry? It's hurting themselves. I don't think it hurts the industry at all. I think they're hurting themselves. If they have any value at all to bring to the game, well, I think they it's wouldn't hurting be the... doing silly shit like that when they've actually got some value. If I think they've it's... got that much value, there are plenty of other Rodney's and everybody else out there that will jump on the boat and will pay them to do that. Right. Uh, well, let's say that they're, they're loyal. They like that particular brand, and that particular brand hasn't Good seen for them. It. Good for okay. them. We need more but people is it, like that is, in the world. Is it hurting the industry? As well? No, not hurting the industry at all. <laughs> but is it what well, well is it are you sure? Because that it's tell is me it how is it not taking money from potential uh people that, that could doesn't hurt the industry. That, that hurts could, them. It doesn't hurt the industry. Are, it promotes are, but, the industry. Are, are it, does, they, it hurts them for doing are, it. Aren't they the industry? They're aren't a part they, of the industry, but the whole industry is growing way more than what the money is they're losing. Okay. I mean, it. It, listen, if you've got that much reach and that much power and that with your brand, you're either a dumb or you're taking a big gamble that somebody's going to jump on it at some point. So no, it's not hurting the industry at all. It's if nothing else, it's helping it for free. And you're, but you know, there are there are people that are trying to make a living. There are people that are trying sure. to, like yourself, you're, myself you're, included. I'm one running, of them. Absolutely, you're running, you're running your brand as yep. a business. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Ask my accountant. So if someone like Big Cat Fever were to say, "Hey, Dieter, listen, we would, we saw you. We know you have a Carolina skiff. We'd love to." Uh, for you to run your uh, boat up, run it by uh, CS Motorsports up there on New Hope. We want to mm -hmm. get it wrapped. We want to get it wrapped for you. We're going to sure. pay for it all. We're going to yep. send you. We're going to send you twelve Hellcats. We're going to send you. Um, you know, uh, five thousand. That makes five, it really we're enticing. Gonna you 12, we're going to send you twelve Hellcats. We're going to keep. We're going to keep you in rods. We're going to keep right. you in gear. How about a hoodie? Wanna, Can I get a hoodie? You too? never have to buy any apparel, any rods. We're going to wrap your boat. We're going to hook you up, brother. Got I'm sure, Dieter, Dieter, you've been approached, correct? Uh, you can say, hang on, let me plug in my headphones. I don't want to miss this question. Hang on, my earbuds are dying. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, mine died, too. Let me see if they're still working. Guys, we've been on here for four hours. I know, right? Ain't that some shit? I want to ask on. this question here in a little bit, too, once Dieter's gone. I love this question. Bear with me. Hey, Scott. What's up? From, uh, uh, the clear boards wanted you to kind of be pro staff with him or his boards. Yeah, they sent me a letter in the mail yeah. that uh, they would send me all my free boards and free gear. All I had to do was in my videos, I couldn't show any competition. Yeah. And uh, so I ripped it up, threw it in the trash. Cause <laughs> fuck that. That's my point. All right. I can it's hear it. you now. Sorry it's about it. that. What was the question? I'm sorry. I, I, I said I'm, I'm sure you've been approached by many companies. I've been approached by. by I mean, your YouTube is pretty big. I'm sure you've been approached to. Uh, I'm sure Big Cat Fever has approached you to uh, sponsor to be approached. Maybe. At, and, and I'm sure you've turned them down. Well, here's the thing. I don't like the name pro staff because I don't like what any of the connotation that is associated with it, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I am an emissary for any brand that I work with. And y'all can Google that word if you want to when you're done. I think you mean like an ambassador? Yeah, the pro staff thing has just been, you know, again, I we all make the joke that I'm a pro staff at Taco Bell because they gave me, you know, packs of hot sauce uh, when I go there. So free packs of Mild hot sauce. Or free fire. Packs of hot Mild or fire. That, that makes a difference. Well, it, 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 it very, yeah, it does make a difference just right. what level you're at. But yeah, it's, you know, it, it. I just don't like that name. There's a place for it. And you know, for some people, I think there's some worth, but honestly, and I've complained and bitched about this when it comes to most of that is targeted toward the tournament world. And any of you that have ever been to any kind of catfish or striper tournament, you know that that pool of 100 people that may see you at a tournament is, well, very shallow as far mm -hmm. as you can reach. So I just don't think there's a, I don't want to get. But I think the, 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 no, 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 by all means, 
go but there, the youtube go thing there. i think is where they i mean that's where they contacted me that's when i was active on youtube that's when they were yes. more interested i don't in care what they say youtube has far more reach than yeah absolutely, absolutely. Dater, you're absolutely. Like a, Dater, so you're saying you're like a diplomatic emissary you're, yeah. you're like your representative. Yeah. You're kind of like, you yeah. Represent I support the brand. Company. We have an agreement, and yeah. yeah, I promote the brand. And but I also I've got some very good understandings with these people that if I want to do something with a Mad Catch rod or a B and M rod or a catch the catfish whatever rod, I can go do it. It's not like I'm locked into just yeah. oh, it's the only person I can talk about and. Well, see, that's the, that's the thing. That's the thing is, why aren't these companies locking guys like you in? They try to. Well, they one try. of them is. They try to lock me in. One of them is, and there's a couple other wanting to, but it it again, it's 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 a dynamic deal. I mean, there's, well, there's here's the deal. If you want to lock me in, like you said, that would lock me in. It's very like dynamic. Peter. Okay, if you want to lock me in, you you pay me a fucking salary. You buy all my fishing gear. You pay my boat. You pay my motel rooms if I travel. Mm -hmm. You buy my bait, and I and, and you like turn me turn entry fees. Period. Yeah, yeah everything. And then that to me is, is a true pro staffer. Yeah. Then you I can lock me in, but you're not going to lock that's, me in. Well, that's no, more. He's of, right. That's more of something that I'm doing than a pro staffer. Pro staffer in the 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 sense in the catfish world is somebody that's getting if you look at the pro staff business model it's somebody that's getting at whatever little level they're getting 10 percent off something at the next level they're getting 20 percent and at the next level they're getting 30 percent and then maybe maybe if they're really big they'll get it for free no 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 and no, that's a no. when, when it comes to when it comes to Dieter Melhorn there's no discounts you're getting you're getting everything I'm sending you. I'm sending you everything. There's I, way too much I'm to be gained by I'm me sorry. showing something in a video than a ten percent off. You know what? Price you know, on the impact of exactly. You know yes, what I'm, kills me about the pro staff all. guys? Time out there. The pro staff guys, like the ones that are really probably new to the pro staff, like when they. Pushing, I, like, you know when they're pushing something. I mean, it's so fake. It's like an infomercial. It's like, I, I posted that on my Facebook. It's and I've been guilty silly. of that before. I will say that. No. I mean, not as bad as some of these guys. I, I mean, they're we just all. putting it out, and they're like, this is it. If you ain't using this, then you suck. I mean, it, it it's a, it's funny to me. I find it hilarious. Some yeah. of these guys I that are it, I find it kind of comical as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, like there it. is a, and I got some very good advice actually from some NASCAR drivers that I'd worked with on how to approach and deal with that stuff. And one of them was a very hated driver that I won't mention his name. He said, when you get <laughs> bullshit thrown at you, uh, you kind of got to just push back and they'll either accept it or they won't. And the good people will. And it's like if I got a problem with the Hellcat rods or Big Cat Beaver rods, there's issues I got with them. They need shorter rods. I got no complaint with that. Uh, there's other stuff. I think Peter, you understand why they like. can't do that, right? You, un you, you do understand that these rods are shelf rods. Made sure. in bulk. Sure. In bulk. sure. Oh. Absolutely. I, well, no, I will say this. You could make a rod. You could buy them in batch that would fit that, but they're trying to meet the needs of a broad group. They want to meet the needs of bank fishermen and people that are fishing off a boat. And I say go to the next level and you need to target some people that are wanting something, well, like me, that's just shorter, that are totally boat fishermen. So. Plus, I think yeah. that, that type of rod, if the brand was formatted around instead of Big Cat Fever, Hellcat, or Fever rods, you got something that Peter might be able to use. I should point that way since it's on the screen this way. Uh, that could be used saltwater fishing. So I think it would kind of translate. My, I say all that to say I will bitch and complain and everybody that I deal with, including Ancient Mariner, they know that I will bitch and complain about everything I don't like about everything they make, and that's just part of the deal. But I'm using it because I think it appeals to people who are looking for something. Else. Well, one question, Dieter, since I got you on here and you got yes, inside information. Was Kurt Bush's wife really with the CIA trying to... 
the <laughs> list. And I went to Washington with them years ago when they were still together, flew up there on his private jet. She was as gracious and as sweet a person as she can be. But as bat crap crazy as Kurt is, I think she's more bat crap crazy. So there we go. Yeah. They, again, she was nice as she could be, but. Yeah, so it could be a true story. Ed, there's, listen, there's a little bit of truth in every <laughs> little rumor out there. Ask Peter. He can tell you. He knows that deal firsthand. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Was he the pilot, <laughs> Peter? That. What's that? I asked Peter, was he the pilot? <laughs> he was not the pilot on that flight. No. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you. So let me, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you an interesting story. So I have flew for Mariah <laughs> Okay, that is the biggest <laughs> bitch in the fucking United States. Period. She is banned from every fucking corporate company in America. Who? Mariah Carey. Really? Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, hey, she's got snakes in her head for real. She really <laughs> does. She really does. Her and, her and Holly Berry, both. Holly Berry. I don't know. I don't know about how. I can't tell you. I can't answer that. But I'm gonna tell you a story about Mariah. Okay, so. Uh, one day she was on a corporate jet and she was offered a bottle of water. The plain simple, a fucking bottle of water. And she fucking turned a cold shoulder. Okay. She's like, hmm, talk to him. Okay. So she has a hired staffer with her at all times. Like all questions run through him. Okay? <laughs> so, so we're offering Mariah a bottle of water and she turns a cold shoulder and she won't fucking talk to anyone. Okay. So we talked to the staffer. Would Mariah like this ball of water? <laughs> Mariah, would you like this ball of water? Yes, I would love this ball of water. Mariah would <laughs> like this ball of water. Here, Mariah, here's a ball of water. So it was like that. Yes. Oh, man. Hey, Jared, who's the most famous person you've ever had on the plane? Mariah Carey. <laughs> no, really. Who was the most famous person, Peter? Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey, yeah. really? So I have seen Taylor <laughs> Swift. I have and seen the so biggest bitch. Mariah Carey, hands down. No questions asked. Um, some other famous. Even worse players. than your ex wife? Fucking hey, yeah. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the ex wife was tolerable. Okay. Let's put it that way. Um, I, I have had Jennifer Gardner on a flight. Um, <laughs> I have had um, God. What's his name? One of the cool guys. Um, God, what's his name? Leader Mahorn. Bill Murray. I've had him on <laughs> several flights, and that is one cool dude. Oh yeah, he seems a little crazy too, but he seems. Bill Murray is one of the few folks that like he will go in the back of the aircraft and sit with any normal Joe Schmo, and be content. He will has not has anybody time. knowingly, to your knowledge, joined the Mile High Club while you were in command? To my That's knowledge, a good no. question. To Peter my knowledge, I heard no. with the stewardess. No. Go ahead, Peter. Uh, to my knowledge, no. Not right. Okay. okay. Have, Have you, you Peter? Peter? Guys. To my knowledge, no. <laughs> and I got to work tomorrow. This has been the longest show we've ever run. Oh, my Jordan. God. What Wes is calling it. Wes what? is cutting it off. Oh, my God. I don't get my number no more, homeboy. Hey, hey, hey I, I got to talk about this whole pro about. staff shit real quick. Okay? JR, you know we, JR, you know we've been doing this show almost a year and a half. Has it been that long? Wow. I didn't you know, know we started. Do you remember where we got the idea from? We still got 20 nope. years. <laughs> We were hey when we went when we were Cobia fishing, you know we got the motel room up there and I went live and me and you was both together and we had like fifty people viewing two viewers two and viewers. we said and we were like we were like you know what you remember and I said we want to start a fishing show and just talk about fishing every week yeah I, I, re people. I remember you calling me you were actually wanting to start a podcast and I was like I don't know how to do a podcast we can we can go live so. yeah. That was about a year and a half ago. We're up to so. three viewers now. Three. Hey, it's we had long 45 time. at one time, so we're doing better. Yeah, yeah. We'll continue to go organically, Dieter. I don't or care. I just have fun talking to you guys. I don't give a shit who's watching. Micro-orgasms, yes. <laughs> it's actually sad that 
there are not more people watching because some of the chatter on here is very educational. I mean, I'm not a big striper fisherman, but for somebody that's in that world, I think there's some really good information. Well, and if I could, if stuff, I could stay out of trouble, things would be better right now for 17 more days. My, my uh, content will is being moved lower in the feed according to Facebook because I got in some trouble. So if I could stay out of trouble, I think we'd probably do better. And, you know, anything else, you know, I'm kind of careful what I say. I'm sure Scott is the same exact way because, you know, we're approaching some big tournaments coming up and we don't really want to say a lot. Hey, though. I'll tell you what. I had a guy come up to me the last tournament I got on Santee. He came up. To, he came up. To, <laughs> matter of fact, Dieter, Dieter you, your name was brought up. Okay. Oh, yeah, juicy he, stuff. He, he came up to me and he, I, heard, I saw a guy coming up. I just gotten up. I took a quick shower. I had my bibs on, a couple a sweatshirt, t-shirt, a couple sweatshirts on. And he come out of nowhere. I saw a sea a sea arc boat was like two doors down there at at uh Black <laughs> Black's God. camp there at Santee. And this guy come walking up on me and I heard him I heard him saying J.R. Cochran as he was walking up and I was like, I thought he was kidding. So he, he comes up to me and he was like, he said, I took that, that F and C arc out yesterday and it did just fine. It didn't sink. And I was like, awesome, man. And I thought he was, you know, just messing. No, it turns out the guy was serious as a heart attack. And uh, he patted me on the back harder than I've ever been patted on the back. You were assaulted. It's stung in, in, in nine states. And yeah. His name is almost like mine, but it's Scott Peavy. So it's <laughs> he, and uh, after, after the tournament that day, I was uh, getting my camera equipment because I was filming the tournament that the way in and uh, he come walking up on me again. I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to have to fight this guy. Like, we're going to brawl. This is not good. But he comes up to me. He's like, "Hey, bud. Yeah, yeah. I just, I don't want you to take this the wrong. I don't want. You, I didn't want you to take this warning the wrong way." But he's like, "Yeah, it was over a Dieter Melhorn post." <laughs> <laughs> and I, was I like, hate Dieter. you because of Dieter Melhorn. I was I like, "Well, that it. doesn't surprise me. What was it about?" And he was like, "It was about Sea Arc sinking in tournaments." And he said that he said that you said that you're kayak could handle rougher waters than my CR could. Two oh, yeah, years, I made that comment on ago. Dieter's post the other day. <laughs> and he was like, Dieter, yeah, you, said, don't, you don't ever run into that? What's that? Aggressive people like approaching you over No. Certain no. Events? no? You know, no, it's no, kind of funny, like well, every, every he's a sizable trip. dude. I don't know if you guys ever met mainly, him in person, mainly but because everything I say is factual, so it's kind of hard to argue exactly. with. Exactly. I mean, every right? every and, guy and, trip I normally go on, one name comes up on every effing trip. Now, Bill Jr. Ward? and I think Dieter actually knows said guy local to Lake Norman, but it's kind of comical. Actually, I'm like, why does this name always come up on my boat? But famous, you know, baby. I okay. think that Dieter, especially Dieter and I, are we're we're kind of uh, like social media icons, and you are the most I you're the that most famous people I know right here. When, well, when that's when scary, people, you need to get out more. Hang out in a local bar, you'll find when, somebody worth way Peter, more. When, right. when, when people Dick, see us, they Peter Jr. West. We're we're a little bit bigger than they think we I, are. I feel like I'm <laughs> right. I'm on the bottom of the screen. I'm, I'm only Peter's, Peter's hands are about like this big. They're like they're. Dieter's got some fucking man claws on him. Yeah, I don't even know I'm on here, really. I feel Coach like Matt, I'm the, I'm the little kid that gets beat up on here because <laughs> you guys are all famous. Scott, Scott, to get some info from you for Scott that. Perry's six Link foot three, right? 270. Ain't nobody <laughs> messing with Scott. Hey, JR. Yeah. But I promise you, you didn't have nothing to worry about, homeboy. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank God. I, I Thank love God. Beth was not standing there when that we went got over. a convicted convict <laughs> racking his gun live on Facebook. That's what hey, I'm talking hey, about. Hey, hush, hush, real quick. Have you ever seen the um the video My First Desk Pop? No. Do no. you know what that's about? Okay. No. So 
obviously in the pilot world we have um ffdos okay so i bring up i'm like hey have you watched the video of my first desktop no what's that about i'm like you should fucking do it and you should watch that video right now so it's actually a will ferrell movie and uh, what it is is I, I forgot what movie it is but like he lets off a desk pop he's an undercover officer and he fires off yes yeah i saw that so i'm like you should do your first desk pop right here at thirty-eight thousand feet right now <laughs> well hey guys listen i am going to bed i'm gonna leave this open since i'm the host here and uh right, it's been buddy. a great show and i'll see you guys Next week. We're, yeah. I think we're probably all night. getting off the west. Good We've night, been on like four hours. Yeah, it's a west. record, man. It's a fucking record. Yeah. Good night. It's good fun. talking to you guys. Uh, Thanks enjoy you, it. Are you getting Thanks off to the invite? invite? Are you, are no, you guys I mean, ready to call it? I'll stay on as long as you guys stay on. Everybody, everybody's off work back. for Christmas break. So Welcome back, Will. I'm I'm hey, I'm off work, I, so I got nothing to do. If I shut if I shut my end down, will that knock Dieter out since I invited him? No. I don't know. I was there a second ago. No, just no, you're good, Wes. Go, go, go to bed, go to bed, Wes. We'll see you at 6 a.m., brother. Wes, you gonna have them fucking vibrating what, feet. What Wes? Hey, hey, listen, listen, one, Wes. one thing I've learned about <laughs> Wes. <laughs> Wes is on a schedule. He, he oh, will stay shit. up as long as his, he's as long as he can get about six hours of sleep. He's good. And mm. Wes is getting up at 6 a.m. He's so yawning. Oh, this pussy. is it. Wes is gone. I call Wes bullshit. Wes ain't getting up at six. He can, he's got, he's got to go to Hardee's yeah. and talk to the, all the old men. No, I'll be up at six and I'll be at Gus's at seven drinking. You'll coffee. be at Gus's at seven drinking. You'll be coffee. making bank, fucking fixing some dang, dang, uh, duck work and shit. <laughs> hey, listen, I installed, I installed, I changed out a gas furnace today and did three service calls and I made $7,000. Hell yeah. You're an asshole. You're an asshole. I know, right? Oh, hey, why can't yeah. I make that kind of money? Yeah. I guess I I've been doing it my whole life. It's about time I get paid for crawling up under houses and fucking listen. I, I, it's you what, work. That squatted down, bent down. I had to put some heat <clears throat> tape on a water heater and stuff. Yeah, that's a pain in the butt. Oh, my God. I'm working way harder than that for way that's, less. Yeah. I want Dieter's job where he gets to hang out with NASCAR driving. He's like filming. I stare out the windows all fucking day. It sucks. Yeah. Poor Peter. Poor Peter. Wow. Temper Peter gets the role. I just there. Jamaica. <laughs> Me and JR, me and you're another person. We screw something here. up, we'll catch it. Life's good. Yeah. yeah, we work at meal. We work at a meal. These other we're meal. Like we're meal working. Entrepreneur, awesome jobs. All right, hey, guys. I'm going maybe to we already, hey, we ought to get, get up in that thing uh, SBC tournament somewhere the night before somewhere. I don't know. Drink, fucking mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. Those that are going. The great yeah, thing is, I'm not coming. fishing the tournament, so I'll come drink with you and <laughs> everybody. We'll, drunk, we'll, and... we'll come in 108th place. <laughs> hey, Dieter, Dieter, you should come to the weigh in. When is the, cool. is the tournament February 4th? Is that right? I mean, we're, talking, we're talking about the uh, striper tournament on Hartwell on the. West, go to bed. It's when? Y'all be good. Good night, Dieter, bro. Come to the big one on the seventh. You don't want to go to that little bullshit on the fourth. There's like seven people going to be there. Yeah, <laughs> Come to the, uh, the one on the seventh on Lake Hartwell. There will be a hundred boats. January seventh. Yep. You're talking about the SBC. Yep. yep. Green Green Pond Landing. Are Lake all of y'all fishing it? Yep. I'm fishing it. Peter's I'm fishing it. Jr. Yeah. talking about it, but he ain't gonna fish it. Guaranteed. He's fair weather. He's gonna wait till the last minute. Make sure he's gonna have the seventies and light and variable wind. My, see if I can push my guy trip back to Sunday and come down there and fish it. But I gotta have somebody to fish with. And if Jr. You can uh, fish with me. Yeah, JR, oh, I'll put you on my boat, dude. You can yeah, put on the blue you, bay with you, a heater. You'd be better off fishing with Peter or Scott. I'm gonna go. I just want to film. I could give a damn less about catching a fish. I just want to yeah. film somebody. Well, if you if you don't want to catch a fish, you probably come with me. Well, if you want to film, catch any fish. if you want to film, you'd probably be better off with me. Yeah, go with JR. Because if you go with Scott, you're gonna be working your ass off. You're not gonna be have time to film. Oh no, and no, I'm no. Gonna, I'll be filming him working and the other not, crew working. I will be yeah. cutting you out, Dieter. Yeah. That's JR. <laughs> 
Scott's not the filming type. I thought I run a fucking tight ship. It's, it's, you have to clock shit. in. You the bad thing clock. was I went on the boat with Peter on that tournament to film it and really got sidetracked with trying to help out and trying to catch. And it was exactly. rough, honestly it? didn't fish or didn't film oh, that much. Hey, hey, I got to tell you all the story. Actually, let, you know, when I posted that dang photo of Dieter and that dang big hybrid, or big, <laughs> or, you know, whatever, Lake Norman, uh -huh. I was reminded of this. I'm like, you know what? This should actually happen. So, do you, you probably remember the day we pre-fished? I think the day. No, it was the day of the tournament. We actually had to put my boat on a fucking trailer because one of my scuppers, I think, busted. And we took on water. Yeah. And the bilge was not working, so we had to drain some damn water. Prior, no, it was pre-fishing day prior. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yep. Yeah. Embarrassing. That sounds like some god shit yeah. to me. Yeah, that's right. us, yeah. but, well, what it really is is two fat asses, myself, you know, included. I'm fat. In the back of the damn boats. Did, did, did Peter of say he's a fat ass? What do you weigh? A buck sixty-five? Come on. Who, who me? Yes. You wear a buck ninety. No. No, yeah. Peter's not a buck really? ninety. Really? I'm a buck ninety, yeah. Damn. Yeah, fat with, ass. with all of his yeah, gear right. on, yeah. With all his with his hat and all his but, badges on, butt ass naked, he's like one seventy five. Right. Oh, but hey, listen, but with his ego, he's a good two fifteen. <laughs> Nailed it. I would have said two twenty five. Easy. If you want to make a video with some good lifestyle content, fish with me. If you want to actually like place, <laughs> like respectively in the tournament, then fish with Perry. <laughs> I don't know about I don't know about Peter. I haven't officially been in an I'm a pretty good uh, run around here lately with tournament. My, my boat's on fucking fire right now with tournament placing. So we're good. We're good. We're doing good. If you want to stand on stage with the trophy, we'll see. You're not hey, going to have time to film this. Uh, hey, that, if you fish with Perry, you're not. This is the important trophy right here. Count, so. count the video out. <laughs> There you go. That's the trophy that matters right one now. One I, you know what guys. I want? Hey, Dieter, how much would you charge me to come on a catfish trip? I'm, what's it going right? For you? Yeah. I got to I gotta come fish with you? or No, you I'm going to go on with... your boat and oh, fish. Dude, show up, man. You'd be fun to have on a boat. <laughs> oh, my God. I would... Oh, I hell. Would... I would hey, hey listen, listen. If you wait till respect. summer and throw your wife in the water with a bikini, yes. and get one of those <laughs> thumbnails like you got, asshole with that thumbnail. Yeah, yes. I'll pay you to come fish. So hell yeah, yeah pro she staff. can hold up catfish all day long. It'll just yeah. He I said mean, pro staff. Hey, yeah. <laughs> you be pro <laughs> staff. Fucking, <laughs> fucking speedo pro staff. I'm Dieter. Dieter Melhorn pro staff. It was funny hell before yeah. before I knew you who you were. I was looking up some kind of striper fishing stuff, and I saw that that thumbnail. And like a hundred, I don't know, what are you up to? 900 and some thousand people now. I looked at it and I was like, well, shit, that's a rip off. But I have told so many people about that. It's like, it just shows you the power of a thumbnail on YouTube that you get the right thumbnail. It's like, okay, I'm happily interested in fishing. That looks like a naked woman in the water, even though I find out she's only got a bikini. It's still so... Yeah, ever since and that's one done. of my worst videos oh, I've ever made. Like, it doesn't matter. How many views are you up to now? How many views are you up to on that thing? I think it's like 900, right at 900. <laughs> all it takes is a woman in a video to get I love it. Facebook likes. Oh, it's all, all it takes oh. is a woman in a bikini I'm, to get stopped I'm, by the police, I'm, too. Because yeah. I had one on a guide trip last this past summer. She peeled off her stuff. She sat in her bikini. I said, oh, Lord, we're going to get stopped. She hey. goes, oh, my God, am I not supposed to have this? I said, nope. I said, the fact Speak you got on a bikini, hour later, cops going down the lake. They make the right turn, come over to us. Stood there and talked about the channel and fishing for 20 minutes. And she's giggling and laughing. And they never looked at a license, a life jacket, a fire extinguisher, anything. Dater's a superstar. What is the girl, Drizzle or whatever the saltwater store says? Yeah, I mean, she made a fortune just wearing. She actually got smart and changed her game that 
old dude she's dating uh, is actually kind of got her own line to do a little bit better stuff than just strip yeah. down everyone. So she's actually making some money now. But yeah, that's that yeah. was her whole gimmick in the beginning was just mm-hmm. strip to the thong and talk about something you don't know anything about. So she knew. Well, I think than- I think uh, YouTube has a lot of fourteen to eighteen year old crowd, and like when you're targeting. 40 or 35 to 40 year olds, you're like, you'd be surprised. Your audience. You'd but be see, surprised. My, my demographic's older. So if exactly. they get a meal that's like in the 35 year old range, it mm-hmm. looks halfway decent, yeah. they'll go for that too. So. Yeah, your demographic. Well, mine, mine is a meal now. Like, yeah. that was. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Like I said, free <laughs> trips anytime. We'll work out a price that have to pay you too much. So I would you guess go. Dieter's demographic's probably. 35 to 45 year old uh, it's it's actually i think 64 percent is 25 to 60 or 64 it's right yeah, in that mean, middle of anybody that can actually still get on a damn boat and fish so, just goes right. to show they all love yeah. trash fish yeah. but it don't matter how old the guy is they're gonna click on a bikini <laughs> they're still gonna look at it they may not be able to touch it but they'll still <laughs> click on it so hey, yep absolutely. speaking of game wardens and such i actually for the first time ever i got checked about three weeks ago all my dang license oh, norman and everything. i was actually on bait and lake i got checked did he ask for your captain stuff? Everything, everything. Yep. Really? Sure did. Yep. First time. I don't ever. know that they have jurisdiction to ask for a captain's license. They do. Well, so let me take that back. They did not ask for the captain's license. They asked for the guide permit. Oh yeah, you have to have the guide license, yes. which is the uh, tag. Correct. Because I got into that discussion with uh, Roger Taylor had a South Carolina DNR guy ask for his guide license, and I, said, I don't think he has the jurisdiction to. So no. I see, yeah, yeah, but I got for the first time ever, I got asked about three weeks back roughly for everything. So yeah. Well, it's funny is I fished tournaments for like 16 years on Murray, Clarks Hill, and Hartwell, and I've only been stopped twice ever. Both of them were on Murray. I've never been stopped on Hartwell. I've never been wow. stopped on Clarks Hill ever. Of wow. my many years of fishing on Lake Norman, I have been checked. I can probably count on one hand. Okay, mm-hmm. so can we count you in, Dieter, on the HSP- HSBC? Uh, I've got a guide trip that Saturday. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, February. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute, okay. y'all said one was January the seventh. The, the SBC. The SBC is January. Right. The HSBC on Norman is February fourth. That all depends yep. if I'm going to LA or not <laughs> for the NASCAR race. That's going to be the thing on that weekend. All so right. Well, up in there. You guys are going to get, um, we're going to talk shit about you and say you I were know, scared. I know. One Peter, are, don't you go to every NASCAR race? No, I don't go to every one of them. No, oh, I just yeah. do ones where there's some type of artsy fartsy stuff to do. So oh, it's uh, kind of all over the place on them. So yeah, I'm not in every one of them. Yeah. That's why he doesn't do artsy fartsy stuff on his YouTube channel because he does too much of it for his. Sadly, Weird. I wish the artsy fartsy stuff did good. Your beloved uh, Tennessee striper god, Melton Hill Bill, the piece I uh, did with him. You know, that's yeah. a video. Good example. It's a good, I think it's a sexy video, but as far as, as far as like doing good on YouTube, it's not. But I still like doing those things more than I do anything. Just because. God, if you did one with Paradise, it'd be nine hundred thousand views. Yeah. Well, when Easy. Talking, I think there's, there's a, a thing there, is there, uh, again uh, uh, Bill. Some, I didn't even scratch the surface with. Do you uh, think that those type videos would, if you were to do nothing but those, two, would they do good in the long no, term? No, they wouldn't. No? They wouldn't. No, they have a place. They have a they have an interesting demographic that it appeals to, and honestly, from a guide trip sense, for me, it's a money maker because it pulls in more of a cerebral kind of crowd of people versus what you were talking about earlier in the show about people that just want to fill a cooler with fish, and I pull in some people that are very uh, impactful to my business is the best way to put it. And that kind of stuff appeals to them. It's why I want to do more of it, whether it be in the striper world, salt water with what Peter does or stripers, catfish, whatever, because those people like, it's like the Yeti stuff, the Yeti films or the stuff that Orvis does. Well, that I appeals think, to a different crowd of people. You know, you've mentioned getting me on your podcast and I would, mm-hmm. I would love to. And I think that it would be a very, a very good conference podcast. But what would you think about getting like, like uh, doing a duel, like maybe me and Scott Perry 
on a podcast about I'd rather food. have people one on one on one just because I think it creates more of a intimate deal with that person and yeah. a focus. I think it gets distracted, unlike earlier where everybody's yelling back and forth. It can get fun, uh, but it can also get distracted. You have Scott Perry than your ass on the podcast. <laughs> I would rather have Jr. Like I'm, there's no draw for me, really. Yeah. But they you know were. what, Scott, I'd love to spend a day on the water with you just to pre-interview you to find out what that may be, because I truly believe that everybody has a story, even if they don't realize it. And I think that's the cool thing about fishing. It's not so much, honestly, the stuff I want to shoot has nothing to do with catching a damn fish. It, it, you may go out fishing, you may go through all the motions of fishing, but it honestly, I could give a shit less if you catch a fish. Mostly it's about the people and their story, either why they're fishing, what the backstory is, what, whatever. I just think there's some cool stuff out there, stories to be told. And, you know, I think everybody has a story if you take the time to look into it. It's obvious, you know, you get a Zach Royce, he caught a state record. Yet what's his name that, you know, catches a, those two state records down there in Georgia, South Carolina. And, but there's a bigger story than that. Just catching a big fish. I do think, like, with fishing videos, if I see somebody just, like, reeling in a fish, I'm... It's boring wild. as hell. Yeah, yeah, it's boring. I fast forward. I've got, or, yeah. yeah, I've got four of them coming up that I'm less than excited about. Now, some people, I've got a phone. I'm sorry, I'm trying to plug in a power supply. i got people that love that stuff and will sit there mm -hmm. and I can put out a, you know, hour-long video and they'll watch every damn bit of it, but... In the true sense of it, most people don't give a crap. About I do it. like the background stories. I do like that. I like the B-roll stuff. Yep. Yep. And I'd like to do more of that. I just, those I do, it's kind of like my deer hunting videos that I've done. I think I've done some cool ones with my son, but mm -hmm. as far as broad appeal, they don't have a broad appeal. I don't know if I you think. saw it, but but Palmetto Cats, uh, Kevin Lincoln did one down on Santee. And uh, a lot of Scott Peavy was in it. I don't know if you saw it or not. I haven't. I haven't. I oh seldom my. watch anything fishing-wise, sadly, because in the catfish world, yeah. no offense to anybody, any of my brethren out there, none of it appeals to me, really. That really moves me to go, damn, that's good stuff. But you, I need leave the, you need to watch the James River video that Jared did. It was damn good. <laughs> It was. There was there was very little fish catching in it, but I liked it. Yeah, I like but the no, story part. Palmetto of stuff. Pal Palmetto Cats went out of his way to. It's a very cinematic. You 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 really need to watch it. It's uh, it was it was extremely good. And like you said, note. though, I'm gonna make a note. I will watch it. Do you remember what it was called? Um, was there like a generic kind of just? Hang on, I'll, hang on. I'll tell you. I can I can find it real quick. Dun, 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 dun. Sponsor ain't no drone video. I'll watch it. <laughs> no what? Drone video. Oh, yeah. We don't want drone footage. Drone footage. Yeah, video. That sucks. Hey, by the way, if anybody's fishing Kerr Lake anytime soon, I can tell you a place to look for a drone uh, right near the boat. <laughs> Did you try to land it on the boat? I don't know what happened with it. It it it, bad, it, it was at the ice boat. Landing? What's that? Bad carrier landing. No, it was a something went wrong with it, and I don't know what <laughs> happened. It was it just started. I've got the footage of it because it was recorded to my phone. But yeah, it started doing something weird and came down. And this was last year at the ice bowl, came right to the water, and you see it hit the water and it comes out of it. It's like, oh, and I'm yanking throttles to the left, just trying to run it into the bank. And then it hit some ice. Part of the lake was frozen. It hit the ice, came up off of it. It's just doing all kinds of weird stuff. And then well, finally, Dieter, that, that video there would probably be a short video that you could post that would get a ton of views. People love seeing people tear their shit up. You know what? <laughs> Honestly, I've thought about taking that and just putting it up as a, yeah. thank you. I got that. Uh, because yeah, people will look at that and go, Oh, that's cool. He lost a yeah. drone. Look at him. That's cool. They like yeah. seeing people get slapped or seeing shit get destroyed. Yeah. That's, 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 that that's the thumbnail, Peter. It's called 
That's the thumbnail. The tournament. Here's why I didn't watch it. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. That thumbnail. Thumbnail, thumbnail sucks. The thumbnail. thumbnail sucks. The thumbnail does suck for what the video. They need is. to grow the bikini. Yeah. The title yeah. of the video is ten thousand dollars worth of fish, cash money, which is not a very good title. Uh, not a very good. Not a very good terrible. thumbnail. But the video. You yeah. have to watch that. Yeah, that's, 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 that's that's sadly what sucks about. YouTube is that a penis? That... Huh. Is that a penis and a cooler? I, mean, <laughs> I that... thought it was a penis and something else. Yeah, for a they don't. when I it first saw like... it out of focus, it was like oh, <laughs> it's terrible. Kevin, Kevin outdid himself on this video. It's a good for him. He needs a better good. thumbnail. That's it's terrible. A very good. It's a very good video. That's, that's I'm gonna watch it. What's it called? That's, that's the beginning of it. It's uh, it's called um, uh, ten thousand dollars worth of fish cash money that's when somebody tries to overhype their title that's terrible he should have said tennessee tournament or sancy tournament you know it, it's should it's kind like of only fishing and got skunked it's kind of depressing because it's for guys like me like that's like the epitome of like what kind of videos like that, fish? That, that i want to make and then you look at that video and you look at his channel and you realize that that video is nowhere near one of his most successful videos and you're like yep. Par you know, for the that's, course. That's what yep. that's that's what I'm like shooting for. Yeah. So, you know, that's another reason why. Is that you know, what you I'm, want, or is that what your audience wants? No, that's what I want. I don't exactly. You that, need to start making videos for what your audience wants. Well, like some of my favorite videos that, that I, I like are that. garbage, like view wise. Like my the ones I feel like are really good videos are they don't get any views. And yeah. sometimes, sometimes those videos are really good, and just for whatever reason, they haven't tripped whatever it is in the algorithm to where the exposure title or the thumbnail, something. But you know, I look at it as a hobby, and Dieter, you look at it more as a you're running it as a business. You yeah, know, you wouldn't look at it as a hobby if you were blowing it up. Huh? No, I really would. I mean, it's no. It's, it, it, I really would. I, no, really, I no. genuine, I genuinely do look at it as a, I, I treat it as a hobby. It's nothing but a hobby for me. You make some really good videos, Jr. You would. And do. it's, but, but I'm making like Dieter said. I'm making videos that I like. I'm not. I don't know. I, I like. Not, I, I think your titles and your, I think your titles hold you back more than anything because you'll be like. I don't know. You just have some stupid ass title names that just I, don't pop. I don't spend a lot of time on Dieter, the title am I right? Thumbnail. I mean, he'll be like, I don't. Got it. Or some stupid no, ass no. fucking title. I mean, you need to have something out there. To you know, every, everyone has their opinion and everyone is, like, they, they, they try to you be. You need right. to put kill the guy in a bikini or some shit. Like, you Listen, need to I'll, I'll always but honestly, use... if you're doing it as a hobby, you know, like he says cup. he's doing, it really doesn't matter whether or not your channel grows or whether or not you get views because it is something, if it's a hobby, you're doing it totally for yourself. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, nothing but there's nobody it. that does not, like JR would get a hard on if he got fucking 900,000 views on a video. I mean, anybody that makes videos and puts the time in wants views. They I want, agree. They want to be recognized. I agree. I don't care if it's a hobby or not. I agree. Even I if course. you're not monetized, you want 900,000 views. Just, I agree. Anybody you know, that like, makes it public, if they were truly doing it only for their own edification they would never post it anywhere and they would create it and it'd be private and they look would at, go look wow look, that looks good i love it look at it as the guy that you know down the road that keeps his 1969 camaro that he bought when he was 16 years old and keeps it in his garage or his barn and he keeps it's immaculate it's original it's matching numbers it's original paint original interior Oh, he you takes know, it out and washes it, takes he, pictures he, and puts it drive, on Facebook. He drives it once a month, you know, mm -hmm. and people look at it and they and they go, you know, goo goo gaga over it. Uh -huh. And they know that guy's satisfied with that. He's not taking hey, it, putting it in car shows. Hey, and, until, like, uh, like he said, until he starts putting it on Facebook and taking it to a car show yeah. And, yeah. and letting people look at it, waiting for some time. Well, why, why, or a blue ribbon. 
Why don't then all I, of a sudden you're doing listen, it for a little more? I now. could teach a class on how to be successful on YouTube. I call why, bullshit why, on anybody that posts I? anything on social media that says they don't do it for views. You're exactly right. Right. If I you're could exactly be successful right. on YouTube, why don't I? It's because I don't. It it doesn't. Because you got to put more effort into it. It, it so, doesn't. So Peter, you got to sell out. I I went fishing today. I go fishing all the time. Went fishing. I could have made a video today. I didn't as, hit record as a guy, one Dieter, time. Ask Dieter, Why? As a guy, because YouTube doesn't intrigue me that much. Yes, it does. It, you it, it does. It, 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 it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Really, you really want a doesn't. million views so bad? It really you just doesn't. Keep, come on here and tell us. Peter that has a question. That, that young man in the back. Peter has a question. <laughs> that way. Um, so, as a guide, we must post photos on facebook to draw up business yes or no right yeah uh, absolutely i'm gonna say i'm gonna give you a two-sided answer no you don't have to well if, if yeah. your name is dieter miller you don't have to well, no, no, you don't, <laughs> no you don't have to if you're you know a guy that's already established and you got a ton of clients mm -hmm. and uh, you're Jay Leatherman fishing down on Clark's Hill, you know, putting 10 stripers in there for your limit. He's been doing it forever. He doesn't have to post anything, but if you're relatively new to the scene in today's world, it's not a, I got to get published in the Carolina outdoorsman fisherman magazine. And then I've got everything to take care of. Yeah. You've got to do something in that realm to get some attention somewhere unless you're going to go out and hand out business cards and put them under the windshield wipers on everybody at the yeah. boat ramp. And you, you got to, you know, at times oh, yeah. you, got, you got to push you on Facebook because I, you know, I love social media. I don't, I, I wish everybody would post every picture they caught on social media. That's why well, I get on there. There's a difference in having a, a guide business and using Facebook to promote your business. Then I would actually, love to see Jr. with some 15 pounders, even though he didn't post them. <laughs> Than trying to actually make a living on the content that you put. I would through. much rather see Hang on, grab a sun drop. Hang on. Via AdSense. <laughs> I, why would you not post some 15 pounders, Jared? That's stupid. But I, I feel like it takes away from. Takes the, away from what? From your <laughs> fucking bullshit you post daily? <laughs> Come on now. Damn it, boy. It, it takes away. It takes away from it. From what? From know. what? I, I think everybody that catches a fish should take a picture of it and put it on Facebook. That's what the fuck is for. I don't know why I post videos to YouTube. Look at Dieter it, getting drunk. But I'm getting serious. He's getting he get drunk over there. I am he's drunk. Drunk. He's, got a good he's got a poor one real quick. Hell definitely, yeah. Look at him laying the cup so he don't get no head. Hell oh, yeah. Sun drop. Shit. Sun drop with the vodka in there. You got to pour it straight in at the at the end. You, you need a little head. Come on, Jr. You can't say you just do this for you. You do this for you do this for people. You I you don't. make videos I, that you want people to watch. It's, of course, it's the same I, reason yes, I post pictures of fish or. Peter posts pictures of fish or well, the same Peter posts he posts posting of videos of fish. Let me, let me ask you this, Cheryl. Why do you yeah. even post it? If you don't care about anybody yeah. else looking at it, why do you even put anything up? Why don't you just keep it to no, yourself private? The reason that I post he's I mean, full of shit. I wouldn't I'm not Basically. saying I'm not saying that I don't care that anyone sees it. Of course I, I love people watching. I love getting views. I love getting likes. I love right. getting the notoriety. It's getting pats on the back. Everybody of, wants of it. Course, but there's there's nothing a, but, wrong with it. But there's a line there. You know, just like Scott. Scott's got a YouTube channel. You know, he's not posting uh my shit's he, old. He, exactly. <laughs> YouTube you're not you're not you're not, po you're not posting consistently. You're not posting at least once a week, twice a week, three times but a week. But if you're I not, do post something, I want people to, to watch grow. it. Sure. Right, exactly. Well, I'm the I'm in the same category as you. I just you know, I'll post once a month and you know, of course, I love I love the views, I love the likes and everything. But I'm doing is completely 100 as a hobby. I'll put it to you this way: I have a wedding channel. I've got it. it I don't know, at least half a dozen. I just did a wedding uh, a week ago, and that was awesome. I, footage, I've too. never charged. I've never charged anyone a dime. I 
do it because well, that's your problem. They that's your that's your problem. I don't know what's wrong with you. I charge. Well, that's, this goes back to what we also asking you, Dieter, about people that get their boat wrapped and actually pay for it instead of instead of the pe- the company actually paying for it. They actually pay for it because it's what they love to do. It's my lifestyle. It's what I, it's my hobby. But it's Jr., you're do. you're good at videoing. You're good at editing. And I they yeah, pay, they I pay know, you for your skills. I know. I know that. And I'm not saying that I never will. They should pay you. Business, but right now, I'm doing it completely as a hobby, and there's nothing wrong with that. You ain't no spring like, chicken, brother. You better get on it. Yeah, I have a, I have a <laughs> job, bro. <laughs> hey, why don't you uh, quit your job like uh, your boy did and go YouTube full-time? Well, it's yeah, because I like my job, and I like where my social media um, – I like where it's at. I like where my hobby is. I like posting videos to Facebook. He's scared to take the jump. I take he can every, make uh, it. I think Jr. can make it. And, I, uh, I know how video. to. I know how to. I could. Don't want to. You know, and this is contrary. I know that Dieter disagrees with me here. And well, he, I think the reason you don't want to is because you want to put your beliefs and all that out there. You need you know, to. No, that's not Keith, it at all. Keith, it's just Keith fun. took a Keith took a big leap. That he, was huge, a big leap. ass. What did he do? I don't know what Keith. He did. quit his job working Keith, where Jr. Keith and, works to Keith go YouTube I, full time. We got hired around really? the same time. Yes, yeah, we, sir. We've been there. Oh, over, so Keith worked with you. And we've been there over twenty years. Yeah, yep. we've been there wow. over twenty years. And uh, Keith said, "You know what, Jr." This is getting in my way. This is preventing me from oh, yeah. doing what I want to do. So I'm I'm gonna quit. And I was well, like, I mean Keith what? had a Keith came up with some. I, I mean he was good at what he did though. I mean that's fine. The, but he, see, people he, people get it confused. I mean, you know, making it big on YouTube like Keith is doing, and like Dieter wants to do, this is that, that's hard. That's hard work. That's oh, hard. Yeah. That, you guys are looking at it as I am being like modest or what? no no i mean it's, youtube it's, would be more modest. more hours that, than working that's a lot of that's a lot of work yes I, I, mm-hmm. i'm not willing to do that i'm not willing to do that i like where i'm at I li- and i like treating it as a hobby Dater, he's a, he's I'm, a... <laughs> I'm not willing i'm not ready to take that jump and actually start p- putting the work that's ne- ne- this this necessary to nobody to... that's super successful has ever been scared to make the jump bingo you're exactly right yeah. well i mean yeah. i'm just it's not that i'm scared it's just that i'm lazy you can do it you can do it <laughs> I could. You could. Anybody. Anyone. There's could. only two two emotions in life. That's that's love and fear. So that's it. Yeah. You either well, really yeah. love what you do, or you're scared of what you're going to have to do to get. You there. need to and quit. For one, you need to quit giving away shit. You should charge for videos. People want you on the boat to make videos. You should charge them. Yeah. You know, that's actually a niche that um, I don't – that actually what I think would be successful. Uh, Dieter, what do you think? Uh, making fishing videos, charging people to make fishing videos on their boat. I don't think there's any money in it. I think there is. I think there is because I don't see anybody doing it. We'll I find lot, out. I see, I see we'll, a lot of guys that are trying to make videos we that, will, are doing, we will, oh, we that will. are doing okay. We will find out in about a week when the Dieter Mellahorn subscriptions start out on YouTube. And one of the levels of subscription is got a fishing trip with a video. So we'll see how that works. I think that you'll be surprised at how well it does. I, I, I think, think that, you'll be surprised at the price tag. <laughs> I just, I know that you, you know as well as I do, people are flabbergasted by fishing videos. When they see that you're fishing, they see certain videos, they're like, you know, wow, that was amazing. And then you see people trying to do it all day long on Facebook and, yeah. you know, it's a complete failure. You know, people just don't, they either got that or you don't. And yeah. Have you considered branching out and doing different things like obviously striper fishing or crappy fishing or offshore fishing or flat talking to me? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely. And, uh, I think that is the only way to get to the next level in what I'm doing. I think there is a ceiling on the catfish world. 
And I think to get to the next level, yes, as far as in the YouTube world, uh, with the guide business, I've got more guide trips than I can do right now. Yeah, but yeah, not the guide business, but as far yeah, as YouTube world. In the yes. YouTube world, yeah, I think to get to the next level in YouTube, yeah, I think you've got to diversify at some point. And, um, you know, it's a matter of there's a little bit of a juggling act there as to, you know, like I said, I told somebody today I've got three part-time full-time jobs you know i thought that you would i thought that the guide world would blend a little more with your youtube business than it oh absolutely not they're three totally different entities in what i do and it's a juggling act at this point and peter can kind of relate he's he's got two full-time part-time jobs and you know if you threw a third one in there yeah it would you'd you'd be like uh uh, what's his seven uh, four gear uh, with the? I don't know if you follow him on. He's a pilot that's on uh, Instagram, and uh, he's a seven uh, four pilot, and he chronicles his whole thing. He's making more doing that than he is as a seven four pilot, believe it or not. And yeah, it would be even more of a juggling act. So yeah, Have you, you got tried the patronage or whatever the hell they call it. You, you, walk, you you walked off right when I I, I addressed oh, that. I've got something coming Asshole. up after the first of the year that's going to be uh, a membership based deal on YouTube. It's it's Patreon on YouTube. Patreon mm-hmm. was an off site deal you had to go to. YouTube came up with their own thing. So I'm going to do it by the pressure from a bunch of fans to do it. Uh, I don't know. I think it's kind of silly, but you're going to yeah. have to put out more content. Just yeah, to, I might you know, put out separate yeah. content well, for what he's talking people. about doing. Scott is actually uh, uh, offering a guided trip with a video. Yeah. If right. you if you buy into the membership, there's five different memberships level. It's if not you cheap. Buy into the membership. It, it is. It's not cheap. And but you take there, PayPal. I'm ready to sign up. Yeah, it's, it's all paid through. It's Venmo. all paid. Oh, I do Venmo all day long. I got paid today. <laughs> yeah, baby. Venmo and Google Pay, man. I love that stuff. I love going into Walmart or somewhere and buying like you know a, a pack of Diet Sun Drop and then getting like two hundred dollars cash back out of my Venmo account. Well, that's where the money's at. So. Heck yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, I'm gonna run off to bed. It's a record of four hours and fifty minutes. I mean, I'm just proud. I'm a part of this five hour live. Wow, legendary. I'm honored I got invited to join. So God, that's legendary. I mean, even Wesley Rose bailed out and went to bed. I know, right? Right? When, when, when we drink Wesley under the table, we've done something. <laughs> so that's good. Man. Wes doesn't even drink. So. He's gonna come chime back in. Y'all didn't beat me. I'm still up. I'm having a good watching it. I'll get mad, you son of a bitch, you cocksucker. <laughs> you going to yeah. bed, Pete? You got a yeah. trip tomorrow? Yeah, actually, I do. I leave out tomorrow afternoon. So, yeah. All right, where are you going? Jamaica? Cancun, actually. Ah. But it's it's nothing too exciting. The three days in a row, I'm going to Cancun and back. So three straight days, Cancun, back to Philly. Cancun, back to Philly. Cancun, back to Philly. So Any yeah. hot stewardess on the flight? I don't know yet, actually. No, <laughs> no mile hot Flight attendant. Flight. flight attendant. We don't Flight attendant. That's right. Why, why does Peter not want to talk about that? That's what I want to know. There's I some dated, there. I dated two flight attendants. You never So there's a stewardess. lot of myth in this whole entire stewardess thing, you know. Um they it's love your, pilots, right? Not really, actually. We're like the big really? Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, they, 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 they would be they, like they the like, nurses like and the surgeons. Like but let's off. let's say, for example, we are gone for three days, like it's, it's a three day trip. Um, right. We don't generally see the f- same stewardess in your words there. Right. Um, Old school consecutive days, like they have things, you know, they have like s- separate criteria where. On day two, we have a different crew, and day three, we have different crews. So we don't say the same ones. Well, I can tell you this, Pete. If I was a pilot, I'd see them stewardess. Yeah, you sure you would. Yeah, in Cancun, we would I'm be telling you. I'm they telling don't you. want nothing to do with them pilots. The money position is a straight flight attendant. If you're a straight <laughs> male flight attendant, you're in the catbird seat. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, 
Damn, y'all disappoint me. I was, I had a whole, I thought the pilots were like up here and the stewardess were all like, oh, it's part, it's the pilot Peter. We're going to pardon the pilot Peter. Hey, don't let Peter was, fool you. Pilots are whores. Don't, don't, don't. I know they are. Like, He's just but, trying to look at it. It's, like, it's not what you think. They're still <laughs> whores. It's just. Doesn't unfold the way you what know. you don't know won't hurt you, okay? No. I got you. Nah. Well, here's the Cancun feed. I know all you're right. Cancun and back, nothing glorious <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good night, guys. All right. All right, man. Have fun. Thanks Later. for watching, Real Fisherman. We'll see you guys next week.